pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus, how is everyone this evening? Oh, I just love the way that Golden Gate Bridge look that was ending there. We're a few seconds ahead of you in the stream, so I still get to see it here. I just love that picture. I just like pictures that are so, what do I call them? They're like, um, there's a word I have for it and it just escaped me. It's just when they're so beautiful, it's just like you have to stop and you have to look at them. I, I had the word in my head. It just disappeared. I hope everyone is doing well this Saturday night. It's still Saturday, even on the East Coast. We're approaching what 1120 on the East Coast. Out here on the West Coast, it's still early. It's like it's a party hour. It's 8 o'clock. Well, the party wouldn't even just be getting started if you were a party person. We're not supposed to be engaged in reveling. But 10 o'clock usually is when people start getting it, you know, is streaming in. So it's still early out here. I had a very satisfying, peaceful, fairly uneventful week, which I prefer. <laughs> I hope that all of you had a blessed and wonderful and marvelous week. And since you made it here, I know God got you through. And once again, thank you for joining us this evening. Now, tonight we have all my friends here. I elected to let Jordan stay. <laughs> I elected to let, I was tempted to wish him into the cornfield, but I didn't. I have Jordan, I have Ben, and I have Angel. Angel is on mute. Because she's doing her last minute things that she does. She has a full plate. She gets a pass. She's got husband, four beautiful little sweeties, a full petting zoo, and a mini farm. So she gets espresso. a pass. So I'm making espresso, guys. I definitely <laughs> have to be, And I never do it until the very last minute. I'm muting you. Hi, I'm Angel. Well, you might as well say hi now that you interrupted me. Hi. Hi, guys. I just wanted to say you're, you're really just enabling Jordan and prolonging his. Um, is, I, I know. Like, it makes it so characters. fun, though. Well, it really does. So watch him just, like, blow a gasket when he finally does come on. Hi, Jordan. Well, I mean, you're just as guilty as he is, really, if you if you, uh, if you co sign And, Joe, I'm sorry. Weren't you going party. back on mute, sweetheart? Weren't you going <laughs> 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 Hi, Jordan. How are you doing? Do you all see the toxicity <laughs> that just radiates off this program? Like, no wonder there's so many haters out there. I get it now. Whatever are you talking you about, because Jordan? You mean because of you're on the show? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you're talking yeah, to yeah, yeah, that's right, Angel. Weren't you going back on mute? <laughs> <laughs> How quickly we turn on our friends. <laughs> well, I'll let it's... everybody stay here and listen to Baby Shark if you make that. Oh my gosh, I love Baby when Shark. I Please here. turn it oh, off. Yeah, of course you like Baby Shark. <laughs> Is that well, a cartoon? No, it's a song. Baby Shark. <laughs> Okay, I don't want to get this a cartoon <laughs> that consists of just that song over and over and over again all, every episode. Yeah, I thought that was about Jordan's speed. How are you doing this evening, Jordan? Uh, I swear, if you come for me one more time, I might have to let my guard down. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just trying to be kosher for the the. But you said the word friends, and that kind of threw me off because I I I, I considered us brother and sister in Christ, but friends, I don't know. 
Okay. Good to know. Thank you. I'm going to put that one in my mental Rolodex for next time. Some of y'all don't even know what a Rolodex is. Never mind. Is that something then, the dinosaurs use? Yes, it was. Dinosaurs used to eat them, as a matter of fact. Okay, cool. <laughs> ben, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I thought Rolodex was a Pokemon character. <laughs> It's a watch, a really like overly. No, I know, I'm teasing. I know what Rolex. it is. <laughs> I'm that's I a know. Rolex. I know. Okay, guys, you ruined it. I don't. I don't even think you're kidding right there. I do not think you're kidding. I used to like to play kidding. with them when I was a little kid. <laughs> sure, you, you did. You are a grown up. You just looked it up on the internet and got a picture. I did. I <laughs> yes, I did. I did too. Those stupid things that I don't ever think anybody ever really used, but whatever. Like, okay, come on, you didn't really roll a deck. Wait, there was a time that people used to steal them from companies. Like, if you were going to go start your own business, <laughs> oh yeah, okay. you you could rip off somebody's Rolodex and literally have access to their whole, you know, network supply and customer base. That was mm -hmm. a big thing back in the 80s. Man, oh, I love the historical facts that come from Lisa. Lisa, you'll have to tell me what it was <laughs> like when <laughs> you'll have to tell me what it was like when men discovered fire. See, I'm gonna let you get away with that, Junior, because there was a time that I used to mercilessly teach my grandparents and my parents, and I know I'm reaping what I sow, so it's just it's just par for the course. That's okay. Just remember I can put you in timeout whenever I get ready. <laughs> it didn't work when my parents say it. it won't work when you say it. <laughs> you have a six foot four toddler, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> Angel, does bit does um Jordan, I forgot his name. Jordan look six four to you? You mean like in his in his avatar pictures where it's just his face? Yeah. <laughs> well no, he's been on, guess, but... no, he's been on stream, you know, where you can see him like chest up, but you can't tell that he's that big. And he told me he's six four. I was like, "What?" Yeah, wow. I I just I don't really ever expect anybody to be six four unless like they go around and they say it like off the bat. I don't know. It just seems like that's like one of those things people uh, like. It's really integral to their part, their part, of, and part of their identity. So when I find out someone's like really tall, I'm like totally confused and thrown off. <laughs> like, oh, okay, how come you didn't mention that you were a giant? But like Joel is six. He lies though. He's the only guy I know who lies and says he's shorter than he is. Oh. It's so weird, Jordan. He says he's six two. It's a lie. Everybody knows that's not true. And it, you know, his old mom knows that's not true. And he's like, it's on my driver's license. And everybody knows you tell them what your height is. He thought you were slick. He thought, but no, who what man does that? He doesn't want to be known as slick. He does so strange. Do you ever are you are you ashamed of your height, Jordan? I think that's very strange. <laughs> See, that's not the number I would change. I would change the number that appears on the scale, but it's so funny because like because of my height, my parents always wanted me in sports. So like football, basketball, and all that. And I'm like, this isn't even fun. I'd like I'd be like on the sidelines football, my team be like, go, go, go. And I'd be sitting there crying, like, please don't pick me, please don't pick me. Like nothing up like first of all you're waking me up in the a.m already not a fan of you and now you're gonna have like three people run into me like that's not fun who has fun yeah doing joel that? never likes sports either <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know angel what were you a, a tomboy though did you participate in sports and love to do all that of that kind of tomboy Oh, okay. I, I was. I, that, I asked. That did I didn't anything assume. like really super useful that like maybe a tomboy would do, like play sports. No, I was just like, um, in like being like really, I guess, arrogant and thinking that things threaten my manhood when I don't have <laughs> it. <laughs> like that type of thing where I would get like, I didn't feel competitive <laughs> with women, but I would get like feel like I had to like defend my, I don't know. My cheese moda guy. It's very straight. When I say I'm a tomboy, it's just like I, I, I don't, I don't. You wouldn't like look at me immediately. And think I was. <laughs> it's just sort of in my attitude. Like I just no, never really. Wouldn't. I just kind of ignored girls. You looked like you were a member of the Barbie club, not the tomboy. <laughs> oh, club. I didn't like that. I looked, no, I didn't look like that. I, I never liked pink. But, but um, now you do. I, I like sports more now than in, in high school. I wouldn't even dress out at PE. That was like my. 
really retarded or like how better not say retarded um my really uh pointless little act of rebellion where i wouldn't even dress out at pe like i was i felt like that was a threat to my identity that they were trying to make me change my carefully curated <laughs> outfit of like something from like the <laughs> 90s grunge period you. I can't yeah no i mean you. seriously it was like they were trying to humiliate me oh maybe like, wear these things that are elsewhere gym shorts I can't believe you all are talking about like tomboy and stuff like that. Don't you understand gender exists on a spectrum? Like, aren't you woke? Like, come on, you're really what offending. What are you talking about? What do you mean? The the we gender spectrum. Both of us, of course, we know. <laughs> no, but no, I'm okay. I'm trying to. Help. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? Gender exists on a spectrum. Haven't you been paying attention to like CNN for the last year? It's not yeah. absolute, and you can't tell. Is that the cartoon? No the cartoon <laughs> news network? What is? Might as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, I don't. I my channel skips over CNN. When I'm it. So I only watch them if I want to curse and throw the remote at the TV. Um. No. Uh, I don't watch CNN, but I think I'm aware that you're you're saying that there uh, genders don't really exist. I guess that's what you're driving at, and aren't we all the same? And there's no difference, and all that stuff. Or are you saying something else? Did I miss you completely? You know, it, it's it was just supposed to be a joke, Lisa. But if you really need me to explain this whole concept to you. <laughs> It now, was just see, supposed to be a quick now laugh. that you just said that and you stepped in it with both feet, yes, you must explain it. Break it down to me like I'm five and go okay. slow. Okay, are you ready, little girl? Yes, I'm ready. So we live in this day and age where there is now, for the first time ever in history, a difference between sex and gender. So sex is what you are born as, but Gender is something you get to choose, and it exists on a spectrum, meaning that there's not just boy and girl. You kind of can choose your own anatomy and your own feelings and what character traits and all that that you want, basically down to the very chromosome that you um, have as your biological makeup. So th this is um, part of being woke. So I would encourage you all to become woke because, you know, it, it's only then that you are truly knowledgeable in today's society and can see what's going on once you have embraced the woke culture. Mm. Well, you know what, Jordan? I just learned something. I just got a wrinkle in my brain because I didn't quite understand the dynamics of that. Because I know I remember when it was just the sexes and they used to talk about the battle of the sexes. And as I said, back in the 70s and prior to the 70s, gender referred to inanimate objects that you would assign male or female so-called attributes like a there was a phrase a thing of beauty is a joy forever and that things that were considered beautiful would often receive feminine names and things that were symbols of strength and power would receive masculine names and we always understood that and then all of a sudden it's like somebody just broke out this new book that started talking about gender concerning the sexes, which always puzzled me. I'm like, when did that happen? And now here we are today that not only, okay, you're, you have a, uh, well, evidently no longer assigned at sex, <laughs> birth sex. So I guess you get to choose that later on. If you oh, even want to go down the sexes road. They call their children babies, T-H-E-Y, babies. That is the proper name oh today. Oh, my God. Are you serious? I am dead serious. Of course, not everybody ascribes to that, but the woke culture, they are calling them babies and will not identify them as male or female until they are four or five years old and can make that decision after being confused during their infancy as to what gender really is. Okay, Jordan, I'm going to give you an assignment, sweetie. I want you to go find that scripture for me. That uh, woe unto those Jesus was speaking. They give suck in those days. I just want to have it to reference to people so they can see I'm not making it up. When the Lord warned about this, that there were the people, not only the the children is implied there are in danger, but the parents are in danger 
in in this day. I, I think he's talking about right now. This day, this hour. Uh, because they're already starting in some areas of the world. Criminalizing. Parents. That will not allow their children. To transgender. Children. Minors. Not talking about somebody who's 18, 19, 20, 21. Mm -hmm. You're talking about minors. They're asking four-year-olds, what do you want to be or what are you? After confusing them, too. And if you do not subscribe to this um, system of thought, you are homophobic and uh, transphobic. That's the parents. They're the ones who give suck. That's, that's talking about referring to breastfeeding. So here you have parents that are going to be criminalized. Uh, I heard one man, he was um, just in agony over this. He was over in Europe. And him and his wife got a divorce. He had a son that went with her. And she bought into this whole woke culture thing. And he wasn't a, he wasn't a junior like... Um, Jordan here, this man was like in his late 40s to early 50s, and he's lamenting that his ex was transitioning his son to become oh. female, who was like eight years old. That's sick. And let so, <laughs> wow, I, I, I. I don't want to like get into the dark and greary so early on in the show, but it just really irks me because oh, by the way, that um passage was Matthew 24 19. Um 24 but, 19? Yeah. Thank you. Um it just grieves my spirit because at the same time we're confusing our children, we're also harming our children. And Lisa, you and I just did this. Oh, and Ben, um, on Renee's channel. And this morning I heard one of the most heartbreaking stories about a mother who was taken off of Twitter um, or it might've just been somewhere else on social media because she was actively speaking out against her daughter who was kidnapped and sold into sex trafficking. So she's trying to bring awareness because she's trying to bring awareness that she was knocked off all social media. Mm -hmm. Now, see, this is one of the aspects that I was talking about, the anti-social justice warrior thing that I saw as a problem, that while people were demonizing social justice warriors, there's a flip side to that. There's an argument to be made in one aspect, and we should consider it. But the other is that they will demonize the people who are speaking out against wickedness by labeling them social justice warriors and then sending their attack dogs in to go and silence them for being, you know, a part of the anti whatever culture when it's another way to put a, a, a quash on free speech. And I always saw it that see back prior to uh, uh, the turn of the century. Uh, again, Jordan, as we've been talking about, some crazy things started happening in the mid to late 1800s where they started changing a bunch of stuff. And the concept was always, we used to have a phrase here in America that uh, I may not agree with your speech, but I'll fight to the death to defend it. Oh, you don't hear anybody talking about that anymore. So in other words, somebody I, I vociferously disagree with, I want to see their speech protected because by protecting their speech, I protect my own. Well, that concept is going out the window. And one of the ways they destroyed that was with pornography. Mm. The, because what they did was they got what was always deemed what they we used to have in America, what was called indecency laws. OK, and they destroyed those with Larry Flint, uh, Hugh Hefner and the various characters like that that came up and brought in these legal cases to get what was normally called obscene and indecent to be normalized under free speech. So See, this was a way to weaken that. Yeah, go ahead. 
No, it, and it's just so frustrating because this is what I was trying to bring awareness to. I understand it's a struggle that I dealt with. Like the pornography is a real issue. So in no way am I saying, oh, I'm so above that. I've never lusted after another individual. And to this day, I'm just so pure. But what my whole point was, because I brought up the relationship between um, pornography and sex trafficking. And instead of people stepping up in the church, taking responsibility, seeing how they can fight, see how they can bring their own thoughts, desires under control, I was met with two very shocking reactions. I'm not going to call out either by name, but last week on your very own broadcast, Lisa, uh, mm -hmm. I was met with the comment in the chat that that's just a conspiracy theory. Is it a conspiracy theory or just a fact that you choose to ignore so you can willingly How is it walk a conspiracy theory? Right. That I mean, women. Oh, so you think that like the girls that are that are there that they're that are doing this and like ruining themselves forever in a lot of ways in terms of like you know I mean and men too don't get me wrong but there's a there's a market for getting the girls as young as possible and the idea is I believe it's sort of like what. Like the whole reason why I believe our culture now must forbid children, like even teenagers from sexual activity with adults, which in the Bible, you see it's, there's not, it's not a, obviously people got very younger and a lot of times older men would marry like young teen girls, but you know what? He, they married them. <laughs> they weren't just spoiling their virginity and dumping them off. Like, like, you know, just discarded goods. That's really what I'll, I think a lot of, um, uh, but like, right. It's, it's, I, I often tell people who will get all like men who will get all upset about, Oh, this guy, he got caught trying to hook up with a 13 year old online. And it's like, yeah, but you look at very illegal porn. Okay. Well, so mm -hmm. explain to me where it's the fornication's the problem. Fornication mm -hmm. outside of marriage is the problem. And that's what porn does. does that it, That's what it, um, it, it entices you to do. I mean, it, it gives you this idea that you're just supposed to be sexually gratified all the time and sexually it's, stimulated all the time. And in a fornic, mm -hmm. in, 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 in the, in the context of fornication and you're watching fornication. And of course the girls who are like men are supposed to protect girls and, you know, and women mm -hmm. in that sense, like, and not because, because there's a, whether they know it or not, they are, they're giving, something up that's supposed to be precious and 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 it's not supposed to just be something that's um used in the most degrading and shameful way uh, on camera forever even if she says she wanted to do it or even if oh i'm liberated mm -hmm. I, I don't care mm -hmm. whatever that's not true and men too don't get me like men are not supposed to be any any like you can't have men uh, you wouldn't have a sluts without slut makers right so men play an equal role in this but now we have I mean, OnlyFans is a whole new epidemic where where now I say like that'll be the cure for pornography. The true pandemic like this is the, the and you're bringing up men and women, Angel, which is so true and tragic. But my initial point a couple of weeks ago is that it's financing the very efforts to take children off their front lawn. Oh, absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, I agree. I totally agree. And also in reality whatever woman you see on that screen, a lot of times they started <laughs> when they were very, very, very young doing these things and they are uh, broken little girls. Rape. Yeah. They were raped. And there was, yeah. there was a woman, uh, she, she died prematurely uh, a few, I think a few years ago, not that long of ago. Course, yeah. Her name was Shelly Lubin. She I was, I remember, yeah. Uh, a believer who was trying to get men to stop with porn, Christian men in particular, but men in general, and but was trying an to explain to them, to it. you know, the damage yeah. that it does and how a lot of the women who are in porn, they're broken. They're not, they're not whole. It's not a wonderful thing, no matter what they say. And they victimize themselves. Right. A lot of them are raped, even being raped on camera and things. And then also uh, that the women hate men. And you men. just don't know. Right. Yeah, and but they actually hate men. Are, oh, yeah. And a lot of these girls on, like, the cam girls, like, the girls that are, like, like you pay and they'll, like, do them on camera, some of them are in foreign countries literally being, like, locked in rooms forced mm -hmm. to do that. You just don't know. Like, unless you mm -hmm. really get to know your porn star, 
uh, you don't know what you're watching. And 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 I will give credit to Owen Benjamin, who I did go after because obviously he's a heretic and he uh, is promoting all kinds of Noahide be- talking points with the whole anti-Trinity stuff. But he makes an incredibly good case about porn. He said all those things. And he actually has had a huge part to play in the idea now that I see a lot of like younger men online actually realizing that it's that it's it's not only is it wrong it's like it's like um almost effeminate and like weak weak. he he actually says it's like a homosexual uh practice to sit there and think that sex like the the purpose of sex and fornication it's just like this self um gratifying thing and you see yourself as entitled to it all the time it's not about being procreative or doing anything in the context of marriage it's just like this uh entitlement to stimulation and it's very very base and i will say that he actually uh he just thought it had a huge impact since i've seen him stream the way he makes fun of, of the way men think they're entitled to just like masturbate in front of a, a computer all the time to like these like victimized you know sad women <laughs> who are and i'm not saying that they're at you know obviously they're accountable for their actions but you have no idea really what you're watching whether or not that right. girl even consented like or how old she was and and let's be honest there most guys aren't going after <laughs> looking for like middle-aged poor i mean i guess there is a market for that but it's they're looking for these young girls that look like as close to virgins as possible most of the time. whatever would and, be inappropriate to pursue in real life will pursue in the closet and it'll just get more and more dark and spiral and it's important it's designed to make you go into like super degenerate to open a door stuff over time yeah and to open a door actually, to the dark side well because yeah because a lot of the, like the porn hub sites you'll google like oh you'll search out something relatively vanilla and it will give you those results, but then it will suggest or, or advertise something like about incest porn or something really sick. And, and there's been studies that prove that there is like an inextricable link between um, men who get addicted to porn and they uh, have to ratchet up the degeneracy over time in order to have it. It's like any other drug, right? It's not strong enough anymore because that's really what it is. It's arousing is oh, and for a lot of guys it's the forbidden part of it um and then they go down this like uh it's almost like an algorithm that will lead mm-hmm. them in, into more and more perverse things in order to even get any type of stimulation from it after you know so like they'll it, it there's a scientific link between um pornography and uh the development of like pedophilic and homosexual urges right oh and yeah they did not yeah. Work out that way. that's right and a lot of guys will get numb to actual regular sexual activity in real life with a woman yeah because it, it's not anything it's not the same at all it's not scra- it's like it's not even that it's not satisfactory it's just it's two totally different wirings like this this weird voyeuristic act and then like actually interacting with a person intimately, it's not going to, it can't be your fantasy because it's real and you're there. <laughs> right. And, and it's, um, I think guys don't realize how bad like regular pornography uh, consumption makes them in bed. It doesn't like, it doesn't <laughs> help. It actually makes it worse because you're, it's just like, I don't know how to explain it. I have noticed I was not a, a virgin until marriage. I was an atheist from, for most of my life and i i definitely i i always hated porn and i always resented it because i noticed the way that it i didn't know how to put it into words and the world told me i was crazy especially mm-hmm. as an atheist thinking i had some leg to stand on about thinking a guy i was dating shouldn't watch porn and that i felt like it was cheating and that really i felt like if i caught you doing it behind my back you know i might as well che- like cheat on you to show you how it feels because there was no fair equivalent because like, oh, i don't care angel. if i was watching porn I, that's, just, I was very, I was kind of crazy and vindictive. Don't, I'm not saying that's no, the same. No, no. But I wanted to show them what it felt like to 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 have someone betray you that way when I was perfectly willing to not go anywhere else outside for my sexual gratification, mentally or otherwise. And nobody, out, guys, just would walk into the relationship thinking they were entitled to do this, like have this mm-hmm. double life where, and and. And it also, like, I, 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 if you actually looked at what they were watching, uh, one time I actually, you know, I, I, when I was in high school, a guy, I, I, you know, I was still a virgin at this time, but I found his, he was only 16, I found his porn on his computer. I really wasn't even looking for it. It was just all over the place. And it was so gross and degrading and, like, just 
ugh, gross. The gross, like, I won't go into it. Just, just gross. And like, I asked him, and I wasn't just innocently asking. I knew the effect it would have. I said, is this what you want to do to me? Oh. And he started sobbing. I'll never forget the way he sobbed in shame from the things I said to him. And I wanted him to understand, like, this is what, like, it's not like you're in this, like, bubble where it doesn't really happen. Like, when you're sitting here masturbating, looking at this disgusting stuff, I didn't even believe in God. But what I, what I know now is that God is watching. It's not like it just because nobody else is around. A tree falls in the forest. They don't, they don't know that you're looking at this sick crap and getting turned on by it. But, like, guys have to actually examine that so they understand, like, is this who I am? Is this consistent with, like, what I hold myself to be? Like, would I want other people to know that this is what I'm looking at? If not, like, why are you doing it? <laughs> like, if it would give you such great shame. Nothing I do with my husband would make me feel ashamed if other people knew about it. He's my, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, because mm -hmm. it's the, you know, it, there's, it's not wrong or evil. And like, that's consistent with who I am. When this you have a double life that that's, that's, that's where that there's a, uh, like a, it's a huge door for Satan, really. When you're, I, you're not being consistent or authentic because you're you making so many great points, but I need to stop you and interject a couple. Yeah. Of I got to finish steaming this milk <laughs> for the espresso. So I'm going to mute. <laughs> okay. Wow. You said a whole lot. You touched on so many different things that were just so true, which is some of the points that she the late Shelly Lubin was making about women that were involved in porn that hated the men because of earlier sexual abuse in their lives being raped or molested. And they wanted to destroy men. And they used porn being involved in the industry as a way to do that. Mm. They knew that it would Absolutely. destroy marriages. Make now, of men. Yes. And I talked to a gentleman that this happened to. Now, what you said when you were talking was about feeling betrayed if a man was watching that and that it might motivate you since he's committing what is called emotional infidelity. Because remember, Jesus said, if a man looks Jesus just on a woman, infidel, adultery, he, yeah, he didn't right. even say emotional. It just well, said, no, yeah, I'm just saying it, it yeah. because <laughs> people are psychologically, that's what they go. Well, I didn't really cheat, yeah. but it, but your wife doesn't look at it Jesus. that way. <laughs> she doesn't yeah, look at it that Jesus. way either. So I cho <laughs> tried to explain this to a guy who had ruined his marriage. He ended up getting a divorce because his wife went out and cheated on him when she discovered he was looking at all this porn and stuff. And she then began to feel she wasn't enough for him. So then she started looking for attention from other men. And it led to infidelity. And he got divorced and he was angry at her and blamed her for ruining the marriage. And I let him talk while he was doing the whole talk. I said, can I show you something that you might have missed that you didn't pay attention to? To, attention to and I showed him the scripture where Jesus said if a man even looks on a woman he was a believer and uh, to, to uh, lust after her he's committed adultery already in his heart because he was doing this the whole boys will be boys thing and I said let me show you what the scripture says and then I said now your wife felt abandoned by you and she went out and sought what she wasn't getting from you from another man now I'm not saying she's innocent but you are part to blame. He got quiet yeah. for a minute. And he said, you know what? That is true. I am partly responsible for what happened. At least he owned his mess. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's big of him. Because that's it the was. thing that bothers me the most. is the way that men feel entitled to it. Like, oh, like you're crazy for expecting them not to regularly look at other women naked and imagine having sex with them and masturbate. Like, that. oh, okay. I'm crazy well, for thinking like, like, like that's, that's, that's wrong. If I, if I'm, you know, we're, we're together and I'm, I'm being faithful. Uh, I, cause women, it's harder. I don't think it works as well for us. Like, it would be very difficult for me to do that. And like, look at men and be like, oh yeah, that's uh, like, I could, and if I did, I don't think most guys wouldn't even care anyway. So it's like not even a fair equivalent. And they, 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 they just, uh, that, that's why it's like, you almost have to, to show them how it feels. You almost have to actually cheat. Because a lot of guys just, oh, you look at porn? Cool, that means I get to. Like, they don't care. 
So they well, and there's an entitlement because the world has told them it's normal and that it's actually sick and abusive to expect mm-hmm. men not to do it. Jordan's and been wanting thing, to jump in for a minute. Well, no, I just want to interject because this is the original point that I was getting at is like, yeah, the danger is the pornography. Like that could be a, a whole show in itself. But the one thing that I really wanted to drive home was um, so I told you about the one person's reaction, but the second one, Lisa, that you actually brought to my attention, you know, the fact that somebody, when I brought up the role that the Christian played in this, actually called me a legalist. And I never made it a salvific issue. I was talking about Christian responsibility and right. nobody wants to hear about christian responsibility I love when they do that when they and say you're a legalist when you had never said anything. yeah and we like you. uh well for me um it's not just like i again i'm not gonna say anyone's name but if you really want to be part of the church for the truth don't put your beliefs in your username actually apply it to your life <laughs> oh yeah, me. I agree. <clears throat> well, right, and I mean, like, it's just dishonest because it's like if you know somebody absolutely believes in uh, grace through faith alone, contends for the eternal security of the believer, and like that's where their mind is. They are not somebody that's constantly running around and saying, "Are you smoking cigarettes?" Like, eh, eh, but they <laughs> criticize something and say this, like you might, sh- like, like we need to examine this more closely because it's about being. It's not about getting it right all the time. It's not about being perfect at all. It's just about, it's being, about honest. being honest. Okay, that's and, all and God wants. Repentance is changing your for. mind, which doesn't yeah. mean then continue to practice your pet sin, as I call them. It means. But if you do, at least not don't like deny it and say, no, it's fine. You're crazy. You're the legalist if you think it's well, wrong. Yeah. Well, that's what's what called I mean? being like, a hypocrite, though. And also yeah. making an occasion for your flesh. So you don't touch my pet sin. That hurt my that hurt my feelings. No, it's it's addressing what's wrong. And that's why I say, okay, let's say somebody is struggling with whatever. First of all, I always tell people, own your mess. Stop lying and saying, I don't want it. I don't you're lying. Because if you didn't want it, you wouldn't be doing it. So the first thing is you have to own it. And you have to tell yourself before God, open your mouth. Lord, I'm doing this thing. I know it's evil. I know it's wrong. Remove it from me. Create in me a clean heart. Holy Spirit, show me yes. how to cast this aside. This is what you're going to have to do. Because, where where you know, because it's like sometimes you don't even, you're so attached to it that you can say all that, but you can't ask God to, to like make me stop whatever it takes. And it's like you always have well, to it's ask like him, give the me the devil. courage to, to even get that far where, you know, like, Lord, I can't even, I can't even ask you to just take this vice away. From Why not? He sees do you. It. He sees you. I know. I'm saying that you have to, you have to you. pray to even get that enough strength. I'm not talking well, to you. I'm not talking to you. I'm right, talking right. to the person. He sees you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So playing yeah. like, you, you know, okay, God, you know, he sees you. Even if you're going in a closet, he still sees you. So oh, and that you, should just ruin it right there, right? I mean, oh, my goodness. That's embarrassing. Well, that will help if people <laughs> would actually be, put themselves in remembrance to the fact that you're not doing anything the Lord doesn't see. Well, and how selfish is it that we're sitting here talking about pornography and how it's relating to sex trafficking on a broadcast where we're trying to raise awareness to the agenda for child rape, but you're, you literally hijacked the entire, and Lisa, you know how disgusted I was with this. I don't know if I had the chance to talk to you about it, Ben, but I also talked to Renee about it. I was furious because they just, they took, oh, you're making me feel bad. What about the children that are being raped? How bad do you think they feel? But because you don't want to feel convicted or condemned, (laughs) like you just you didn't feel bad until now, really? Yeah, that's what I like. You know, I just like it. I mean, even people that don't believe in God, I think, naturally feel Mm -hmm. kind of stupid when they whip it out in front of the computer and just. I mean, it's like embarrassing. That's why they don't want other people to see. So it's like it's so weird that people. I've not actually seen a believer have the balls to actually try to or have the nerve rather to try to defend it like that or minimize it oh you missed it then yeah you missed it because they did it was Uh, how dare you make me feel bad about my pet sin wait a minute now hold on hold on i gotta get this in oh yeah i gotta get this in now if you go to justia.com 
and I don't know how we got down this road. It just must be Lord inspired because we were supposed to start with trivia, but <laughs> <laughs> public indecency. Okay. You guys need to know this, how they have shifted. This is a part of the antichrist spirit. The man of sin is going to change times and laws, and we're already seeing these things happen. They've been happening for the last 200 years going forward, little drips and drabs, removing protections of things that are decent and moral and right. Now, there are these legal terms in law. So I'm reading it from a legal website, all right? Public indecency generally refers to acts involving nudity or sexual activity in view of the public, often with the intent to shock, offend, or arouse. It includes criminal offenses like indecent exposure and lewd conduct. Some states use the term public indecency to refer to other offenses relating to public nudity, including the display or promotion of obscene materials. The U.S. Supreme Court affirmed the right of the United States to outlaw public nudity, holding that the state has an interest in protecting social order and morality, and that public nudity is not free expression protected by the First Amendment, and that was decided in Barnes v. Glenn Theater, 501 U.S. 560 568 in 1991. Sexual activity in public is illegal throughout the U.S., but states and localities differ on what constitutes illegal public nudity, both in terms of what body parts are considered indecent and whether that's, excuse me, must prove that a defendant had particular intent. It goes on to then describe indecent exposure, and then also lewd conduct, obscene displays, and other offenses considered public indecency. I put the link in the, ch the uh, chat. I'll put it in the description at the end of the broadcast so that you can go and read this for yourself. And this is what we're talking about when we start talking about these things and how they've started trying to chip away at these protections that have always been there in law, but now they're starting to roll them back and remove them either with new test cases or just steamrolling over them and pretending they don't even exist like they're not even there to protect the public and, by extension, the little public, which are the little people, the children. Now, oh, that, yeah, that's it absolutely has an effect on children, especially the ones oh, who absolutely. accidentally come across pornography, even though, not mm -hmm. even just the ones that are actually victimized by abusers, but those who get uh get uh, exposed to pornography i get exposed to pornography by accident mm -hmm. at four i was not ever abused but that that messed me up that perverted my mind and mm -hmm. uh was uh, like uh, that was with me forever it's it you know that i it, i didn't even i i didn't understand it and i thought that and because it was a oh, oh it was you know playboy I, I thought i was wondering i didn't know if i was gay or what was going on because it was images of women right and mm -hmm. it was arousing to, uh, four and 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 I, i'm a girl you know and mm -hmm. i wasn't abused i never had anything weird like that happen to me and i began masturbating at four nobody showed me how to do that that was just the reaction to seeing this and i'm never i've never been attracted to women it's not even about it's not even a sexuality thing it, it's not about like their orientation it's like it's uh it's just the, the the stimulation of it at all. Like you know, it's wrong, right? Or you know what you know what it is, even if you don't know what it is. When you see stuff like that, even as a little mm -hmm. kid, and it has ruined at least two generations. Uh, but especially oh, a lot more than that. Oh, a lot well, more I'm than that. Well, I'm talking about the well, online pornography. Um, oh, how how it's been well, so readily yeah, available to millennial men. Because they, with the magazines, guys are like lucky you're if talking they go about. Past 10, without seeing it for, you know I mean? Like uh, most guys now have seen online pornography before they're 10. <laughs> yeah. But b and back then, in the day, Angel, see, cause you're a millennial. Yeah. Okay. Like you found a magazine. That was how most young men and women got yeah. exposed because be yeah. see back in the day, a person either had to have a subscription to it to get it mailed to the door in the brown paper wrapping, or they, when you went into the supermarkets, they had them, but they were like, they would be in one aisle behind the counter. 
there would be an adult there that was at the checkout and you had to be over like 18 to get it and they would id you to get it yeah you couldn't I just that they'd have the little things over right pictures. okay mm -hmm. so and, and that in and of itself is 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 i mean they don't even have to cover the picture when they do that because it just puts that in your mind right the then. mystery Ooh, that's they're covering up the boobs and all it does is right. make like right. it, it's just as good as if they wasn't covered. And it's, they, it's a, it's a, it's an intentional temptation. I well, think. they want curiosity killed the cat. Right. So they want, it, it was always they that, want that intention. In your mind. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I know I found, well, my dad wasn't saved at the time. I found his stash. My mother didn't like it. She couldn't <laughs> no, it stand it. Said. Now I think every wife, that ever in, had to deal with this in any way. They never like the the women almost always despise it. They hate it. And then uh, he had it in his toolbox, I think it was. And my brothers found it. We were little. So then, like you said, what did that do to our psychology and how it affected us? And this is what they all, but see, y'all don't realize, some of y'all don't realize, they always intended this to be the effect. They knew those kind of things were going to happen. Because if you look into who's over this stuff, this stuff is spiritual. So we're not hating on anybody. You need to look behind the person, whatever that public figure is, whatever person you think you want to blame. No, no, no. Look for the spirits that are behind that person because that's where it's coming from is spiritual wickedness in high places. And these, this, these spirits are real. There are what's called incubus and succubus spirits. So if they can get you because they know about this stuff, sexual energy, any energy, anger, just pick something. The demons feed on those things. They they feed off of human beings like like they're they're uh what do they call it parasites? Okay, they feed off of our energy. And they and understand they don't, spiritual laws, and they yes. know whether you want to admit it or not that looking at these women with lust. It, you know, or men, but let's be honest, most of the time it's men looking at women in pornography. Although now it's just, now it's changing. Now women mm -hmm. are having uh, like huge porn problems too. So, mm -hmm. but I'm saying traditionally the wife was the one that discovered the stash and she would just have to eat that uh, resentment mm -hmm. because the guy would not even ever really take it seriously enough. Um, and the demons know that that was actual adultery that was committed. And they know the spiritual effect that has on a marriage. Especially because, like, at least if you actually got caught all the way, you know, going all the way, having a mistress, you would at least acknowledge what you're doing. But a lot of guys, especially now, like, will literally act like you're crazy and, like, abusing them for having a problem with it. Although they, it's funny because they won't, like, be open about looking at it off the bat. I thought you didn't think there was anything wrong with it. So apparently you know you have anything wrong it. with it. Yeah, because my because that's actually the real problem is the hiding. The hiding is the real like the part that um makes it really hurtful. It, it, it you know it, it's like once you actually trust somebody enough to where you don't you know that you're enough for them and like you understand their sexuality and you're not threatened by it and like you feel like it's like as in a marriage like that you that it belongs to you and you, be, you know, yours belongs to, to them. And they wouldn't do something like that behind your back. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it doesn't even bother you if they do it. It's the, it's the betrayal and the secrecy, but, but the, you know, when all of the printing presses and everything started up, you know, I'm sure Satan knew at least first off, he was in trouble because the Bible was going to be mass produced. Right. But mm -hmm. eventually they found a way to use it to, to really destroy us, you know, and that's, you know, one way you do that is destroy the fundamental building blocks of humanity, which is marriage family, yes, and women marriage carrying around family. this un, this unlike addressed resentment and hurt that even they aren't sure if they're, if they're, they have a right to feel, but Jesus mm -hmm. himself said it's adultery, like acknowledge it for what mm -hmm. it is. Like it's adultery to, and it's one thing to accidentally, I didn't mean to look at a girl while you're mine. Yeah. I lusted for a second. But that's, but to sit there and like, it's a ritual, like you're ritualistically mm -hmm. lusting after just like, uh, and then it's usually like women that like your wife would be offended. Like, oh, really? Like, this is the kind of woman, like, you know, it's not even a woman you'd be proud of, right? It's just like the dirtier, the, the grosser, the better, not like, ugly, but just like the more depraved, the better. Um, and I just, I've been, because this was something I dealt with even before I was a believer, 
And, and the more I think about it, it's just how, how much poison has pro- proliferated the relationship between men and women. And, and, and we, the, it, it's not just porn. It's the idea that we're entitled to fornicate. And that fornication is the default state now. And that it's mm-hmm. actually weird. How would you marry somebody without actually sleeping with them first? What if that sounds like that would be a disaster, you know? Like, you wouldn't mm-hmm. even know, like, know what you're getting. Like, like people well, are still doing mind that. mind is backward. I know. And our minds are totally backwards about marriage. And it's this entitlement to that spirit of fornication. I believe that's at the root of it all. Whether it be porn or just the idea that, like, you were designed to, especially as men, to go out and, like, you're entitled to, to, to get your rocks off. It's like, you know, w- marriage or no marriage. Like, how could anybody ask you not to do that? Like, no, God had a prescription for that. You get married. And, and, and it's between one man and one woman. And it's, uh, and, and I don't believe that. <sighs> I think marriage will always fail until we have a total, like, you know, reprogramming about what it is and, and what we are entitled to <laughs> and what we're, you know, what we're not entitled to. And that's one of those things. It's like, it's very childlike, like this is masturbatory or urge and in all ways our society, not just sexually, but everything's about gratification, not duty, not honor, not responsibility, gratification, instant gratification. Women have a whole different, <laughs> they're, they're, they're doing that in a million different ways too. Uh, and it's just like both men and women now, that's how they're programmed. That's their orientation to self-gratification. Yeah. Well, and the one thing I just want to leave it at um, on my end is because there are two great um, ministries slash movements out there that people can get involved with. The first being Exodus Cry. They actually um, had just recently, uh, last in December of last year, they did a huge movement that like took it, it they literally got millions of videos taken down on Pornhub. And then there's also a YouTube channel called Fight the New Drug, where they're actually talking to people who have come out of the dangers of sex trafficking and the link to pornography and all that. And again, like this isn't an attempt to be legalistic. It is fighting for the fact that people are being abused. And then as some like as a saved Christian, I was dealing with this and it's it's something that still becomes tempting at times if I'm just being 100% honest. Even, like, yeah, for me too. I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't even tempt me and I'm a girl, right? I mean, I, but so I understand, Jordan, I'm, that's not what we're saying at all. It's not where we're coming from at all. Yeah. It's just be honest about what it is. Be exactly. honest about, you know, it's not like why when you're tempted to like steal or like, I don't know, kill somebody, you don't know? like, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Why are you making me feel <laughs> like, you know, but it's, it's no different. I, I mean, I don't think, I think um, the adultery is a very big sin and so is fornication. And this is the bigger picture. Like when we're doing pornography, it is not just one sin. It's multitudes of sin. And even though oh, yeah. we're saved and secured in Christ, us oh, yeah. watching pornography can like, even if no one knows that we're watching pornography, we are supporting an industry that are leading oh, yeah. people away from Christ. And many will harden their hearts to the point where they don't even, either whether they're abused because of it or anything, they just want nothing to do with Christ. So these are the things as Christians that we need to keep our mind focused on. And I, Lisa and I, I think it was that night we were having this conversation and Lisa, you made a good point, but I, I somewhat disagree with it when you said it's not even a porn issue, it's a masturbation issue. And like, that's the way I used to look at it too. And I was like, okay, well I'll just put the pornography down and just, you know, masturbate. And I realized, wow, it really is a porn issue. And oh, that's rem- not what I meant though. No, I know, but I'm just saying like, because that's a mindset that I used to have too. Like, like I used to think that it was just masturbation that, Oh, porn is so easy to quit. Like that's, and I remember talking right. to my counselor at the time. I'm like, how sick is it that like, this almost feels like an X that I'm missing. Like, why is yeah. that? That's so much spiritual. Up. Yeah. Well, and so it there also are spirits the wiring called seducing, in your brain. seducing spirits. So that stuff is emanating from them and they draw you. You guys, if you haven't researched it, you can look at uh, topics like spirit husbands and spirit wives. I mean, there. I remember the first time I ever heard about this. 
I was in church and a pastor was talking about it. Uh, I was walking through the sanctuary, but he was sitting there talking to some other adults. And I overheard them talking as I was walking through because our family was connected to the ministry there. My father was the associate pastor. So we'd spend long days in church. Sometimes we didn't even go home on Sundays. And they were sitting there talking. And he was saying that a woman had came to visit him in counseling who had confessed to him that this spirit came in. This is a believer. Comes in in the middle of the night to have sex with her. And would basically say, I'm here and it's time for you to give up sex. So <laughs> this, these things are real. Then when we start talking about them, people start getting nervous because they've never had the experience with it. Or they don't know what to make of it. It's spiritual. So when people have um, are bound to these things, they have ties that bind them. This is what I really believe Jesus is talking about when he talks about in order to spoil the strong man, you have to first bind him. Then you can spoil his goods. You have to get bound into something in order for the devil to have his way with you in this area. So when people are so-called casting out devils, as I said, no, we know that a believer cannot be possessed from the inside. But you could be bound from the outside. And mostly it's the things that you've gotten in agreement with, which is why you need to renounce them because you have desired them. And your, your agreement to do it br brought you into a contract with the devil. And then when you talk about stuff like this, Christians start getting upset and they get at it. I don't know what to tell you. There are things that are demonic and evil that we have no business touching. And when you do, you give the devil license. You give him permission Especially to enter. Especially when you lie to yourself and God about it. Especially when you won't even call it what it is. Yeah, that's huge. And mm -hmm. you're not even naming that spirit that's that's behind it. Like if you can at least do that, that's like half the battle, right? And can and, I? And, and when you, you oh, can't yes. even admit that that it's wrong, that it is sin, or that like you can't even do that, like the you know align the thoughts of your heart with God's will, even if you can't actually align your actions with His will. Like, you know, you're really entrenched in it. And and then I do believe that's when they have a, a demons have a lot easier time uh, wreaking havoc in your life because you're willfully turning a blind eye by just not even calling it what it is. Whether you're not even trying to stop, it's just at least like calling it what it is, being honest mm -hmm. with yourself about it. Yeah. And the thing that I want to add, um, because it just came to my mind, and I think at, this is specifically for saved and secured believers and their spiritual state, because I remember, uh, because what had happened was, uh, again, when I was saved, um, I originally just fell into Calvinistic teachings because I believed in eternal security and I was raised in a Wesleyan Arminian church and they did not. So I was getting a lot of my teachings from Paul Washer, who at the time I thought was the greatest teacher ever. I literally had so like binders um, of just like Calvinistic teachings because I was just so fascinated and I was like, this is great. This is edifying. I love it. And then as, um, the logical conclusion as you start to get into Calvinism and you start dealing with habitual sin, you start to question whether you are safe, one of you elect all these things. And so for me, um, it got to the point where I would watch pornography and then have a panic attack after. So, and it made no sense. I'm like, you know, you're going to freak out after this. Like, why are you doing it? But once I was like, okay, well, I can believe in eternal security and not be a Calvinist. This is the dangers for a believer because one of the things, it was such a breath of relief, but that breath of relief almost becomes the point where you negate the severity of the sin. And eventually what happened, I was like, okay, I don't have to feel condemned condemned over this but then i i stopped even letting the conviction teach me and draw me close to god so as a result my whole spiritual walk which started came with it it pulled you in to a very dark road and or place in your life uh and this is why i wanted to mention that uh psalm 51 10 creating me a clean heart you can pray this to the lord do so Open your mouth and ask him, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. That means we can have a wrong spirit. See, when you talk about stuff like this to believers and they go, well, you can't have a wrong spirit. You're full of Holy Spirit. Listen, I always 
point to the passage where Jesus commends Peter in one sentence. And in the very next, he is rebuking him and calling him Satan. Get the, get the hints. Because this is, we can operate and not be in agreement with the mind of Christ. That's, that's why you have to make sure that you have a right spirit. Because if you receive something else, which is the introduction of a thought that is not in agreement with Christ, and then you get into agreement with that thing, and you begin to what? Practice. Mm -hmm. See, th this is why when, when we're talking about these things, this is what takes discipline and becoming a disciple, and be, which means being taught of the Lord. Then if we're receiving his instruction, we begin to put away the things that are what? Not like Christ. <laughs> but then people will start saying, well, that's not very gracious. And that's not, that's not very, um, what is it? Uh, oh, no, you're being legalistic. You're being legalistic now. No, we're supposed to have the mind of Christ, which means we're supposed to start casting away those things which would so easily beset us. We're not doing it to be saved. We're doing it because we are and we want to grow closer in our relationship with Christ and to be more like him and to exhibit Christ likeness to the world. We don't do it either to prove that we're saved. We do it because we are. We do it because we love him, but he first loved us. We do it because we want to be more like Jesus. We do it because we want to grow up. It's and this that. is exactly... And this is exactly what Paul was talking about when he was talking about leaving the elementary doctrines behind. Like, we know this. So nobody would dare to call Paul a legalist because we love all his quotes about assurance of salvation, who we are in Christ and eternal security. But for some reason, no one can quote the scriptures about spiritual maturity and crucifying the flesh and all that. And it's like, oh, yeah, I don't know. That, I don't think that I don't think that one applies to me. Right. And, and so then, you know, because I, I told you, I went on somebody else's, I told you this, Jordan, I went on somebody else's broadcast and I was trying to talk about these spiritual matters and growing up in God and, and I got attacked for it and shut down for it. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. This ain't right. Yes, we're, we're absolutely 100% free grace. That don't mean you're supposed to live like the devil. Just because you're saved don't mean you're supposed to live like the devil. Can we at least say that? Mm -hmm. I'm like, come on. You know, that's error. That is error if a person thinks because we can live like the devil, now therefore we should live like the devil. Oh, those, those are two different things. Yeah, you can fall and you can do something that's terrible and you are still saved if you are a believer. But we then do not then go say, go ye and do likewise. Or even dare to say that we were justified in any way. And we have to own our crap. And we have to say that wasn't right. This is wrong. That was ungodly. Come on. It doesn't make it legalistic to call a spade a spade. Okay, guys, really, we are so far down this road. <laughs> and I know I know, we went where the Holy Spirit led, but we do got to try to come back here a little bit or we're never going to get to our other topics for this evening. <laughs> I'm just going to throw the, the, the tips and trivia. We'll see if we can squeeze it in on the second side of the broadcast because we have to get to Brother... Jordan's presentation for this evening, which I think this might even tie in with what he's talking about. And then later on, it will also dovetail into some of the other things I, myself and Angel want to talk about on the second part of the broadcast. So, Jordan, uh, do you need a second, brother? Because I know we we were talking about this for a little while. Do you need a second to prepare yourself? Oh, no, I'm always ready to take down her okay. text. <laughs> 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 so, let me just sit up straight for this one <laughs> okay uh, um, did, oh I'm sorry go ahead oh no I was just going to start but did you have a question no no I was going to say please then go ahead with your wonderful presentation yeah so I think originally I thought a good format for this would be you know to kind of like take the 95 theses break it down like five at a time we would have a discussion and then last week when the uh, Lordship Paratip came in, we kind of lost um, that that format as it was anyway. So I figured like 
um, because I feel the Lord calling me to talk on some other things um, here in the future. And Lisa actually asked me to uh, speak on Eastern Orthodoxy, which is a, a one that I would love to get into as well. So I just think devoting so much time to this, especially when it is a thesis that all centers around one consistent theme almost, um, it, it would kind of... So, uh, keep me from being able to teach on a lot of other things that I feel are just as important. But I just think it's important that we realize um, that the reformers, again, I, I said it last week and I will say it again, we do not need a reformation of the Roman Catholic Church. We need a separation. And this is why people think that you either have to be Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, or Protestant. I'm none of those. I actually came to this realization this year just how dangerous protestant theology is just because it is um watered down roman catholicism in many ways some of them do hold to the true gospel and um some uh there are many in the protestant denominations who are saved because where are you going to find a church that isn't protestant outside the roman catholic eastern orthodox church i feel that um the baptist denomination was not a direct result of the um reformation of course unless you are a reformed baptist that's just basically a presbyterian disguised as a baptist so if you guys can get yourself in a really good baptist church that is um actually a movement that existed outside of the roman catholic church and interestingly enough martin luther um this is something you don't hear about when we're learning about martin luther and it is the um fact that there was an Anabaptist of that time once Martin Luther kind of rose to power and he had this reformation and kind of like it, this man had a lot of power uh, so basically an Anabaptist who he considered a heretic because the Roman Catholics um, were burning people who had the real gospel at the stake and so um some of these theologians, the Anabaptists eventually becoming Baptists. Now, that doesn't go first all Anabaptists, because some Anabaptists are kind of like your your Quakers, Amish, and all them. Um, but, you know, the Anabaptist movement did kind of lead into this Baptist theology because the reason why they uh, became known as the Baptists is because um, the the Anabaptists were known as these people who were rebaptizing people who were leaving the Roman Catholic Church. And so basically, um, the Roman Catholic Church, if, very watered down version of the story, basically started like this story that the Baptists were, or the Anabaptists were. Um, not promoters of baptism because they did not practice infant baptism. They only believed in the baptism of the believers. So they actually uh, dropped the A and became Baptist. But I say all that to say uh, an Anabaptist who was deemed a heretic by Martin Luther was imprisoned in a hole. And I, I strongly suggest everybody Google and look this up because it's very fascinating. Look up who Frank Erba was. He was an Anabaptist who was literally dropped into a hole slash dungeon and died there at the hands of Martin Luther because he had Anabaptist theology and Martin Luther deemed him a heretic. And this is after Martin Luther started the Reformation, rose to power. So this was very late into Martin Luther's ministry. So I thought we would just take a gander here at the 95 theses, just so people know what the thesis says. Um, and then we can kind of commentate on it because I think a lot of people think that the thesis is so long, but it's actually like only two pages long. So I thought I would just list them out. Now we have another great document because I think a lot of people are like, well, what did he mean by that? What do we mean by that? There's actually a document that Martin Luther wrote about a year later called The Explanations. And he goes in great detail about what he meant about all these points. So I just, I want you guys to listen to this. If you don't recall the backstory of the 95 Theses, go back and watch last week's broadcast. I really broke it down there. But so I'm just going to start at one and I'll just run through these as quick as possible because I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. So here are the 95 Theses. 
when our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said, repent, quoting Matthew 4, 17, he willed the entire life of a believer to be one of repentance. This word cannot be understood as referring to the sacrament of penance, that is confession and satisfaction as administered by the clergy. Yet it does not mean so, by the way, these are, um, I, I'm just reading them without the number bulletin points because that's kind of how this should have been read anyway. So um, yeah, it does not mean solely inner repentance. Such inner repentance is worthless unless it produces various outward mortification of the flesh. The penalty of sin remains as long as the hatred for self that is true inner repentance, namely till our entrance of the kingdom of heaven. The Pope neither desi desires nor is able to remit any penalties except those imposed by his own authority or that of the canons. Let me just enlarge this real quick. I'm sorry. I'm like... <laughs> Uh, the Pope cannot remit any guilt except by declaring and showing that it has been remitted by God or to be sure by remitting of guilt in cases reserved by the judgment. If this to grant remission in these cases were disregarded, the guilt would certainly remain unforgiven. God remits guilt to no one unless at the same time he humbles him in all things and makes him submiss submissive to the vicar, the priest, the pen the penitential canons were imposed only on the living and according to the canons themselves nothing should be imposed on the dying those priests act ignorantly and wickedly though in the case of the dying reserve canon canon i'm so sorry guys <laughs> canonical penalties for purgatory those tears of changing the canonical penalty and the penalty of purgatory were event evidently sown while the bishop slept. And then he goes on to quote Matthew 13, 25. In former times, canonical penalties were imposed not after, but before absolution as tests were, uh, as tests of true contrition. The dying are freed by death from all penalties, are already dead as far as the canon laws are concerned and have a right to be released from them. Imperfect piety or love on the part of the dying person necessarily brings with great fear and smaller the love, the greatest the fear. Uh, da, 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 da. This fear or horror is sufficient in itself to say nothing of other things to constitute the penalty of purgatory since it is nearly the horror of despair. Hell, purgatory, and heaven seem to differ the same as despair, fear, and assurance of salvation. It seems as though the souls in purgatory fear should necessarily decrease and love increase. Furthermore, it does not seem to prove either by reasons or by scripture that souls in purgatory are outside the state of merit that is unable to grow in love, nor does it seem to prove that the I'm so sorry, guys. This is such small writing. <laughs> Nor does it seem to be proved that the souls in purgatory, at least not all of them, are certain and assured of their salvation. Even we ourselves are entirely certain of it. Therefore, the Pope, when he uses the words plenary remission of all penalties, does not actually mean all penalties, but only those imposed by himself. Thus, those indulgence preachers are in error who say a man is absolved from every penalty and saved by people indulgences. As a matter of fact, the Pope remits the souls in purgatory no penalty which, according to the canon law, they should have paid in this life. If remission of all penalties whatsoever could be granted to anyone at all, certainly it would be granted only to the most perfect, that is to very few. For this reason, most people are necessarily deceived by the indiscretion discriminate and high sounding promise to release to be released from penalty that power which the pope has in general over purgatory corresponds to the power which any bishop or curate has in the particular way it's uh diocese and parish the pope does very well when he grants permission to the souls in purgatory not by the power of the keys which he does not have but by the intercession for them they preach only human doctrines who say that soon as the money clings into the money chest, the soul flings from purgatory. And I quoted that last week. It is certain that when money clings in the money chest, greed and 
I think that word's a virus, <laughs> can be increased. But when the church intercedes, the result of the hands of God alone, who knows whether all the souls in purgatory wish to be redeemed, since we have the exception in St. Severness and St. Paschal as related in a legend. No one is sure of the integrity integrity of his own contrition, much less of having received plenary remission. The man who actually buys indulge, indulgences is a rare as he who is really penitent. Indeed, he is exceedingly rare. Those who believe that they can be certain of their salvation because they have indulgence letters will be eternally damned together with their teachers. Many men must especially be on guard against those who say the Pope's pardons are that of inestimable gift of God, which man is reconciled to him, for the graces of indulgences are concerned only with the penalties of sacramental satisfaction established by men. They who that contrition is not necessary on the part of those who intend to buy souls out of purgatory or buy confessional privileges, preach unchristian doctrines. Any truly repentant Christian has the right to full, full remission and penalty of gift, even without indulgence letters. Any true Christian, whether living or dead, participates in all the blessings of Christ in the church, and this is granted this is granted him by God, even without indulgence letters. Uh, nevertheless, papal remission and blessings are by no means to be disregarded, for they are, as I have said in Thesis 6, the proclamation of divine remission. It is, the very it is very difficult even for the learned theologians at one and the same time to commend to the people the bounty of indulgences and the need of true contrition. A Christian who is truly contrite seeks and loves to pay penalties for his sins. Let that sink in. <laughs> the penalty of indulgences, however, relaxes penalties and causes men to hate them, at least and furnishes occasion for hating them. Papal indulgences must be preached with caution, lest people erroneously think that they are preferable to other good works of love. Christians are to be taught that the Pope does not intend that the buying of indulgences should be in any way compared with the works of mercy. Christians are to be taught that he who gives to the poor and lends to the needy does not better does a better deed than those who buy indulgences because love grows by works of love. Man thereby comes better. Man does not, however, become a letter by means of indulgences, but merely freed from penalties. Christians are to be taught that he who sees a needy man and passes him by yet gives his money to indulgences does not buy papal indulgences, but God's wrath. Christians are to be taught unless they have more than they need, they must reserve enough for their family's needs and by no means squander it on indulgences. Christians are to be taught that buying indulgences is a matter of free choice, not commanded. Christians are to be taught that the Pope, in granting indulgences, needs and thus desires their devout prayer more than their money. Christians are to be taught that papal indulgences are useful only if they do not put their trust in them, but very harmful if they lose their fear of God because of them. Christians are to be taught that if the Pope knew the, ex the exactions of the indulgence preachers, he would rather that the Basilica, I think that's that word, <laughs> of St. Peter, uh, Peter were burned to ashes than built up with the skin, flesh, and bones of his sleep. Christians are to be taught that the Pope would and should wish to give his own money, even though he, <laughs> and if you guys remember last week, this is probably one of the points that really irks the Pope. So uh, Christians are to be taught that the Pope would and should wish to give his own money, even though he had to sell the Basilica of St. Peter to many of those whom certain hawkers of indulgences casual money. It is vain to trust in salvation by indulgence letters, even though the indulgence commissioner or even the Pope were to offer his own soul as security. They are the enemies of Christ and the Pope who forbid altogether the preaching of the word of God in some churches in order that the indulgences may be preached unto others. Injury is done to the word of God when it is the same sermon in equal or larger amount of the time is devoted in indulgences of the word. It is certainly the Pope's sentiment that if indulgences were 
a very insignificant are celebrated with one bell, one procession, and one ceremony than the gospel, which is the very greatest thing should be preached with a hundred bells, a hundred processions, and a hundred ceremonies. The true treasures of the church, out of which the Pope distributes indulgences, are not sufficiently discussed or known among the people of Christ. That indulgences are not temporal treasures in certain is certainly clear for many indulgence sellers do not distribute them freely, but other gather them, nor, uh, nor are the merits of Christ and the saints for even without the Pope, the latter always works grace. So the inner man and the cross death and hell for the outer man. St. Lawrence said that the poor of the church were treasures of the church, but he spoke according to the usage of the word in his own time without want of consideration we say that the keys of the church given by the merits of christ are that treasure for it is very clear that the pope's power is of itself sufficient for the remission of penalties in case reserved for himself the true treasure of the church is the most holy gospel of the glory and grace of god but this treasure is naturally most uh, odious for it makes the First to be the last, quoting Matthew 20, 16. On the other hand, the treasure of indulgences is naturally most acceptable, for it makes the last to be first. Therefore, the treasures of the gospel are nets with, with which one formerly finished for men of wealth. The treasure of indulgences are nets with which one now fishes for the wealth of man. The indulgence with our... The, oh... I can't say it. Demagos, D E M A G O G U E S. A claim as the greatest grace are actually understood to be such only insofar as they promote gain. They are nevertheless, in truth, the most insignificant grace when compared with the grace of God in the piety of the cross. Bishops and curates are bound to admit in admit the commission commissaries of papal indulgences with all reverence but they are much more bound to the strain their eye and ears less men preach their own dreams instead of what the pope has commissioned let him who speaks against the truth concerning papal indulgences be anathema and accursed but let him who guard against the lust and license of indulgence priesthoods be blessed just as the Pope justly thunders against those who by any means whatsoever contrive harm to the sale of indulgences, much more does he intend to thunder against those who use indulgences as a pretext to contrive harm to the holy love and truth, to consider people indulgences so great that they would absolve a man even if he had done the impossible and had violated the mother of God is madness. Um, and mother of God there is Mary. We say, on the contrary, that papal indulgences cannot remove the very least of the venial sins. Um, so just so you guys know, there are venial sins, which are those sins that don't necessarily have to be confessed and would not lead someone to hell. And then there are the mortal sins that you do have to take to confession, which if you do not, you would end up in hell. These venial sins would be purged in purgatory, according to their theology. Um and they would use 1 Corinthians 3 to quote that. Um, as far as guilt is concerned, to say that even St. Peter, if he were now Pope, could not grant the greater graces is blasphemy against St. Peter and the Pope. Again, anyone not familiar with Roman Catholic theology, they believe St. Peter was the very first Pope, the Pope being the vicar of Christ, meaning Christ on earth in man form, having full authority to override scripture. Um, even though we see in scripture that Peter wasn't even the head of the church in, um, help me out, help me out, Antioch. <laughs> um, and uh, that was actually James. And the fact that when a man bowed down to Peter, he said, get up, Who? I'm just a man, even though it is customary that people bow down, kiss the ring of Pope and worship him as God. So just throwing that side note in there. Uh, we say on the contrary that even the Pope present, or I'm sorry, that even the present Pope or any Pope whatsoever has greater graces at his disposal. That is the gospel, spiritual powers, gifts of healing, etc. as it is written. And then he quotes first Corinthians 12, 28, which I'm not entirely sure what that one says. I'll have to look that up um, to say that the cross is. Uh, 
emblazoned with the gospel coat of arms and set up the indulgence preachers in equal in worth of the cross of Christ is blasphemy. The bishop, mm-hmm. curates, and theologians who promote such talk and spread among the people will all have to answer for this. Um, the This unbridled preaching of indulgences makes it difficult to even even for learned men to rescue the reverence which is due to the Pope from slander or from the shrewd questions of the laity, such as why does not the Pope empty purgatory for the sake of holy love in dire need of the souls that are there if he redeems an infinite number of souls for the sake of the miserably money with which to build a church? Um, And this is in quotation marks. I'm assuming this was a quote that was said at a council or something. So I'll do some digging in that. Um, but since it's in quotations, it only leads me to believe that it is either a response to a statement made at a council or something that was put into a uh, writing that he was refuting that was going around at this time with these hawkers coming into town. So uh, the former reason would be most just and the latter is most trivial. Uh, let me just find my spot here real quick. Okay. Again, why? Oh, and this is another quote. So, again, something else that he is refuting. So, the quote is Why are funeral and anniversary masses for the dead continued? And why does he not return or permit the withdrawal of the endowments founded for them since it is wrong to pray for the redeemed? Again, so every time he says again, it's followed by a question in quotes. So, uh, so again, what is the new piety of God and the Pope that is in consideration for money? They permit a man who imposes their enemy to buy out of purgatory of God and do not rather Becca use the need of the pious and beloved soul free it for the pure love's sake. I'm actually wondering, I'm going to have to do some research on this. I'm actually wondering if these quotation questions are questions that he's actually proposing to be discussed because that's what it's starting to sound like to me. But I, and if anyone knows the answer to that in the chat, I would love to know. Um, again, why are the penitential canons long since abrogated abrogated and dead in actual fact and thought disease now satisfied by the granting of indulgences as though they were still alive in force again why does not the pope whose wealth is today's great whose wealth is today greater than the wealth of the richest crass crassus <laughs> built this one in the basilica of saint peter with his own money rather than that with the money of the poor believers Again, what does the pulp remit or grant to those who, by perfect contrition, already have the right to full remission and blessing? Again, what are the greater blessings that could come to the church than if the pope were to bestow these remissions and blessings on every believer a hundred times a day, and as he, as he now does but once? Since the Pope seeks the salvation of souls rather than the money by his indulgences, why does he suspend the indulgences and pardons previously granted when they have equal efficiency? To repress these sharp arguments... Yeah, so this right here lets me know these were just proposed arguments. So Theses 90 says, To repress these very sharp arguments of the laity by force alone and not resolve them by giving reasons is to expose the Church and the Pope to ridicule their enemies to make Christians unhappy. So it for sake of not being dishonest right now or speaking out ignorance, I will say I'm not fully familiar um, with the nature of these questions, but it sounds like these are just bullet points of things that we need to question and almost hypothetical questions that were not being answered in the church. So I will do more digging on that. That's not something I had ever considered Um having the 95 theses but uh so here's the last five right here so if therefore indulgences were preached according to the spirit and intention of the pope all these doubts would readily resolve indeed they would not exist anyway then with all the prophets who say that people of christ peace peace and there is no peace 
And it's funny because he uses that peace, peace and quotes Jeremiah 614. Blessed be all the prophets who say to the people of Christ, cross, cross, and there is no cross. Christians should be exhorted to be diligent in the following of Christ, their head through penalties, death and hell, and thus be comfort. Uh, confident of entering in the kingdom through tribulations rather than their false security and peace, quoting Acts 14 22. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the 95 theses that caused 60,000 denominations. And as we can see, there are a lot of heresies and um, some misquoted scripture in there. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> you had a lot in there. There was a whole lot. But if we interjected on, on the different points, that we heard that were troubling, we'd be here all night. This would take like exactly. over, over four hours to do, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Ben, did you, were you going to say something? No. Oh, oh, oh I, I thought I heard you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was just looking up the word because you mentioned it a couple of times when you were reading. Uh, I think you said Basilica more than once, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just to give a definition of that, this is Something you're going to find a little interesting, I think. Um, an oblong building ending in a semicircular ass, apse, A-P-S-E, used in ancient Rome, especially mm -hmm. for a court of justice in a place of public assembly. That's the first meaning. Second, an early Christian church building consisting of, I think it's nave, N-A-V-E, and aisles with Clara story that's C L E R E S T O R Y and a large high transept from which an apse A P S E projects and then a Roman Catholic church given ceremonial privileges. I also think though that that word is derived from basilisk which is a term for a serpent or a dragon. Um, oh, yeah, because if you look at their buildings, they have like dragons on the great point, Ben, because if you actually take the time to look at these buildings, they have dragons as door handles. And like, why? Why? Oh, yeah, there's a um, there's a famous statue at the Vatican. I mean, we all know that. Well, hopefully we all know or that you know, a lot of the, the arch, or, uh, architecture, uh, if you look at it carefully, it, they have either like dead sheep or uh, sheep under under the um, th like the whole throne or, or the altar, so to speak, are, is showing like a, a sheep's head. Um, they show all kind and, and like uh, the whole Virgin Mary thing is really just a they often picture it if you turn it back down, especially it, it looks like a vagina. Uh, mm -hmm. The there's statues, uh, a very prominent statue of a, a I forgot the name of it. It's um it's a uh, father and son. And they're and they're struggling with serpents. They're like strangling them, and and you know uh, they're they're wrestling with serpents. Um, it was really interesting too because when I was looking at this whole uh, human evolution uh, hoax thing, I, I noticed that some of these people uh, they went to the Vatican, and they, the only only pictures they took of it was them posing with these statues of men uh, wrestling with the dragon. Uh, so yeah, I mean the whole the whole Vatican architecture. We you know there's the the keyhole, which I think is a picture of the a key to the bottomless pit. There's peacocks and acorn, uh, uh, peacocks uh, and um, uh, uh, pine cones all over the place. I mean, it's all it goes back to Egypt. It's all yeah, it's, all it's definitely connected to sacred geometry. For example, that word I just looked up uh, uh, that. A P S E word. Um, was it? How was that spelled? Hold on, make sure I have it right. Because I was just looking. Yeah, A P S E. It's connected to the word apsis, A P S I S, which when you look that up, it's a Greek orbit. And they show a circle with all these different dots. And it denotes either of the two extreme points, the farthest and nearest point of orbit planetary body about its primary body or simply the the primary the plural term ap sides usually implies both apsis points farthest and nearest and then there's a bunch of different diagrams that bring up other terms like orbital orbital eccentricity elliptic orbit 
orbital inclination, uh, Kepler's laws of planetary uh, motion, and then the argument of periapsis, which is another disk that's coming up, looks like from the Earth. So <laughs> it's definitely connect connected to the sun and planets and orbits and all that. Oh, stuff. yeah. It, it's pagan sun worship, and there's so much tied in with, like, Greek mythology, anything. And uh, Ben brought up an interesting point, too. Like, if you actually, if you look at the Vatican, and because they, oh, man, that should be a broadcast talking about all the pagan, mm -hmm. because not only the pagan symbolism that is present in the Roman Catholic Church, but it is so interesting how we see pagan symbolism in washington dc with the washington monument the lincoln memorial which strongly resembles the monument of zeus for some reason it's just it's crazy that people don't see the connection but what if you do an aerial shot of the vatican it actually um is shaped like a male's genitalia hmm. well, i'm not surprised i mean we got to talking one night about ley lines on a different broadcast and it's like all the freaks came out that night just started attacking us or even talking about uh ley lines and washington is is laid out on these these different parallels you hear people talk about the 33rd degree parallel concerning a number of different things like um uh what's that area 51 that's laid out on ley lines and different things that this this is we didn't create this stuff i mean and when we start talking about it and why do people get agitated about it <laughs> thank you for that jordan i really appreciate that yeah, wow uh, that was a lot to take in i'm i was just like heresy everything <laughs> heresy well, and blasphemy <laughs> No, and this is something that's very important to realize for because we are seeing a mass exodus in the wrong dire direction from Protestants today because they when a Protestant does dig into church history they convert to Roman Catholicism or Eastern Orthodoxy without realizing the historical revision that was taking place without being able to realize the historical context of which some of these statements were saying without realizing that how much the church had fallen into apostasy, even during the time that Paul was writing his letters. Um, I think people put a lot of stock into things, especially after the council of Nicaea. I don't listen to anything that the church fathers taught after 300 AD. Cause I know that's when it started getting really crazy and people buy into the lie that these are the only letters that existed and that's not true there are so many letters and that's you know the canonization and all that that's what took um so long to figure out and it's important i think church history is very important but i think if you are not fully rooted in what the bible says it's very easy to fall into this fallacy that the Roman Catholic Church will lead you into because they they not only because while every cult has proof text, they have proof text from history and they can make a very strong case. And so if you're not prepared for that and if you're not Holy Spirit filled, you can really buy it. And all it is is uh, ancient Babylonian paganism disguised as Christianity when you get down to it. So um, I say this to warn Protestants to not fall into heresies, but also learn the roots of the very thing that they are going to church because there is so much paganism practice in the church today and in the world. And I'm not trying to be like one of those like, oh, everything's pagan, don't have fun kind of person. <laughs> but right. we do need to think about, uh, do you choose to bow before God or do you choose to bow before Baal? That's a very important responsibility that a Christian needs to make. Everything does boil down to worshiping God or worshiping the devil. And so I, I just... Be cautious if you do dig into church history, um, because there is quite a bit of alarming things. And you have to understand that um, church history was revised by the Roman Catholic Church. And those who would have been writing letters with the true gospel were being burned with their Bibles and letters at the stake. 
right? And that's when I could tend my brother, he my brother is Catholic. Uh well actually my well, he's the main one. And uh he, you know, I argue with him all the time, like, why would you trust the fallibility of history to trust that we've you've received it and and uh over and above the fa- infallibility of God's word? You know, wh- you know, why would God even give us his word if he would just simply entrust men to deliver it or a church affiliation to to keep it? There would be no reason for him to record that word if, if he was going to use some kind of church or something. Uh, and uh, I, I, I tell him all the time straight up that, you know, it's a neo-Babylonian cult. And even when I share with him the true doctrine, he's like blown away by it. It's like, whoa, that's deep. And he can't process mm-hmm. it. Like It's like, whoa, you speak on authority. Uh, you know, it's like overwhelms him. And yet it, I can tell it's, you know, coming hard against his programming. And he doesn't know quite what to do with it. But there's some kind of stronghold on him. Like that. And I think it goes back to stuff he did as a child, uh, messing with Ouija boards and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I still hold out hope for him. Yeah, well, and it's interesting that you say that because just common sense. Don't you think you would trust, um, you know, the disciples who walked with Jesus, Paul, who had the gospel revealed to him divinely on the road to Damascus, like, and then spent 15 years learning directly from Christ. Like, don't these people have a little bit more credibility than somebody who was coming along at the time when the Islamic faith was rising and certain things were being said to refute that and um, introduce a theology to also bring um, other pagan religions in? Like, this is something that people aren't seeing. And um, I actually, I would strongly suggest anybody who's interested in this topic. I actually have a copy myself um, because we know through Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy, it doesn't seem as much, but definitely Roman Catholicism. It, you have your catechism. Martin Luther actually wrote his own catechism. Um, I believe you can get the short catechism on Amazon for free. Uh, you might even be able to get the short and long one uh, for yeah. a cheaper price. But you, you can, can get online. Get a- at, uh, th- I'm sorry. Uh, you can get online for free at lcms.org. That's that's Ooh. a Lutheran Church, uh, Missouri Synod. And this one with my, my, my daughter, I'm sorry, my wife goes to. And uh, you could you could find uh, that. You could find those short and longer catechisms on there. Uh, and what's interesting, though, while you were talking, I was looking at for, you know, looking for about because the, the things you were saying about what he in his uh, whatever you call it, his treatise about indulgences and things like that, there's no reference of those on on that site, which is uh, you know interesting uh, that they kind of conceal that or don't even try to refute it. Um, so I thought I'd add that. Sorry to interrupt. No, that was that was important. Jordan, um, I just wanted to, I wanted to say. Um... I'm glad that you brought up Eastern Orthodox because I've seen recently it's like uh, those who are, uh, you know, maybe like former unbelievers, agnostics, whatever, they're starting to realize or, you know, that the Bible's true or it might even just be like a political thing because they're conservative and so they're becoming Christian and somehow like they could, they're smart enough to see through Catholicism and know not to trust the Vatican they think, but a a lot of them are are ending up in the Eastern Orthodox Church. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and they come off like they're based, like they're the the uh, down-to-earth, you know, red pill of Catholic Church, or something like that, and they're they're doing these things where they'll, like, take a stand politically, stand up against, like, a lot of these little, that's how they draw people in. They look like they're the ones who are really walking the walk. Mm-hmm. And nobody even cares about what the doctrine is. And, you know, I've had Eastern Orthodox tell me that, the, that like, you know, that, that they believe in faith alone, right? But um, yeah. it seems like it's even harder to nail down exactly what their uh, gospel presentation is. It was difficult for me to figure it out, at least. Um, well, they're, 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 pretty, they're hardcore legalists. I mean, you could t- pretty much tell they any are. false religion by the outfits they wear, you know, where, where the... Uh, the yeah. leadership will wear, uh, you know, they separate themselves from the laity by wearing fancy outfits and somehow that makes them more holy. And I know the uh, Eastern, uh, East, the Orthodox are pretty hardcore they, and, and they may say faith alone, but they redefine faith. Like, oh, well, exactly. it's faith that works. Yep. You know? faith, uh, faith means actions. 
Well, yeah. and that's what you always have to get down to. Are they dis- are they defining faith like Hebrews defines faith? Or does faith, like, for example, the Church of Christ, which I always bring up, to them, water there baptism... One, they're screwing people up, too, because they get into these conspiracy and conservative circles. I've seen a lot of that. Exactly. So it all boils down to um, what elements are introduced with faith. And so... Um, but this is actually why Lisa wants me to talk on this, because I don't think people realize everyone just thinks, oh, Eastern Orthodox, that's just a rebranding of Roman Catholicism. It is a complete different religion, even from Roman Catholicism. It, it focuses on theosis. That is their main thing of salvation. Their whole concept is God became man so man can become God. So I'm really looking forward to that presentation because there is no one on the apologetics field right now tackling Eastern Orthodox. And Eastern Orthodox is and, more... And there's a lot of people pushing for it. Like, like uh, Jay mm-hmm. Dyer, he's like their number one like PR guy lately. Oh, or and... Hank Hanegraaff, the Bible Answer Man. Why is he... Why is he the Bible Answer Man? <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even... I, I've heard of him. I don't even know who he is. I know. Like, I always look at people like Jay Dyer. It's really dangerous because what they do is they come on the scene sort of in a secular way where they're like, talking about like they're like philosophy or or conspiracy theory or, or come off very intellectual right and then mm-hmm. they give away their and, and they gain all this trust and respect uh, a, a lot of times with people that are unbelievers um and or not sure where they stand but looking and then they get their you know they, they get these people respect and then they make their endorsement for which uh, mm-hmm. false doctrine that they promote and then they go to bat for it and he, he i mean he just talks endlessly about it all the time you know and and uh, brainwashes people yep yep like e michael jones for the catholics if you've ever heard of him he's a snake i haven't heard he's of him snake. i'll look him up and, and and then there's this this have you heard of the set of acantist uh sect of catholicism it's like this uh the anti-vatican II trash oh, yeah. path. no <laughs> that's real real dangerous man that one's really bad because of how how close to the truth it is in a lot of ways it's because you know most even a lot of people that might even have you know it might even be saved don't even focus enough on what the true gospel is much less unbelievers and mm-hmm. and they and set of acantus seem to reject all the very obviously ridiculous things about catholicism you know like like the obvious uh heresy that's like all over the place and not to mention the pope and all of that Mm -hmm. um but they 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 maintain their works based gospel and like the idea of the 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 true like the the true church and all of that um but but i i I would like i don't know if you've ever looked into it but that might that's another thing gaining steam i've noticed well and it's so funny that you say that because they the uh, all of them act like the greatest betrayal in history was the protestant reformation but there are all these other schisms that happen that are just claiming like oh we have the one true church kind of thing and the thing they fail to understand what the one true church is they view it as an organization rather than the body of christ they don't understand where that term originated from just like the for example the word gospel like we know what the gospel is today in its context but people don't understand that that was almost a very tongue-in-cheek like statement against caesar at that time because when caesar would con um conquer his territories he'd be like oh here's the gospel of caesar like congratulations you guys have been conquered and now you're all subjected Mm -hmm. to caesar so they took that word and they're like here's the gospel of jesus christ he's the real king the real conqueror and all that and the same thing was happening with church the word church being like the assembly or anything you know the ecclesia the called out ones we are called out for a purpose in the body of christ so um but they just take the church into the four walls because just like the many cults and everything, they want to make the church the way of salvation. They want to play God themselves. That's all any false religion is, is an attempt to play God and control the masses and bring salvation under their terms of and their umbrella. Right. Well, that was a perfect ending. <laughs> That was a perfect place to stop right there, Jordan, because we're going to need to take our break now. I thank you guys for the lively discussion that we've had on the various topics. 
that we have discussed. Uh, this will conclude because Jordan ran through it. Now, Jordan, if you want to come back at a later date for some of the explanations where you were saying, um, what's his name? Darn Martin it. Luther. <laughs> Thank Martin. you. <laughs> Martin Luther, because uh, I was thinking about Eastern Orthodox and all these different things you guys were uh. discussing. Um, if you want to come back and, and do his explanation of his own theses, that's fine. We can do that another time. But I know you are excited to get to discuss next week, possibly, if you want, the yeah. the whole Eastern Orthodox thing. Because we started talking about it one evening, and Jordan just – he lights up like a firefly when he starts talking about church history because he knows this stuff so well he made it exciting for me because if i had to go read a book <laughs> about it i don't think it would ever get done but when he started talking about it he got me interested in it because he was explaining how they have redefined what we call like christian buzzwords or christian catchphrases mm -hmm. and when they say it we think it means one thing but it means something else and we find mm -hmm. that a lot to be the case a lot what a lot of different cults <laughs> yes. that they redefine the what words mean and the bible always defines those words this will just be my last tidbit before we go to break then um i i probably since the explanations is so long i probably won't ever dive into that unless it's like really pressing but i it, you can get it for free online i encourage anybody who does decide to um dive into church history, but get stumped, reach out to me. I have a lot of people who are confused about church history that reach out to me all the time. So please, if you get stumped, don't get fearful and be like, oh, they have it right. Reach out to me and let's have a discussion about it. Okay. All right. Well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for making it to the halfway point of the broadcast. Sister Angel, are you ready to go with your topic for this evening when we come back from the break? Uh, yes, I'm actually just uh, getting some um, video clips together for Ben oh, right now. Okay. Um, that might be helpful in fleshing this out a little bit more. Um, okay. So, um, that, but I should be, uh, I'm having a really good heartburn all of a sudden. That was really annoying. Oh, Me uh, too. I don't know what it really? is. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, well, and it's like the kind where it's like, it's not really, I don't know. I don't even know if it's really heart rates where it feels like there's air in your throat or something. Yeah. Did you no. hear me keep like hiccuping and stuff? I'm sorry. I digress. Yeah, <laughs> I hate you're, that. You're, 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 uh, I didn't hear so, you. Your words are so spicy. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I see what you were saying. <laughs> I was like, oh, is my connection bad? I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's the most annoying thing, and there's like you could take like, antacids and stuff. It doesn't really do it. It doesn't really fix like that particular whatever that is that just, the esophagus like bubbles mm -hmm. or whatever. And I can't. I don't know how to burp. I can't burp. Can, can you imagine? It's so, <laughs> I, it's like I'm physically like it's so pathetic. I, and so I just have no relief. Uh, but yeah, so I, I should I should be I should be um, ready to go when we get back. Oh, okay, see, that's I awesome. Hear it. Sounds like my stomach's growling, but it's not. <laughs> okay. I don't then know if you guys we... can hear that, but. No, I did not hear it, thankfully. Okay, good. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay, good. It sounds like it to me. It sounds in my head like people can't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, we've made it to the halfway point. We're going to take a break here. We'll be back in just over roughly 15 minutes. Uh, for this intermission, stretch your legs, refresh your favorite beverage, and come on and join us on the flip side of the break right here, Late Night with Lisa and Friends, where the discussion continues. And hopefully Jordan will still be with us when we come back on the other side of the break. <laughs> Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God. Thank you for hanging with us this far on Late Night with Lisa and Friends. Before we went to break, we had just finished up with Jordan uh, telling us and, and enlightening us based upon Martin Luther and his 95 thesis, uh, theses, where we, most of us, I don't think really even knew, know most of what was actually in them because hardly anybody ever talks about it. We just hear that he was this champion of, you know, the Protestant Reformation. And nobody ever explains just how heretical 
concerning the doctrine of Christ, those theses actually were. So I'm glad that he uh, shared those with us for us to see and examine in light of Scripture just how much error there was associated with it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had done a video. I had told Jordan about this. I did a video uh, that was only about three minutes or so about the real Reformation Day. <laughs> and I said, will the real Reformation Day please stand up? And my channel, this was a little over two years ago now. At the time, it was briefly monetized for just a little little while. YouTube was bugging me about it. They, You know how they they keep changing stuff. So at this time... They were bugging people to actually monetize. And I went on and did it for about two or three years. It was monetized. And then when I put that video up about two years ago, <laughs> uh, as soon as I did, within two days, my channel got demonetized because of that video. And my argument was, and I didn't even talk. I didn't even speak. It was pictures that I had put up making the case that the real Reformation Day was actually Pentecost. <laughs> OK, when when the Holy Spirit showed up and then made himself powerful in the church, which was 50 days on the first day of the week, which is Sunday, 50 days after the resurrection of Christ. And that he is the true reformer of the church. And that's when my <laughs> channel got demonetized. No big deal. I didn't make anything more than two hundred fifty dollars in in the whole three years that it had been monetized which I just used for my website at the time anyway. And then uh, when that happened, it was kind of funny because I said I had $50. I didn't even know. I mean, I knew, but I didn't know what they were doing as far as demonetizing people because I didn't understand why people were like, were so ticked off about it. I was like, well, you can still like get tips or donations if you want. But I didn't hadn't processed that when they demonetize you, they take your money. <laughs> See, that's what demonetized me. So when I had like 50 bucks in there and it took like a year and a half to even get that because I don't have a lot of subscribers and, you know, they they keep my stuff in the dark like a mushroom. <laughs> so uh, I'm kind of like shadow banned in a lot of ways. And I wasn't so much worried about it. And then when I went to look into the Google account thing, they took the $50. I said, no wonder everybody's ticked off because of some of these channels that had thousands and thousands of dollars in there and they got demonetized. They took their money, you know, that thing. But anyway, so I think thank they you also, for that. Uh, I think you're also less likely to show up on search results when they demonetize mm -hmm. you. Oh, that's a good point, too. Well, they definitely did that to me. <laughs> so oh, whatever. It is what it is. I still stand up for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the true reformer of the church. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> so, because that's what the Bible says. And every day, that's our experience. It ain't a preacher knocking on your door or somebody in, in a cassock knocking on your door telling you about reformation. It's the Holy Spirit reminding you to do the things that are right or stop doing the things that are wrong. So, anyway. Uh... We're going to go to a clip now that Sister Angel would like Ben to play concerning this whole moment of silence thing that's going on in Florida that she's trying to uh, show us are connected to the promulgation or propagation of the Noahide laws. So, Ben, if you would go ahead and play that clip for us now. Will do. A person comes into the world like a fresh sheet of paper. So many factors determine who he will become and how he will behave. But foremost amongst them is one, education. And a proper education revolves around one single concept. First of a three-part series on a moment of silence in public schools. Nachinuchidose der Gisot, a welchen Sehalzer der ganzen 
Binyan, von der ganzen Hevre, von der ganzen Kihilis, von der ganzen Kvutis Anoshim, Venoshim, Vitat, also sein Losheves Yitzor, nicht Chas Vicholim, ich es Reyeu, ich bemolle mir Rosh al Malchus, wo das hängt ab, an der China Hebsachom mit Chilosi, Chanechle Nare, der noch Gott klein, auf einem gesunden Gesund und dann noch ein ganz Kiaskin bei Josser Mimeno. Was was ist der gesunde Gesund wie der Mond Frie? Punkt das ist wie der Gesund von dem ganzen Bashar. In das Brech ist Bore Lekim. Es ist schon mal in das Ohr, es ist der gesunde und der Emeser und der einzige gesunde Gesund von der Kinder, von der Kinder, als er soll wissen sein, als Dresch ist Bore der Kinder, es hat schon mal ein bisschen Ordnung, als Jesch Balabais Libiro so, und es nicht nur ein Balabais auf eine fertige Dere, nur das Bore der Kinder, das ist der, was hat aufgebaut die Dere, hat aufgebaut die Welt, und er ist viel Ton mit der Welt, und er ist gierig, da ist Goche Protis, a Falle Protis von der Welt und will, als in der Welt soll sein in der Nähe, wie der Mond früher, a da soll sein der Schlitte, da soll gewaltigen Zedek, wie Jesche, wie Chesse, du Mischwort, Lichtigkeit und Reinkeit und Heiligkeit. A soll sein nicht, als der Rebischter hat dort sein Dieren. Wo da sie kommen, wie bald der Mensch über Schaffen geworden, Tage durch Nebischen. Aber der Nebischen hat gewollt, mit dem Schaffen, wie er holte, wo er bis Schneizer rechte, mit der Jezer Teif, und nicht mit der Jezer, was er erhebt von Jezer Teif. Was hat der Dämmel kommt, sich treffen am Mal, am Matze, wo mein Mann, wo der Jezer, was er erhebt von Jezer Teif, soll Matzliak sein, in seinem Milchoma mit dem Jezer Teh. Und soll Wellen Pehl sein auf den Menschen, er soll sich finden, wie er wird gestubt von dem Jezer, was er erhebt von Jezer Teh. Der einzige Bewohner ist, an der Jezer erhebt von Jezer Teh, soll nicht Matzliak sein, nicht, aber ich habe es mir gesagt, als sie da an neuen Rehe und an neuen Schemas, als sie da der, was hat beschaffen unter dem Menschen und hat beschaffen dem Jezer Tee und dem Jezer Hepecha Tee und hat beschaffen die Teile und hat dem Ungesorgt, dem Menschen, er soll beistehen, der Associ zu Pitui mit den Teile ist und vielen sagt, wie der Rebischter will. Und wie viel er soll nicht halten von sich und von seiner Gerechtigkeit und von seiner Hochma, es eben hat ihm noch nicht zu kalächet, nicht mit Kalkul gewähnt, Rachman el Islam, der Rachachinach, was tegnet, weiß er, dass er am Maimin ben Maimin, als er da an Nebestell, was wird angerufen, beschämt, Ebestell, beloschen, bnei Jodo. Der Fall, was jeder weiß, dass er, er ist Ebischter von jeder Menschen und von allen Menschen und er hat an einer Reihe, der ist ein Schemas und in Jesus er ist bei Mysterium, ist er ein Tochen, als er soll trachten, als war nicht ein Lehrer. Was er das beworben dem Kind, wenn er noch ein Narr, er soll nach Atriebe wachsen in der Nähe. Als er weiß, als Schelcho, Schelcho, als das, was gehört zu einem zweiten Kind, ist nicht nur die Signe, nur rechtet auf viele die Sachen mit, wo er weiß, als er nicht in Hawaii in der Kirche, was hält sie sich um die Erde mit Zweien, von aller Leben mit Zorim und Gwuli, und von aller Leben, wie sie gewinnt, Dämmel. Der Einreden ist nun der Hochmas mit zwei, was hat gebracht zu aller Leid, 
המעשים מקולקולים, עוד הרי בשטר היצי שיחו מארץ מצרים ובדרמונט כמה פעמים, הדף קין דר מדינה, ודה ויסנשפט דור גבר מדגרסטן טוויקלון, כאילו ללכת חוכמס המוסר, דאשקופס החיים, אשקופס אלו. וספוניר וקס טייס טיירס המוסר, אידרטי גוון אין טוויקולט, אין דה גרסטן אייפן, פון שטנט פונקט, פון מדו, אין דה סוד אובר גיברכט, צעזה מן הנהוגה, פון היפך כל מצו וממת פון אנושי, וסקיינר ווסך נגיקון גלין, המנשן בכלל קונה זה חזה פילן, הלך אז כמה וכמה, מנשים בסום סטוטון מת מוסר ובוס פרדיקן גזי אום גטון גפרדיק מוסר לכל העולם כולי. דה סיבה אבדרופי גוון סי גוון דה חוכמה און דה יסייד החוכמה. ובוס יסייד היסיידס ועמוד החוכמה סיס אז יש מעיני ועשר המציס אמיתיס וממפונזי מציס הנמצאו כל הנמצאים. ודרצוי כעת דעצי כעצי כעומר, אף אם כן דבר סעוף זו לרצגן ואין, ודו זו זין בהם דאס חולה, בכל יים ויים, עשידו דר אייבשטר, ועשר הכר און אייבשטר, פון ידר נון ידרי, ונר זין פר זן לכר אייבשטר. ונר כזבאר די דר עין ריה, ואיזה שימה סבול דר קינט פילצה. All right, guys, um, all right, that was just the, the, the first little kind of introductory video I wanted to, uh, to demonstrate that um, they are uh, opening sessions of Congress with Noahide invocations, um, just, to, just so that um, people see, like, uh, the next things we're about to play. that it's not like just some like fringe thing that like a bunch of like uh, real uh, like fanatical Jewish people are talking off talking about in a corner somewhere no like uh, that invocation tells you exactly like the authority they they wield and 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 you know openly you know they, they feel entitled to wield even in uh, the halls of power and um, like I have mentioned before if you just look up US law, 102-14 you'll see that they have already managed to get this on our, our in our you know uh, uh, legal codes so it's not uh, it's not just some crackpot thing that's like not really happening or, or totally irrelevant and so when you see that um, now Florida is trying to pass this uh, uh, mandatory uh, moment of silence uh, Uh, for you know for all public and for I think even private schools I'm not sure but I know at least public schools um, and the and the next clips will will kind of flesh that out a little bit more the uh, I believe that the person who will be talking in the next clips is um, um, Rebe Manaheim Schneerson he was the um, the, the messiah figure for Habad Lubavitch which is the uh, basically the The powerhouse behind this Noahide agenda and by the way they like owned and operated Donald Trump he married his daughter off to them Jared Kushner is uh, a proud member of Vadovich and they would go to the Rebbe's grave the man that you're about here talking uh, Trump's daughter and uh, you know a son-in-law would actually go to his grave to pay a uh, tribute and um, you know she converted to Not only to Judaism but uh, to Kabat Habad Judaism um, and so uh, I, I'm just trying to tie together like the idea I don't I don't believe it's possible that Florida which by the way uh, I'm from Florida originally and it's a, a very Jewish state um, there's a lot of Jewish people that live in Florida they have quite a bit of influence and um, they're trying to pass the law there and it's kind of random and out of nowhere right um, and I want I'm just trying to tie the two things together because I don't I don't think it's just a coincidence uh, the, the, the the only people that have been contending for the idea that for some random reason a moment of silence is is so desperately necessary um, in our uh, public education system for our children um, are these these uh, Noah Hyde Talmudic Jews 
she okay, was, Angel, very, can I yes. can I interject something? Sure. Because one of the people yes. in the chat is saying that they didn't see anything wrong with what was said in that There's, clip that oh, was you played. Won't, you won't see mm -hmm. anything wrong with any of it until you understand that the Noahide laws, uh, their, their punishment for saying Jesus is God is decapitation. So, so understand who you, when you hear them talking about God and all of that, they're talking about Hashem. They're not talking about our God. And the first law of the seven laws is, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, against idolatry. But when you read the Talmud and you read the writings of all the men who, ha uh, you know, they're, 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 uh, they're rabbis who, um, I think, uh, Maimonides was the, the biggest one, the most influential. How they um, explain idolatry uh, it makes Christianity, true Christianity, that uh, upholds Jesus as the Son of God and God in the flesh, um, as well as the Trinity. Uh, they, they consider that uh, polytheism and idolatry. And the penalty for breaking any one of these seven laws which it will be basically like the only laws you have to follow. But the catch is if you break any of them as a Gentile, because this will be a, a two-tiered system. It will be um, uh, <laughs> uh, the Gentiles will be a second class uh, uh, citizen, citizenry, uh, you know, worldwide citizenry. This is, this is the ecumenical movement um, that we, we hear so much about, but we envision some other thing. It's not going to be, I don't know why people read the Revelation and all they see is like, I don't know, some leftist dystopia. That's not what I see described, uh, at least not initially. I don't, I don't see how a theocracy can come to power and rule the world in an atheistic system that uh, it can't even agree that gender is real or objective reality exists. That's not this, what we're seeing right now is the setup. But like, which, how would you get a world mm -hmm. like ours to ever want to embrace uh, basically what it, what it equates to like Jewish Sharia law? You know, well, you would drive them off the edge with uh, the exact opposite. Absolute madness, just uh, lawlessness, unrighteousness, um, insanity. Um, and, you know, we see corporations pushing this, although we know that every time they do it, they lose billions of dollars because most people don't like it and even people on the left most of them i mean it's it's, it's you know they're not that far left um uh you know they don't want uh, uh men to be able to say that that they're women so they get placed in a female prison you know what i mean but that's the, but we only see these like really powerful entities really pushing these ideas um and yet it seems t completely contrary to their bottom line and it, it's not that they don't have market research, <laughs> a whole market research department that, you know, could tell them well ahead of time what would happen if they made a, you know, like, say, a Gillette commercial um, uh, condemning white men as, you know, the, the origin of every evil in the world, basically, uh, when when the number one uh, buyers of their product are white men by the by virtue of the fact that that's the majority uh, male population in this country, <laughs> you know, demonize those people uh, and think it's going to sell razors. And it's not that we think Gillette is just like truly high minded. They truly believe in these values. It's all reverse psychology, guys. Uh, and and I don't know. I there's no other way to make sense of it because none of it is, none of this is compelling. They they make no effort to truly persuade you into this insane uh, belief system. They, they basically just <laughs> tell you you better or else. And that's not how you win anyone over. Um, and mm -hmm. that's not how, how the social engineers have got us to the point that, they're at, that we're at now. They didn't do it by not being persuasive and just being authoritative. No, they, they were very subtle and cunning in how they manipulated us to get to the point we're at now. Suddenly they throw all that out the window and bludgeon you over the head with things that uh, like the, the, you know, all the talking points being pushed by the, the mainstream media, it's turning like uh, liberals away from the left in droves because it's just outright crazy. It's not like you, you couldn't even um, mistake it for uh, well-intentioned or logical or, or the right way to go about, um, you know, changing society. It's all terrible. Oh, you know, now they, how many anti-vaxxers have they created? in the past, uh, in the past year with, um, you know, with what we've seen 
Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I know that I could get the stream taken down if I say too much on this subject, but basically, you know, everything they're doing is causing people to turn away from them. And I don't think that's an accident because I remember how subtle and cunning they, the, 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 the propaganda was when I was growing up that caused me to think abortion was fine and that, um, uh, that there was no God and all of that, and that it was all my own idea. If they had been as ham-handed as they are, ham-fisted as they are now, I would never have come to those conclusions. No, they were subtle. They they were they were clever. And this is not clever. This is this is exactly what you do when you want people to do the opposite, <laughs> to do the opposite of what you're you're, you're appearing you want them to do. They're they're, they're stoking uh, outrage. And um, anyway, uh, I, that's what I'm. What I, but I I do understand when you actually look at what these uh what these rabbis are saying it doesn't seem wrong at all in fact a lot of you might be like yes yes exactly that's what we need that's what society needs finally some common sense yeah that's exactly how it's supposed to sound to you when they present it to you uh after you know the whole world has collapsed under this you know insane regime we're seeing that it's just totally counterintuitive with uh with all of this like woke insanity that uh it's, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so unpopular and it's, a, and, and the only reason you might think it's more popular than it is, is because they gaslight us with stuff on social media and they make us think that like, well, there's all these people out there that must really think this way, but you know, and then they keep us apart because, you know, we like, especially online, <laughs> it's very difficult to travel in the same circles uh, as like radical leftist, you know, people to where you're actually interacting with them um, and arguing or debating the, the, you know, except I guess on Twitter a little bit, but I've noticed on Twitter, those people are, are the most impossible to reason with that. I, I don't even sure how most of those profiles are real people. I almost wonder if it's just bots because it's like always the same, um, this is the same, I don't know how you say, like internet voice <laughs> that I'm arguing with over and over again. And there's, they're impenetrable. Uh, there's no way to, to reach them with logic. And uh, I don't encounter those people very often in real life, not to that extreme. But my point is, is that, yes, I'm not here saying there's anything on the surface wrong with any of this, you know, even a moment of silence. But I'm saying that understand the people that are pushing it want to uh, decapitate uh, true Christian believers who won't compromise on the issue that Jesus is, uh, is God in the flesh, fully God, fully man. That is their big no, no. Uh, they, they, you know, Islam is totally kosher under the Noahide laws. Uh, and I, I believe that that's what will bring about the peace in the Middle East. I believe they're going to join forces at least temporarily for a time because uh, the rabbis consider Islam to be a model by which Christians should uh, alter so, or compromise on some aspects of their beliefs. Like they're totally okay with you calling Jesus Messiah, as long as that doesn't mean you think he's God. You understand? Hashem is God. Hashem is Satan. Um, and they are waiting on a Moshiach, who sounds an awful lot like who we are told to expect as the Antichrist. So remember, it, we're, <laughs> what matters is not these political values that we believe we hold. What matters is the God that we serve and the truth of the gospel. And you cannot yoke with people because you think you have some, you know, inconsequential things in common with them that are basic common sense things, by the way. You know, um, I'm not going to yoke with somebody who thinks I need to be beheaded for believing Jesus is God because he, he agrees that, you know, the left has gone too far and, you know, we've got to stop pushing critical race there. I mean, these things are obvious. It's, it's like that, you know, that don't ever compromise, you know, your loyalty to the gospel and to um, and who Jesus is. Uh, because you have been so, driven so crazy by uh, the gaslighting and the manipulation that the media is throwing at us all right now. It's it's it, you know, it's on purpose. <laughs> They're trying to get to that point where you'll yoke with anybody to, 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 to take these people down. That are, that are making life increasingly unbearable and now in a very real way since all of this COVID nonsense has happened. I mean, a lot of that really drove it home to a lot of us, and yet we still haven't snapped. But I do believe that the intention is to make uh, the majority of normal people snap and say enough. And there will be a strong man who promises to restore order and put an end to the nonsense. Um, and the only catch will be 
You know, you, you could even get your conservative utopia. You might even, you know, all the things that you could think you'd want for America. Just the only catch is, you know, compromise on this one little thing where Jesus isn't really God in the flesh. He's not God. You know, you, you can worship him and say he's your share, but he's not God. You know, diminish him just that much and you'll get the world that, uh, you know, that you think your parents grew up in or something back. You'll, you'll get your country back. You'll get some sanity uh, back, you know, in this world, in this society. Um, and, you know, the... The people have been terrorizing us with with nonsense <laughs> uh, for for years now, and just have been so um, unapologetic in their open contempt for just normal people who have families and who think I don't know boys and girls exist and that you know gender actually is real and things like this where they they basically make no attempt to hide it. They, they think you basically deserve to die for believing some of these normal things. I still don't know a person like that in real life, but the media makes it seem like that's what people believe these days. And that's how people feel. And I think that that's a trick really. I think that um, it's a small minority and I do believe they will be without protection. The, 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 that small minority of true believers, these true radical leftists, they will be sacrificial goats, you know, for, for, you know, when, when everybody snaps and comes together to, to put a stop to all of this, uh, I think that that will be like, because uh, they're kind of just that they think they have more power than they do because the media is their loudspeaker right now, right? And if the media suddenly turned on them and just stopped serving as a loudspeaker, they'd look around and realize there's only like 10 guys there. <laughs> they thought they had like the power of all the world's institutions who just suddenly became like insane leftists you know, and I, I mean, obviously, we, there's been a liberal agenda for a long time, but just this absolute madness and sanity where, like, they're trying to make, like, in female sports, like women's sports, basically, by letting biological males play on all the teams. You know, that's that, that's not even a liberal uh, uh, worldview. That's just crazy. That's authoritarian. Um, it's almost like authoritarianism mixed with like absolute schizophrenia and that's that's their political system they're proposing for us so i don't think that's intended to actually win anybody over I, you know <laughs> that's just that that's not an appealing system and a, a lot of people that would kind of defend it are only doing so because of um you know some tribal partisanship at the moment where they don't want to admit conservatives are right about things but this is this is not the battle that matters at all Satan can use like the 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 the, uh, the Jews in Israel who cried for uh, Jesus' blood to be upon them and their children. They were very conservative. Keep that in mind. Conservative is not uh, synonymous with Christian or your people. You know that that's that's there's there's two ways Satan uses to deceive people: the way that uh, seems wrong and the way that seems right to man. Right. So there's those who like to revel in debauchery openly, the libertines. Um, you could actually call them the leftists. <laughs> I, I think more often than not, he uses self-righteousness to deceive mankind. We okay, see that Angel. with the false gospel. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> I just wanted to give yeah. some information to people. So I put some. I put this all in the chat so you guys can Great. see it for yourself. I put a link to a website that is exposing the Noahide laws and warning Christians about it. Uh, the Noahide laws were recognized and officially passed in the U.S. law on the 20th of March, 1991, when Congress passed 105 St. 18.44 Public Law 102-14. This law designates the 26th of March the official day that Christians can be beheaded in the United States <laughs> for breaking the Noahide laws. Public law 102-14, March 20th, 1991, 105 STAT.45 states to designate March 26, 1991 as Education Day, USA, Education Day. whereas Congress recognizes the historical tradition of ethical values and principles which are the basis of civilized society and upon which our great nation was founded, whereas these ethical values and principles have been the bedrock of society from the dawn of civilization when they were known 
as the seven Noahide laws, March 26, 1991, Education Day, USA, the president is requested to issue a proclamation calling upon the people of the United States to observe such day with appropriate ceremonies and activities. Oh, my, my. My eyes just rolled all the way in the back of my head. Let me finish one more sentence. It might also interest you to know that in 1996, Congress passed the bill 1274, which included HB 1274, the death penalty guillotine provisions. Yes. And we saw those, uh, that we, they, that a few years ago, there was that all that thing like, oh, the U.S. government is stacking up on guillotines, right? And, mm-hmm. and of course, people like Alex Jones, these shills are like, oh, they're going to kill the conservatives. They're going to kill the patriots. You know, guess what? Who, guess what else is, uh, is, is punishable by beheading under the Noahide laws? Homosexuality. Hmm. They're setting up these people, and, 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 and we will look like the party poopers who are ruining it for everybody by saying we're not going to compromise on Jesus, guys. Not going to compromise mm-hmm. on that he is God. I don't care mm-hmm. how wonderful, like, a conservative utopia you offer me, how, you know, like, homesteading and chickens for everybody. <laughs> I don't right. care. I'm not going to – that's not worth it to me, but there will be so many people – Ready. That even that, that are like, yes, anything. No, yes. you don't understand. We got to yes. get these libs. We got to own these libs. Like, it's no, ridiculous. No, no. Whole, okay, look. <laughs> look what they're doing. The whole transgender they're agenda. Us crazy for that whole, reason. All of this stuff, right? That the, the, the sexualization, all of this stuff that they're promulgating in the media. And Out then, in the open. Right. Unabashedly. Yes. So then the public will get sick of it. Get angry, and when they roll out, let's get rid of the homosexuals. And the Christians, they want to trick you into saying that's right, that's righteous. No, it's not. Yeah, they deserve it. They they have been, you know, because by they they this, want us this to believe is what they're going to do. Homosexuals want and to like once they get rid of them. On us. Once mm-hmm. they get rid of them, guess who they're coming for next. Yeah, uh, wouldn't that be ironic to be up on the, the, you know, up on the, well, I guess I don't know what you call, <laughs> there's not really gallows, but you're standing in line to be beheaded alongside gays, gays and Christians who won't compromise on Jesus, you know, and, and that's one of those things the devil would really like to do. Now, now the, the gays are being beheaded for the, for, for homosexuality or sexual immorality is the law, but uh, with the lawsuit, but um, so that, that would uh, apply to a lot of different things too. But well, you remember that old expression? That they used during uh, Nazi the Nazi times and everything, and it said there's a, there's a, a writing where somebody had said I don't, I don't know maybe Ben if you could pull it up when they came for yep. the Jew I didn't complain because I wasn't a Jew, and then when they came for this person, uh, you know I didn't complain because I wasn't a member of that group, and then and they keep going until they finally get to your group, and then there was nobody left to to stand up. So this is the same tactic that they're using here where people will say, yes, get rid of the homosexuals, get rid of these people. And Christians will think it's righteous. Well, to do defend that? them because like they have a certain contingent of, you know, the, the activist type homosexual is, is, is openly hostile to Christians right. and, right. and basically, you know, makes clear that if it were up to them, they would just eradicate Christians because we're just right. so hateful. We don't deserve but to live. So don't make they, it right. they draw those people out into the open. They say, be proud, gay pride, wear it, be, pr-, you know, march down the street in Jerusalem, ha- making out with you dudes in the, in public, just blaspheming like this holy city. Do it. Yes. No, we all love it. We'll all protect you. There's still a tiny minority of the population, right. but they've been fattened for sacrifice and drawn yep. out into the open. They're not concealing their identities. They're not secretive. And and they're going to be betrayed just like these like little like the true believer, useful idiots like Antifa and all of that. They're 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 being fattened for sacrifice. And people are so 
uh, deceived by the the media. <laughs> and I, I, I watch the media and I, for years now, I've known, all right, they want me to believe the exact opposite of whatever I'm going to see on CNN. They want me to disagree with it and believe the exact opposite. And they want me to be uh, enraged by how the audacity of the things they say. But like, I saw those people transform. The people that are on CNN that have been on CNN my, my whole life, they're, they're, they're actors. They don't believe anything they're saying <laughs> at all. And it's like, there would be no reason for people to support the kind of stuff that they say. It's just not practical or, or realistic. It's, uh, it, it's, it's counter to like fundamental human drives, like to have families and stuff, um, to not want, you know, to be able to be like, you know, <laughs> sexually assaulted by people pretending to be transgender who suddenly get to go in the women's locker room. Like these are just, you know, no amount of liberalism will, will change certain fundamental human instincts. This is not designed to win people over. It's designed to do the exact opposite. And I think a lot of people, when they hear this, they get mad because they're in their flesh about mm-hmm. how crazy the left is. It's like, mm-hmm. really, guys? Like, you don't think it's, like, obviously crazy on purpose? Like, yeah. you think you figured that out? Like, this is nuts. Gender exists. <laughs> what do you mean? You can't tell which if a baby's a girl or a boy. Like, nobody really believes that, guys. It's all an act. It's all... Just, I mean, there are some really stupid, gullible people who are yeah. so conformist that they will begin believing it because the media pretends to. But I'm saying nobody who matters really actually believes this. No powerful people believe this. Um, uh, they don't actually believe these crazy things. They're punking you. They're they're trying to antagonize you. Mm-hmm. Um, and. And, and the only way that makes sense, because I couldn't figure it out for a long time, I knew that's what they were doing. I knew they're, they, they don't want us to actually believe this stuff. They don't actually want to convince us of this stuff. They want us to, to like, tear our hair out that it's so obviously crazy, all of the stuff that the, that the zeitgeist uh, says, you know, is reality mm-hmm. right now. They're being more and more um, openly unreasonable, unfair, and evil, and hypocritical. Uh, and, and people might think, yeah, because they have power. Well, no, they don't have power unless, every, unless most people actually support them. So they yes. have to actually try to maintain that support, and they're not trying to. Well, the <laughs> problem, reaction, solution, if we can exactly. cause people to demand that certain groups be rounded up, mm-hmm. what do you think them FEMA camps are for? They're for the people they oh, want to get rid patriots. of. It's for the patriots. No, not just. Like, I know. No, I, I don't think it's for the patriots at all. Because the patriots, quote unquote, will choose the U.S. over Jesus. I'm a Christian person. I'm a patriot first. I don't, you know, my, my people are, are true believers, right? I'm not saying that I'm not patriotic about America. I am. Right. But those who put that part of their identity before the cause of Christ, they're going to love these Noahide laws. Oh, sure. Right? They're going to love and, and they they will. I have had it happen already where people um, who are supposedly true believers will cuss me out because I don't support Trump because I just point out. Right. And it's not, yeah. I'm so concerned. I, I don't think women should be allowed to vote. All right. I have no like, oh, she's a secret lib. She no, don't I speak for me. I, I want to take the vote away from women. They've lost the they've lost the privilege. They they have done don't everything wrong and they don't deserve Some it. Women uh, I'm fine with not being able to vote. Just if, if most of these uh, dumb <laughs> idiots can't vote anymore, I'm fine with that. And I'll I'll give up my vote. I'm very conservative. I'm like a uh, I'm like a right wing crazy person, <laughs> but for having that belief. You know, most people won't go that far, right? Uh, that women shouldn't be able to vote, right? I'm, so I'm not, like, secretly liberal. Not at all. I'm more conservative than most people who have yelled at me for not liking, like, not trusting Trump, right? Like, they're not very conservative. Uh, I'm against all immigration, right? You know, a lot of these people are like, no, it's okay if they come here legally, whatever. But th- that's not the point. None of that matters. Like, all this is going to burn up. None of that matters at all. <laughs> so I was just trying to figure out why are they... Why are they trolling us so bad? <laughs> Why are they trolling everybody so badly? And like, oh, oopsie, YouTube for like five years straight did nothing but but push conspiracy theory and take you down this algorithm where you, you know, where you went from like, I don't know, uh, questioning whether the government let 9-11 happen all the way to flat earth. 
And then they fix their algorithm. That was just an accident. They just accidentally let you find out about all that stuff. I'm mm-hmm. not saying it's not true. I think that I, I, I firmly believe in like most of the conspiracy theories, that they're totally true. That's not the point, though. I know that it's not just like, oopsie, our bad. We got to fix that now to where you can't search anything else. No, they meant to, to wake everybody up when they did. Right. Because it okay. helped to set up this scenario yes. where people are just like, I know that I know that uh, 7-Eleven was a part time job. And now <laughs> you're I'm not going to trust you. You're trying to force me to take a, a you know, a, a you know what a in my arm. Ease. Yeah. Yeah, they want to, they want, yeah. And then, by the way, <laughs> like they flood the media all the time with, like, oh, like a million people died today because of the Moderna, you know, yeah. they, you know what. And it's like right. they, they don't have to tell us that. They used to not tell us things like that. No. Nope. Um, they, 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 you know, so it's just like Hegelian dialectic, which I thought was like a commonly understood concept right now. But a lot I don't of people, think so. they got real, they got on the Trump train and like, they went back to sleep. Went back to sleep. Totally. Because they don't That's understand. Where the lies now. They don't understand that both parties are the same side of the Luciferian coin. Oops, did I say that out loud? Okay. Angel. And neither are your side because your side is Jesus. <laughs> right. And the devil doesn't care if you doesn't care. are an ultra super conservative right winger and you say Jesus wasn't God. I spit on Jesus. He's totally, he doesn't care what your political ideology well, is. You, you think Satan's a leftist? Like I like, have a meme for that, Angel. <laughs> the devil doesn't care what you believe in as long as it's not the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, now, exactly. Let's go any to other your, truth to deceive your you. Net, let's go to your next clip because we could talk, you know, once you get going, we could talk all night. So let's go yeah. to your next clip. Would you tell us what your next clip is about? Which one is the uh, um, number which one two? Is two. All right, yeah. Number two. Um, not actually sure. I well, I know it has oh. something to do with basically. Basically, I'm trying to show you that like this whole idea of of uh, the moment of silence being so like urgently important for society. This you know begins and ends in Habad Lubavitch. You know, nobody else was like thinking about this or proposing this. Uh, and so I want you to see that even though I don't believe that the Florida law has anything overtly, like they don't overtly state that it's a, in honor right. of Habad Lubavitch, it's nobody else. There's a very random weird thing that out of nowhere they're, they're pushing and like the whole Senate just yeah. happened. There's no and problem. And listen, um, that gives me an opportunity to interject here that I have never been a fan of so-called silent prayer. I get so agitated when people yeah. do that. Let me tell you why. And I was telling Jordan why I take this position. Oh. Because you cannot say amen to something you don't know the person prayed. How am I going to be in agreement with your prayer? Amen being so be it. So how am I going to say so be it if I don't know what you prayed? I have never liked that concept. And now they're pushing something that even Christians have adopted for many decades now. This whole concept of silent contemplative prayer. Right. Yeah, that stuff too. Yeah. Okay. The other thing, uh, the other thing I was gonna say too is that a lot of these, a lot of these conspiracies, how they, they, they want you to discover them. I think part of it too is get, get the people who are easily deceived that, and trusting in their judgment. Like, oh, see, I've got all these, I figured all this stuff out, all, uh, all these conspiracies out. I've, I've, I've been on the side of the truth for so long, and so when the, when the great deception happens, they think they've got that figured out yeah, too. When they exactly. really are just walking right down, right down the, uh, you know the. I don't, the yeah, I don't the think the target of the great deception is like the sheepish conformist. I think, right. I think the real prize is to go after the people that are, are, are at least somewhat critical. The extremists. At all. Yeah, well, yeah, or just it, like the mindless conformist who would just like literally walk off a cliff if, the, if they thought the consensus was we should all walk off a cliff. The devil <laughs> right. never had to work hard to win them mind. over. He could, yeah, he doesn't have to put any effort into that. All he has to do is is trick them into thinking most people think this and they'll go along with it. But who he's really got to work on are people who are more prone to, who are, I guess you could say, who are less uh, susceptible to hypnotism. Yeah. Right. Well, hypnotism, the ones the hypnotism doesn't work on, the strong delusion yeah. is not working on. Well, r- well, yeah, basically, like. Like he, he, the ones who will just conform to whatever they think the masses are doing, it doesn't matter what. He doesn't have to be clever at all. They just, he just has to appeal to consensus and they'll do it. But uh, there's a lot of other people who, even though they're totally deceived and wrong and Christ rejecting and all that, 
they fancy themselves smart and they fancy themselves to be above the masses. So they're not going to just go along with consensus. And those people, he has to figure out an angle uh, to convince them uh, to, to, you know, that will actually appeal to them. And he has to do it by making them think it's their own idea. Right. Mm. All of this. Well, that's the best way. You know, I keep reminding people when the that Bible is talks the about alien dialectic. Yeah. The man of sin. It doesn't say he forces. It says he causes. And if you look up the word cause, oh, my goodness, it is such a deep word connected to the various attributes of how something um, contributes to the reason people do things. Uh, it's, right. it's deep. It's not. It's not shallow at all. And it's not force. It's no. Uh, it's like it's 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 manipulate. It's it's yes. Uh, it's it's convince, persuade. It's not. It's not just force, but you know, by like a strong arm. I don't think that. I mean, I don't think that's what Satan's into anyway. I think he likes to think he, he got their worship. I think like, he thinks that's what. Bothered, let me just you know, read he a can few kind to of point in God's quick. face. Then they we'll chose me, clip. Lord. Because words have meaning and they want us to forget that. So cause something or someone that produces an effect, result or condition, something or someone that makes something happen or exist, a reason for doing or feeling something, something such as an organization, belief, idea or goal that a group or of people or people support or fight for. And, you know, it's a motive. So, I mean, this goes on for like uh, it, uh, uh, at least 40 more sentences to explain cause. It's not just do this or else. It, it It's more than that. It's to actually be stirred, like given a reason to, that you go along you a with. a true believer. Yes. Yes. Well, because that's what I, th- I I think Satan wants to say. They chose me, fair and square. They chose me. Absolutely. It's not that he thinks it's going to win. I mean, he I think he knows where he's going to end up. Maybe, maybe, maybe he thinks there's some slight chance that maybe he can convince God that because all these people chose him, that he they sh- he they should you know that God should let him have the earth or whatever and lost and he you know he just take his people. I don't know. I I'm just saying there's a. I don't think there's anything in the Bible that says that. I'm just saying. Well, if Satan either knows he's totally screwed and is just trying to hurt God as that. Oh, he knows he's totally screwed on his way down, or he's yeah. or he's lying to himself and thinks there's some well, chance. Either way, he wants people to choose him. <laughs> it doesn't do it for him if he forces them into it. He wants to, okay. It doesn't. It, his ego needs it that they chose him. That they seriously, chose to worship him. Seriously, the last thing I want to say, so you can go to your clip. Uh, I like Billy Billy Crone's definition on this, where he says. The difference between the devil and an ordinary man, he gives a scenario. The ordinary man walks in. He could be an evil man. He's doing wickedness. Walks into a liquor store to rob it. No, a bank. A bank to rob it. And then the bank teller triggers the alarm and uh, the police come and they're outside and they go, oh, you might as well come out with your hands up. You're surrounded. So the the human being who, who's evil and was doing wicked uh, says, oh, crap, I'm busted. Put my gun down, come out with my hands up. He said, now the devil goes into the same bank to rob the bank. <laughs> and the teller <laughs> triggers the alarm. The police come. You might as well come out with your, your hands up. You're surrounded. The devil says, oh, I'm, I'm going out like that? Well, I'm going to shoot every person in here. And then I'm coming out in a blaze of glory to try to kill everybody else I can take with me before I go yeah. down. He said, that's the devil. The, <laughs> the devil's not coming exactly. out with his hands up. He wants to take everybody with him. Before he goes down, he knows there's no redemption for him. The fallen ones Imagine know. Imagine knowing that all these exactly. Years yeah, he's he alive, but he's not well because he knows judgment yeah. is coming for him. So he wants to take everybody with him that he can. And he has nothing but time to figure out the way to do it that would most satisfy his ego, and at least he imagines most hurt God to see it. Right. Well, and the value to force people is the into something being. against their will is yes. not going to hurt. You know, you know, that's that's not I, that's why I think a lot of this consent stuff where we notice that they have to manufacture consent. Obviously, yes, it's one because God uh, decrees that. But I think also is that that makes Satan, that that strokes Satan's ego, too, that mm-hmm. they people consented um, 
to going along with his plan because he's all about trying to prove I'm the better, I'm the real God, I'm the better God. You know, I should have been God. It's like so silly, but that's it's it's kind of uh, this petulant uh, teenage mentality forever for eternity <laughs> with, with Satan, where he's trying to stick it to his dad. You know, like prove that he's the bigger man or something. I I don't know the psychodrama playing out, and it just does more for him if he if the people actually willingly choose him. Uh, in some form or fashion. Now, of course, he plays fast and loose with the idea of consent and what real consent and informed consent is. But um, I have a feeling that he, that he, you know, that he has to abide certain lines and that what, you know, that he kind of has to stop where God, too, would agree. Yes, they did consent, whether or not they were fully aware of what they were doing. But, you know, it was still that they chose this because, you know, God's not going to. um I don't think he's going to let the devil take you down against your own will. You see what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, go ahead and play that clip. And um, I'm going to try to watch it on YouTube so that I know which clip it was. Cause it's kind of weird talking blind, but cause it doesn't play back here for us. Uh, we're, we're in the dark while it's, while it's going for you guys. So. All right, here we go. America land of pioneers and endless opportunities. Clearly, the unlimited American dream must be balanced by higher standards and morals. But here, in this second of a three-part series on a moment of silence in public schools, the Rebbe asks, if a parent wants their child to pray, must it be done in school? a hundred thousand Jewish children, millions of Jewish children, but how many are going in public school? We have the mass of people in the Zoo, a certain home can not have a few divas home can have not can get through, and they will be able to get them to in public school. Und wir gehen mit einem guten Sandwich und noch zwei Sandwiches. Und wir gehen noch mit Geld, das soll können, noch geben, teilweise Liebe. Noch mehr, wie viel sie da in dem Sandwich hatten sie kein Gerät, aber damals hat mir jetzt gewonnen. Der Geber so ab oder der Geber so ab zu dem Sohn oder zu der Tochter, wo er mir sagt, dass sie so sein Ungeton sehr schön Und wir hätten das am Mädchen, so sie können beiden nicht klingeln. Oder jeder Tag, oder Alkoholponen jeder Woche. Und der Rieke soll sein, als schönere Klingel, wie die Habertes haben. Und nicht gucken, die Quart, dass sie verbunden mit Geld ist, so ist, ist mir sich nicht sehr nervig. Und mir weiß Geld, dass die können sich geben, noch ein Klingel für die, für die Mädchen. Weil der sich sehr noch ein Teufel für die Mädchen. Bemerkt, dass ich im ganzen Jetzt gewinn, gewusst zu den Kindern, ich wollte da vertragen werden noch. Ei, wo der Kind wächst, ist, mit den Minen, wo die Medien spatten im Arein. Aber man soll wissen, sein nach Kirche weiß im Jodi, außer die es ein Heiler sehr. Ein jeder ist ein Pionier und jeder kommt machen von der Wüste nicht. Machen der von Ariel Meshach und wir bringen gleich eine Reihe von der Medine und die wir in der Medine haben. Wir werden das verrechnet wissen, dass wir sehen, dass wir das nicht mehr haben. Sie werden das Smart Boy und sie ist das Smart Girl. Wir werden das für uns nutzen, sehr dies und sehr hoch, was wir lernen, sei in Public School, dass diese so können, ich finde noch das, was wir sehen, kommt, das wird sein. 
Он сазах ки ме дубар кама памим, се ин кейн стирени цу кейн зах. Бишас ме тон хем едер тог, ин а паблик скул, а ме зогн едер ки инду нали кинде, а зон хем дем тог так, а ме гейда нох лернен хешну ин географи ме тали гуте захну. O neite ki zachn, vaz durach deruv, kome neis durach gein de welt und hom pa nosse vechulu. Ober lechele reis gitne dir a rega af zu schweigen. Und bishas va dem schweigen, so zu trachten, leide onweisen gein, von die vorte mit der Mutter, oder von der Seide, von der Bobbe, wo se werden dir onweisen, weg de wegen wurde, so zu trachten. Und das wird sein, a has cholo, a nemisel onet von den Tod, a se sein a peschen bi brocho, a da noch wird er sein gebenscht, in die a fesnus in die jidis, wo se lende noch be meshe chayim, se lese esnus in a nefen teif, bi schwile, farsir, wo se zusammen der Miete das eche teif lo eilom, Ve adrabe mit a seder hofuch, pri vet a trachten vos e gut far a run en, lo eilum, un nert a nocht e dos echet gut far en, un machri e zain ben, der teim lo eilum, vo der noch vet a seget a rof kumen bepeil ba an hoge masime. In druf is men madgish, a se dav zain davke a rege shel psesika, fun schweigen, Do de rege shel se siko dav zain nit al sa dover tofu, i mitin to, gori zum sofun to, ven de kinde shen farmatet, un oza shen ongelent, un ongehet, veis vos farazachn, do de mi dafer onheim zain to. De ense ki zach vo de principula, de de tiche ve ka jese baze, kon zi zogn, un dav zi zogn, a ze heip ton den tog fun a rege, Shall fun schweigen, dass aber nicht has wie schollen kedei, es a weg za a weg in a regi levatolo, mit tornit gewein in a kin, dass er kon gein levatolo. A kin darf wissen, dass er darf eis nutzen seine Zeit und seine Kirches. Darf nem sorgen, dass er das schweigen seine. I da seche ta te von sein chinuch, Aber dem und benehle dafür, dass ich nutzen durch ein Machschauer Tevo, in was besteht der Machschauer Tevo, dafür, dass fragen bei seinem Vater und bei seiner Mutter. Nicht auf die Tiele, so am Urlogil, mit darf aufwecken. Vater und Mutter sind in der Medine, als sie sollen wissen, wenn sie ihr Schlichus auch hier ist, wo da sie die Hälfte Schlichus sehen. A sie sollen aufstellen, der ihr Schor im Gewehr. Wo das kommen nicht durch für den Beschleimer, durch den Zweiten. Das darf man allein nicht nur zulegen, eine Hand dazu, nur zulegen dazu, der Herz und der Kopf und der Tirche und dem Mann. Und der Kind soll sehen, dass er nimmt das mit dem ganzen Herzen. Und mit dem ganzen Simas Lern und mit dem ganzen Heiß und hat das eine Gehe, dem Vater mit der Mutter, der Heie nach schon Mama. Wo dämmelt, wenn die Kinder heiße Leben, wo wir es all wohnen, alle die wohnen, wenn die Kinder durch seine Scheile ist, jeder Tag beim Vater mit der Mutter, er ist ein Heil, ich darf gehen nicht in den Public School, wo du schickst mir da hin zu. Und der Tietje wird mir sagen, ich soll trachten. Darfst du mir sagen, wegen was ich soll trachten? Okay. Okay, so we got that clip. Uh, wow, there's, there's a lot of information to process. I mean, we're, we're having a conversation. We can't actually hear what's being said, so I'm going to have to go back. I was reading some of the clips. But we wanted you guys to be able to hear in your own words, in their own words, rather, what it, what they believe, what they're saying, what they're trying to do, what they have done. I just read to you that these laws have already been accepted, adopted. They're sitting on the books. They just wait for them to roll it out. Not just in the U.S. either. 
Oh yeah, not just uh, in the worldwide. US. Worldwide. Worldwide, man. Guaranteed the no UN will implement it. it. Yeah. This no, no, no. The Sanhedrin is going to replace the UN. Oh. They openly say this is their plan. They're going to uh the law will go forth from Israel. Mm-hmm. The law, the world law, the world court. All right. Isn't and, that a neat um, trick? I'm they not, had us I'm all worried about to stop it. Islam. The UN, yes. And the UN, too. They demonize it. Well, I'm not saying the UN is great, but notice how the UN has been the big boogeyman. And Islam, too. Yep, exactly. They do that. It's a distraction, right? Wow. And they're going to do a bait and switch. But yeah, they have us all thinking the UN is going to be the thing that rounds us all up and kills us, right? So then when they come in and replace the UN with a, a godly... Oh, well, this is, you know, the same nutrient, right? No, we're going to put, you know, God as our focus. You know, we believe that there are fundamental truths and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of Christians, it's just going to sound too good to their flesh itching ears, right? Mm-hmm. Like, gosh, mm-hmm. finally, mm-hmm. some just basic common decency, right? And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, and I think it's just the same way people will fight you over, you know, Trump or other people that they worship that, you know, they think are the last best hope for restoring any kind of sanity to the country or the world, um, even though they should know better. My aunt is wonderful and a, and a very uh, spirit-filled woman, and you know, and she's not nasty about it, but my goodness, is she defensive still about uh, Q anon and <laughs> trusting the plan after everything, right? And she's not stupid. She's very smart. And she is an actual safe believer who actually believes the true gospel and yet somehow somehow thinks this QAnon plan fits in there somehow. And I told her exactly what that is on that, you know, QAnon is like, uh, I believe they're kind of teasing us with some truth about what really is going to go down, which is, you know, there will be a, you know, a, ba- a storm <laughs> that comes. And we're all going to be like join in this rebellion. We're going to we're going to take back the. The, you know, this country and we're going to take back, you know, the world for just sane people who just, you know, just won't, like believe, <laughs> believe gender exists and just basically. Well, you know, what's interesting, every, what, jump, on, what jumped out at me, oh, sorry. You know, mm-hmm. no, no, well, oh, um, the, no, what really you. jumped, well, I, I believe Q is part of the plan, but it, it's not the plan, like you yep, said, it, it's exactly. all part of this <laughs> plan that you've been talking about. And what's interesting is that you hear Q people say all the time, in fact, one of their uh, banners, so to speak, is Q, the plan to save the world. And then the link you sent mm-hmm. me about this, uh, Noah, ask Noah.org. It says, a moment in school to save the world. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, you're right. It's almost like the same uh, propaganda. Uh, doing a lot of different uh, promotional pieces. You know, we're still end up online. Uh, and I mean, you know, I, like I said, uh, Trump was... Uh, he had the most uh, Orthodox Jews in his uh, close circle cabinet uh, of any president ever, um, and all he has to do is—I mean, I, don't, I you know—I don't have really like a, a bee in my bonnet about Trump, by the way. Uh, I'm just tired of everybody patting themselves on the back for being able to see like the obvious, just like basic obvious things that are that that they should never have been tricked into believing. Uh, we're hard to see or that people stop seeing like people really feel like accomplished when they because they still know that that boys shouldn't play on girls sports teams and things like this it's like that's that's like the, that's the trick and they actually puff you up and make you feel prideful over these um uh, you know dumb lefties who who are who are falling for all this stuff and that pride is what actually starts marrying you too uh, this 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 idea of, of uh, avenging the country or or righting um, the wrongs that have been done, and it's becoming worse and worse. You know, they are becoming more openly corrupt and evil and unconstitutional with every day that passes. Um, and uh, making no, you know, <laughs> and and I'm so tired of seeing people on the right point out like, well, if it were if it were Trump doing this. That's so hypocritical. That's a double standard. Are you are you serious? Like they're okay, they're openly at war with you. At least that's what they want you to, you know, that's what that's what the, the script says, right? So like how how long are you just gonna sit there and point out that's hypocrite? No fair, no fair. Uh oh, look, look at this. Joe Biden's being a hypocrite. It's like there's no what do you mean? There's no such thing as double standards. 
uh, for like in war for your enemy. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're like, they, they, the, 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 the narrative is that the country is being divided up into two sides and they're absolute enemies. But, you know, uh, and, and it seems like at least <laughs> that on the left, they, they don't even make any attempt to seem like they're playing fair. Cause why should they play fair? They're supposed to be out, you know, getting it done for their side. And, you know, conservatives are just in there, but like, no, but we're supposed to be on the same team. And it's just like, it, it's supposed to just build this resentment more and more because you see yourselves as doing the right thing and actually standing on principle and all of this. Um, not that you're not, but imagine if somebody, if something happened where it actually looked like, uh, the country was going to be restored, that somebody was actually going to, to to set all of this right and save America and do it, you know, by force if necessary. Like, how, how do you think that Germany reached a point where it would so um, completely embrace uh, old Adolf? <laughs> not that I, no, I listen, and I'm not like saying, oh, Adolf Hitler, he was the worst, most evil person ever. Like, I, I don't blame Germany for what they did because it made absolute sense. They were in the same exact position we're in now. They, almost the exact same position. The same exact things were being done to Germany to drive them over the edge. And then, you know, um, in walked this guy who just said common sense things and appealed to, um, the, like, their their <laughs> normal, traditional, like, just common sense values. And... Um, and identified uh, the source of the problem, uh, you know, in his mind, which, you know, honestly, he wasn't wrong about about uh, who in the country was pushing a lot of this debauchery and, and leftism and liberalism, who controlled the media, the same as in this country. But I also want to point out something. This is not about um, pointing the finger at you, because that's, that's stupid too, right? Like, like... Um, there is a spiritual blindness that's going on right now. And it also plays right into their hands because part of the, when you're trying to understand the Noahide lies, you have to understand like the Talmud and the, the prophecies uh, that they absolutely uh, <laughs> believe must come true. They're not, they're not all biblical prophecies. A lot of them are Talmudic prophecies, but like one of them they believe is uh, that um, in order for them to get their happy ending, where their Moshiach comes and sets them up to rule over the world and have like 2,000 Gentile slaves each <laughs> and all of that, that um, I believe it's one third, I think it's one third, I can't remember, it's one or two thirds. It's, I think it's one third of them still have to die. They have to, to I, it, it's almost like it would serve their purpose for the world to turn against the Jews. Like for it would actually help fulfill the prophecies because they believe they they also need um, the, uh, like the Jewish diaspora to to flee back to Israel, Greater Israel, with the original uh, you know uh, borders that they had, um, along, you know, uh, in the you know since the, since the you know when God created Israel, so um, you know because it's it's much smaller now. That's why they're at you know causing conflict with a lot of these surrounding countries is because they're trying to reestablish their original borders and they kind of have to pick fights <laughs> to uh to get that done that's why they're after you know there's certain countries that they just won't leave alone no matter what no matter what happens they're going to they're going to eventually take them down because they need the land that's probably the greater israel project and then once that happens they need uh per per their prophecies actually they need the uh, Jewish diaspora to make Aliyah to, to actually come back and return to Israel. Um, and they, you know, all this stuff has to go to according to the plan they feel in order for the prophecies to be fulfilled. So um, I could see why we have people like the ADL, um, you know, the Anti-Defamation League and the, and the Jewish Defense League and everything kind of almost like they, they want people to associate them with a lot of the agenda like they want people to know that that they're that they have their hand in the pot that they have something to do with it that they control the media they're not really being very secretive about it it's it's almost like um because it's going to play into to what they need to happen they could make make um if they made like the west a hostile place for jewish people to live it would it would help uh, compel them to actually go a, and move to israel you know per, like which is required in the prophecies, and it, it, it was not easy to do it the first time. 
they, you know, they, it took World War II to finally, uh, and, and, you know, and some of the things that, you know, Hitler was doing, uh, the camps, you could call them, um, to actually finally compel people who had never been to the Middle East, you know, they were Jewish, but they'd always lived in Europe, um, to, to, re- to go to this foreign and seemingly hostile land, they kind of had to be driven out, right? And so you kind of imagine that if, if they really need all of the Jews to, you know, to return to Israel, according to their prophecies anyway, or how they interpret all of that, it, it might take something kind of extreme. So that's, so I'm saying though, you know, don't fall for it, like, and get really mad at them. Like, you know, they're just as deceived as everybody else. I have no, uh, no ill. I just want people to understand that, like, just how, how, hateful and evil the Talmud is and that the Talmud is a hundred percent antichrist. And, and, and I, and I don't want people to think that the enemy of their, their enemy is their friend because, you know, we can never let our, our loyalty to politics or social issues override our loyalty to the gospel and to Jesus. And I, and I just see that as such an easy temptation to fall into, especially now with the volume turned all the way up to 11 on just like, nonsense and madness that people are just so relieved to hear something sane that you know it's 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 easy to overlook the fact that you know well that same person that is that is saying you know obvious common sense things but you you're you've been so deprived and gaslit for so long that just like basic common sense things seem like revolutionary to you and i you know that's something i also advise against just don't don't let them get you to that point where you're, where you rejoice to hear someone like Trump just say something totally obvious, not not really that insightful. Just you know, I don't know, like boys should not be on women's sports teams, and you cheer as if he's just delivered the sermon on the mount because it's you know there that warps your mind too. You've got your expectations so low that somebody could just say the sky is blue. Instead of the sky is green, which it seems like that's all CNN wants to say all day, is the sky is green and demand you believe it, that you rejoice when someone says it's blue, you know, that um, that makes you, I guess, right for the picking, right? Because it wouldn't be very hard at all to win your loyalty um, if, if somebody came along and just, you know, promised... I don't know, not to force you to, 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 to you know, yeah, give your children a sex change, you know, when they're, you know, in second grade or whatever, like whatever the, the big fear is that the left really wants to do us all, you know, um, mm. enforce like mandatory gender transition on children, whatever it is, like you're going to, you're going to throw your support behind this person who actually, you know, takes them on. And it is kind of going to be, you know, for a lot of these people, it's going to be real difficult. To, uh, to choose Jesus over that. I wanted to point something out because while you were talking, I was listening, but and even enjoying your little budgies talking. But I went and started doing a YouTube search on how much stuff there is. Tons of stuff concerning the Noahide laws. I just typed in Christianity is idolatry and then Noahide, and mm-hmm. there's like hun. <laughs> At least 200 videos so far, maybe even more. I still haven't even gotten to the bottom of the page of all these different rabbis uh, and other people talking about the Noahide laws versus and, and Christianity. Uh, and oh yeah, uh, I clicked and listened to a couple while you were talking, and they're at they are absolutely saying it is idolatry. And what's even more shocking is how many of these videos are Christian so-called pastors and churches that are not warning. There's a handful that are warning. They're actually supporting it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Judas goats. They're Judas goats. That's what I, that's what I call them. You know, and there, there's a lot of, um, and the sad thing is, is that, so here, right? Okay, I thought I hung up accidentally. There's a lot of uh, infiltration and, like, messianic uh, you know, Jewish circles and, and, you know, uh, there's a, there's a lot of an attempt to basically like guilt and shame, uh, Jewish believers into going back under the rabbis. That's all like, like they, they believe everybody should be under the rabbis, like everybody, the whole world, but it's, you know, mm-hmm. that they, they, even messy, so-called messianic 
Jews are pushing this no hide stuff and actually demanding that um, people who are just, you know, Jewish Christians who are, you know, con converts, even generational converts, like where they are ethnically Jewish, you know, through their, their blood, but like their family converted generations ago, particularly in like South American stuff that was happening where there's like this whole campaign. Um, I'm trying to think of the guy's name, the guy that there's, I can't think of his name right now. There's a, there's a kind of a well-known messianic Jewish, uh, I guess you call him a pastor. I'm not really sure. Um, but he is just constantly guilting and shaming these people for the fact that their family converted to Christianity, even though he claims to be a messianic Jew himself, uh, because they, you know, and that they, what the only way to right this wrong is to go back under the rabbis. While pre while he pretends to uphold Jesus, but understand, it's not that the word Jesus bothers them. It's just that you know, if it's not if it's not the true Jesus as as God in the flesh, then it's it's a different Jesus, and they can pretend to be okay with them all they want. It's not the true Jesus. You know, and it's, you know, it's not a saving faith. If you believe that, you know, Jesus, the man, you know, is your Messiah, but, you know, but he's not God. You understand? So, well, it, but, but a lot of people that are weak Christians will think that that's, you know, uh, splitting hairs or something. And that well, yeah, but look how long. Compromise. Yeah, but look how long certain TV preachers in particular have been pushing Christian Zionism. So. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, it's like nothing that this particular group of people does is ever wrong. How dare you ever criticize them for ever. anything, you know. They've uh, suffered if, enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, if, if you start talking about them in any way, then that makes you evil. And, you know, how dare you even criticize something that you can clearly see is unjust or, or immoral if you see them do it. And I'm talking about, like, as a nation collectively. If you wanted to condemn something that you think was wrong, they'll make you out to be evil and immoral and anti-Semitic if you say anything against them whatsoever. So this has been for, what, at least 50 years now they've been pushing this whole Christian Zionist? Which is an aspect of the Noahide law thing, actually, yes. that, that Gentiles are not, they, they are not permitted to, to criticize or question their betters. AKG. Um, so that, and it will be like that. And it's like, like going to be a caste system, but like a two tier caste system. And the, you, you're eligible for, for salvation as a Gentile, even though your soul is not the same quality, like inherently on a spiritual level, you were created of satanic stuff, but you can redeem yourself by following the Noahide laws of being a good Noahide. That's Which the, would that's really tie into all the Lordship stuff. And all the it, works it right exactly. That's exactly what stuff. It is. Yes, exactly. Mm, mm, mm. Absolutely. Which is most Paul, of so-called Christianity. Like Paul mm. a, had no problem call, call, calling his ethnic brethren who didn't believe uh, dogs. Um, I don't know where Christians think that. You know, I'm not saying that we should say that necessarily, but uh, I don't. I don't see any place in the Bible where we should treat unbelievers, even if they're Jewish unbelievers, with any special. Uh, privilege or affection. Mm. See, well, I and this is one thing yeah. that I'm really outspoken about is, and this is something, um, I mean, oh, that's, you, Ben and Angel, you'll see it when you receive the welcome letter for my podcast, but one of the things that I really talk about is the need to step up for truth without subjecting ourselves to ecumenism. And the thing is, all of these great creatures that you know i don't just have a problem with people like john piper because he's a calvinist i have problems because he creates new doctrines he promotes something that isn't faith alone but he is also a strong proponent of ecumenism how can any biblical christian be open to the idea of ecumenism like how the heck do we have something like chrislam those are two completely different theologies hmm. can you guys hear me yes you see you there 
I mean, I'm sorry. I was on mute and I was just talking away. The first thing you have to get rid of to accept Chrislam is the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, once you get rid of him, you can accept anything. And that's what Roman Catholicism has always been. They'll they'll bring anything into the temple. We just rename it. They go down in the countries to practice voodoo. That's okay. We'll just change it to St. Peter and give it a different name. And you bring it all in the church and worship it. They've done that forever. And this is not any different. Well, and that's what Chrislam's all about, actually, because yeah, um, it, it's basically what it, it, I mean. It's essentially the same thing that like what what an acceptable form of Christianity would look like to them. To, to the to the rabbis, it's because you know, they uphold Jesus as prophet, but you know, and and we're even allowed to say he's Messiah. It just doesn't mean anything because we don't think he's God. But whatever, we could you know they'll pat us on the head and be like that's fine, just, but he's not God, right? Yeah, but the, but that's what basically you know it's it's very uh, congruent with Islam. But Islam is held in much higher regard <laughs> than Christianity by the Noahide laws, and um, I mean. It's just funny because we've been told there's this big threat of Sharia law, Islamic Sharia law taking over. Uh, and we've been really worried about that, <laughs> right? A lot of Christians anyway. Uh, but it, it's just, you know, we never ever heard that like, oh, well, all Jewish Sharia law is already on the books <laughs> in our country. Uh, that's funny how that works. And now they're kissing and making up. Uh, there's a lot of like between Muslim clerics and um Talmudic uh, rabbis in Israel, there's a whole lot of e ecumenism going on right now. And um, it's really easy to be ecumenical when, uh, you know, especially if you're one of these um, false convert uh, denominations, uh, you know, in the larger, you know, um, like sphere of Christendom, you know, like, oh, well, can't we agree to come together? Like, they don't even have a, the core essentials of faith at all, you know? Uh, so, so it's real easy to just unite around basically a lordship gospel that they all do have the same gospel. All of the false convert, uh, you know, so-called Christianities pretty much preach the same thing. There should be no reason that a Pentecostal has a problem with a Catholic, right? So it makes perfect sense <laughs> that they would be doing this. Um, you know, and I don't know when it comes to the Vatican. The thing is, they've already signed. They've already. Uh, declared themselves uh, uh, subordinate to to the to the Sanhedrin. They have agreed to no longer try to convert Jews. Jews don't need to be converted. And um, they were they've been on board with No High Lush for a long time. I do anticipate sometime soon uh, that the Vatican will, will you know denounce the Trinity or somehow diminish Oh it already it. has. Oh really? Well yeah they do it in it, okay. They just said that uh, Mary, well, what was it the Pope just came out a few weeks ago and said that Jesus, uh, did he deny he was God or, I'm trying to remember, he either denied he was God or added Jesus Mary. Jesus wasn't perfect or something. Yeah, he denied his deity. So they are, that's already, that's already, yep. once you deny he's it's God, he's works. no longer. Oh, you yeah. know, the second person Absolutely. of the Godhead. So, and then they already have already forever have esteemed Mary, who is not a member oh, yeah. of the Godhead. So, right. you know. I actually just had somebody come on to my, because they said that I attacked their, the actual quote was, I attacked their sinless uh, mother or something, Mary. And I'm like, okay, if Mary was sinless, then why couldn't she just die on the cross? What, like, what was Bingo. the point? Yeah, like, what was the point of God becoming incarnate man, living the perfect life, dying on the cross? Like, what was the point of that if we already had a sinless... And uh, you, Mary obviously was very willing to serve God. So, and then, I don't know. I just have a lot about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, before we go any further... Let's get you have one more clip, right, Angel? Um, yep. I, I, yes, I believe so. And um, I apologize if the final clip is any type of restating it or, or belaboring the point. I didn't get to 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 watch the the last clip for sure. So, but um, I I do kind of want you guys to pay attention to the spirit behind the man talking. Understand this, Rebbe uh, Schneerson. He is uh, 
a god among men to these people. They really thought that he was the, the Moshiach for a long time. He ordered presidents around. I mean, it's crazy. And if you look at him, I just see a shriveled, snarling little man. And I find it interesting that the language that they use, their language, I believe, I, I don't know what he's speaking in this video, but mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, uh, I don't know if it's Yiddish or if it's just, he, I'm not sure. But the, if you've listened to the way it sounds, you know, it sounds like the hissing and sneering of snakes to me. Mm. You know, it's just very interesting that, that, yeah. that, that, that I know, that's ben, the thing that. Can I ask you to please put the link for this next video in the chat so that yes. we can watch it while it's playing? Because otherwise we can't. We don't know what's being yeah. said. Okay, yeah, there's a, there's a, I'll share the link that uh, Angel sent me. It's a page with all three links on it. And we're watching the third video, which I'm starting right now. The Constitution of the United States of America. Paradigm of freedom for peoples and nations across the world. The First Amendment states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Last of a three-part series on a moment of silence in public schools. Constitution. Und mir fehlt das durch, 
und er hat nur Hummel gefahren und mit Wildes unten, und das ist verbunden mit Chirus, dass er die größte Abdus und die größte Rediff ist, was er kann sein auf das, durch und ruf, was mir führt ein, und die an Hoge, wie sie bis jetzt nach Manuel Islam. Und mit tut das so in einem Mantel, als in der Ruhe steht Demokratie, in der Ruhe steht Konstitution, der Hefer von der Kabone und von der Nischome mit Meinung von die, was haben das hereingeschrieben in der Konstitution. Wir kommen, die Chance, wir geht um die Mattele Meile und wir begnügen sich und wir bleiben stecken in der Mattele. Nehmt man die Essis und die Werte, die einen geschrieben in Sefer Achukim, und man wird von sehr Arres, die Nishomo und die Kavone-Serie, und man teilt sie ab in der Hebe von der Nishomo, und man glaubt die ganze Sache nicht relevant, wie man sagt. Die Konstitution ist gemacht geworden, wie sie steht, und von der Seele, hat mir das gedacht, da kommen die Citizenship, was mir geheißen, ich muss das echt jetzt haben. Aber die Konstitution ist gemacht geworden durch den Volk, mit Tevis von dem Volk, bei den Menschen, vor den Menschen. Und das, was sie gewähren mit 200 Jahren zurück, geschah es mit Tracht wegen der Jugend von einzigen Jahren in die istlichen Plätze, Darf man Lechele recht trachten und sagt, mit Beine seiner Liebe, die Nafsche, wo sie gut vor sie people. Und hat gesehen, beteil, an die Kinder, wo seinen Eis gewachsen, nicht wissen dich wegen dem Mäbischen, nicht sein dich mit Spalil, da viele mit Mannlisma. Und mit Gita guckt der Achusim, der Percentage, was sie da von Zwischen sehen, wo sein Vieren sich nicht tut wie der Chayosche. Wir vergleichen das mit den Kindern, die uns so gehört haben, im Bord des Seifers, was man ja gelernt hat wegen dem Ebersten. Und in Heiser, was man angesagt hat wegen dem Ebersten. Es ist auch ein Pie, wo dort ein Treffzer gekriegt hat, wo ihm der Jesus hörte, ist um und um Nossi, kann er sich einkehren, so habe ich schon leid beherrlich, der Achusin von der Linkwissi, von dem Durchfall in der Anhoge, in der menschlichen Anhoge, von die, die wir haben gelernt in der Bote Seifer Parochial School, da gab es die, die wir haben gelernt in der Bote Seifer, wo mit Torni der Mann in den Mäbischen, Allah ist gekommen, wie gekommen, nicht der Missfalle sein zu werden, wie kaum oder chillig ist, schlei beere. Und wie bald am Setters beine bosser. Und eine einfache Statistik, ich bin klar im Ganzen nicht mehr gehe. Wie war das, was sie gewähren mit 200 Jahren zurück? Ist auch viele, wenn sie wohl gestanden in Konstitution verkehrt, hatten das sehr gedacht, mich schon zu sein. Wenn die Konstitution alleine gemacht geworden ist, in der Nähe, aber soll keine machen, Amendments, die Kunim, Leid des Zorches, am Morgen, was es macht. Allah hat es kam, wie kam, wie der Mond frie, an die Konstitution, wie sie ist, an Lebedicke, und nicht nur sie, nicht an Kängerach, man in das Land im Ebenen. Nicht nur sie treibt nicht ein Reislach, man in das Land, die Mäbischen von was für ein Bildung, sie soll nicht sein, sie die ganze Sache geworden, geschrieben geworden. Gedeh zu bewahren, wir soll können der Mann in den Mäbischen, wo man will und was er mir will. Okay, praise the Lord, beloved the Most High God. We're just coming back from checking out the video ourselves. I couldn't even take it all in. There is so much to comment on. Um, what, the last video that I was watching there, and I'm going to have to go back and watch all of them. They're basically, the gentleman that's speaking there is saying, oh, well, it doesn't matter how we, you and I, or anyone else other than them, interpret the law. 
like the Torah. And re remember now, this is another trick that they do. When they say Torah, they're not talking about the Old Covenant. They're talking about the Talmud. I learned that a long time ago. When they say Torah, they mean Talmud. So it doesn't matter what we think about it. It only matters how they interpret it and how they believe. And if we don't like it, well, well, too bad. So, Angel, do you want to? Do you want to comment on some of the things you heard, sweetie? Well, I noticed that, like, there's definitely, and that is exactly how they think. I mean, it is the most truly, inherently racially supremacist religion there is on earth. Uh, they absolutely believe they're, that they are, the ultimate belief is that, that all of the Jews are God, that we will worship them as God. Like, they, they don't, they don't even, they believe that their Messiah that's coming is not going to actually be somehow supernaturally different than them. He's going to be a political leader. I believe that that is when, you know, the Antichrist will betray them. That's when he declares himself to be God. That's why it's going to be such a big deal because that wasn't the agreement. They thought they all got to play God. And if you look at the, you know, Kabbalism and um, the Zohar gets into a lot of that stuff more where, where they kind of reveal this idea that, uh, they themselves are divine, right? And that they are entitled to rule over us, right? And also interpret our laws and all of that and tell us what's best for us. Uh, it's called Tikkun Alam, where they basically save the world and make it perfect, right? They make all things new, understand? And they tell uh, you know <laughs> us dumb animals how to live. That's how they see it. They see us dumb animals. They truly believe that, that we are here to serve them. And, um, you know, uh, I don't know how many if your average Jew truly understands that that's what the Talmud says um, or that's what it's preaching. So I'm not <laughs> indicting just your average Jew here. But I'm talking about the Orthodox, you know, the Chabad Lubavitch, Chabad, Chabad Lubavitchers. That's what they think and they're very open about it. But that's also what the Talmud says. So those who, those Jews who don't really believe that or aren't really totally aware of it, it's, they either don't read the Talmud or they're in denial about it, but that is absolutely what the Talmud says. And, um, but a lot of what he's saying is very appealing, especially in a time like this, where it's like, you know, he, he's right that um, the idea of separation of church and state is paradoxical to the idea that there's somehow like these uh, transcendent tr truths upon which to base your legal system. These ideas of absolute right and wrong, that it makes no sense unless God is implicit in um, in our understanding. <laughs> and so how can you truly separate church and state um, in a state or in a nation that is founded on uh, uh, godly principles, right? And that where that's, that's the authority, that's their, the, the, the whole um, reason why we would agree or, de or, or defer to, you know, base, basically the Ten Commandments, you know, and, and you know, these tenets that are um, central to Christianity, um, but of course, you know, they would say Judeo-Christianity, which is like total, total oxymoron, if you ask me, but whatever. He's right in that way, that it's it's kind of like we're we're playing a game where we pretend there could be at moral absolutes without without a God that we that, that we agree exists, right? So um, a lot of people will be, uh, will hear that and say amen. And it's true, but just understand their God is not your God. They, they call him Hashem. And according to them, uh, it is his will that you uh, would lose your head for upholding Jesus as God in the flesh. So don't be fooled by that. And that's just a reminder. But I think, it, you know, when I see that speech, I think, wow, they're good. They've set up the exact problem that they have all the answers to solve. They have, they, they you know, and it's all so eloquently put and well thought out. And it's like, it's not, you know, it's because they already knew how they were going to manipulate the, you know, the culture uh, to get to this incredibly crazy point that's the diametric opposite of their end goal, which is basically like a, a Christ-rejecting conservative theocracy, right? But in, mm -hmm. in an ecumenical sense, but because the Noahide laws are very um, common sense. They don't seem particularly objectable to anybody. It would seem like we could all agree uh, uh, that this is, yeah, you know, we, well, why would, why would anybody think that these laws are, are wrong, right? This is just like a common ground for all people. And, uh, you know, 
unless you're a stickler for Jesus, of course. Um, but, but, uh, it's going, it, you know, I think that that's, that's where a lot of the peace and safety, the promises of peace and safety and, and, um, you know, finally, you know, being able to agree on like a common ground and go forth from there. Uh, that's, that's the spirit of this ecumenism, but a lot of people take it as like, it's going to have to inherently be like radical liberalism that it comes in that it doesn't come in that form. But I just, I think it's much easier to deceive man by working with his conscience instead of against it. I just think that, you know, <laughs> having to, having to contend with the conscience of man that, that knows like overt sin is wrong. It's just much easier to entice them with self-righteousness. And, um, and I just think that that's, I, we, we know the pendulum swing analogy, right? Mm-hmm. Unless right now it's the very end, like then it looks like the pendulum's going to swing back before, before all is said and done. Right. So I'm, that's what I'm just, you know, right now, it just seems like they're pulling that pendulum and preparing to let it go. So it can swing back in the, you know, equal and opposite direction. And I think that it's interesting to watch how constrained and how self control the, um, I guess you could say the conservatives or the right, or just, I don't know, even reasonably sane people are being in the face of this craziness and, and tyranny. There's, you know, people have really had a measured response to it. A lot of, you know, you would think you'd almost hope people would have snapped a long time ago, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost a little sad and pathetic and a little bit like, uh, makes you feel weak, makes you feel like you, uh, like you're rolling over because you yourself aren't doing something about it, but you're looking around wondering when is everybody going to stand up and nobody's doing it. Right. And once that, the line gets crossed, you know, what's the quote that, um, like what a wise man fears three things. I think no moon at night, uh, is it the, uh, the sea in a storm and the anger of a kind man. Right. And I think that uh, I think that's what they're stoking right now. The anger of a kind man, because, um, you know, rational common sense people in this country and in the world have been slow to anger and have been quite patient with all of this craziness that is like literally being stuffed down your throat at this point. They have put Nick Fuentes on a no fly list. He's a no fly list. He's not allowed to fly under the Biden administration because he was. Washington, January 6th, just, he wasn't in the Capitol, he was just there. And of course we know that like, there's, there's footage of cops holding the door open for these people to like, you know, file it. It's so stupid, it's just all dumb. You know, they were dumb for me too, because it seemed like an obvious trap, and then Trump was very quick to throw them under the bus as soon as, like, yeah, well, I do know, this is not American. Like, he didn't pardon anybody, and he could have, by the way, he could have preemptively pardoned those who would be arrested like that that's something the president has the power to do uh at least if their their crimes were federal but you can't preemptive pardon people I mean, he just didn't do anything he just threw him under the bus yeah i don't know i don't know who those guys are that's not who i am that's not who this country is it was just like you snake you snake you knew you knew what would happen to these people if you didn't pull this off right and you told them yeah you guys come on just come on yeah we're gonna and he he you know it's really easy to know that the like, conservatives and christians and everybody that's that are going to come you know they're not going to burn the place down but they might do something like what they did where they go into the capitol building the people's house or whatever there wasn't like any real atrocious acts that were committed, but it, it doesn't matter because they're already demonized in the media. So anything they do is too much. And that is the type of injustice and unfairness that when the people who have put up with it for this long actually do snap, it's going to be bad. It's going to be really bad. And, uh, but I, you know, I think Satan himself knows that it would <laughs> take a lot of prodding to get to that point. Because even though a lot of those people really aren't saved believers, the fact is is that certain Christian principles have been inculcated into our culture for a very long time. Uh, and and it does make us patient. And it does make us a little bit harder to trigger um, to violence and things like that. So, I, you know, but well, once it happens, it's, it's not great. I think, that, I think that's a plan. But I think that they, I basically feel like they're setting up a crisis. 
um, for the man of sin to come right in and save us from. And um, I, it, it, it's up for debate whether the seven laws will, will come before that, leading up to that, or after it. Um, but it doesn't matter because it's all going to be, at least initially, that's going to be the pitch, is that their order will be restored. Common sense, decency, and a, a deference to God will be um, upheld. And, you know, it, <laughs> the madness will finally end. And it won't seem unreasonable at all it'll seem just you know fair a fair compromise right and and I just urge people to know like just to think where they're like what really really matters because I just know so many really good people who really love the Lord who have lost sight of what matters and like they forget that this place is going to burn up you know and they're just kind of like uh they're just too attached to this culture war that we're seeing play out which really amounts to nothing in the end and, you know, and it, they, they lose sight of the gospel and evangelism and the Great Commission. And they have been reduced to this just tribal. Back and forth. It's so quickly. And it has nothing to do with my alignments. Because like I said, I, I know what side I fall on. But that's not who I am. That's not where I'm loyal to. That's not my identity. My identity is in Christ. And um, and he is bigger than all of those things. He's much bigger than the culture war, uh, right? So um, anyway, I just hope that, that that will kind of give you a heads up because when I found out that Florida was trying to pass that, I, I just think it's kind of interesting timing because Florida has been um, kind of put forth as the promised land all of a sudden. People are like, we could be free in Florida. I've been free the whole time. All of this has been going down. I went to Florida in February and I live in Indiana now, but I went home and uh, I don't know what they had been going through or what their restrictions were. But here in Indiana, I mean, at least in Southern Indiana, uh, I've never had to wear a mask <laughs> in a store except for one like uh, crazy lady exception in Salvation Army where the person who manages that store, she's just nuts already. Like she's just a very strange woman and she insisted everybody wear a mask. But like that was a fluke. I've never had to uh, wear a mask in Walmart or anything. I don't know. People are celebrating in Florida like that, that it's opened back up. But it, it, it was no more open when I visited. Um than Indiana had been the whole time, but nobody's talking about Indiana. So I feel like DeSantis and Florida are kind of being propped up for some reason. And and people are like vesting all of their hope in, in DeSantis and Florida. And, you know, <laughs> I, I've lived there my whole life. And let me just say, uh, I don't know about politically, but in terms of like where you would want to live and raise your family, don't go to Florida. It's very degenerate. There's a lot of problems. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that's where you'd, if you really want to hitch your wagon to Florida man. And I love Florida. I'm not like, it's not, I, I'm, I'm proud to be Floridian, but I just think that there's like some weird um, narrative being formed around Florida and things like that, where they, they're, they're trying to give us a new hero or something. And so conveniently right in the midst of all that, at the height of it, this whole uh, thing about um, the moment of silence is also introduced while everybody's already looking at Florida. And I don't think anybody has really, it <laughs> was really, uh, asking for a moment of silence to be uh, mandated in schools by for everybody. I don't. I don't know anybody on the right that was doing that. Only I only know you know the uh, the Zionists and um, Orthodox Jews that were interested in that. But I think it's funny because I bet you anything because people are so tribal. If DeSantis signs this bill, you'll get videos from all of these conservative like YouTube talking heads talking about what a great thing this moment of silence is, right? I, I mean, that's what I'm anticipating. And they were it wasn't even anywhere on their mind. And I think that's kind of the point because it will win support because everybody's just talking about how awesome Florida is right now. And everybody's just like, Florida's our last hope, Florida and Texas, but especially Florida and DeSantis. And so they will, they will agree with this new law because they'll agree, you know, they want, they're trying to make DeSantis their new daddy, their new hero. You know what I mean? So I just thought that was interesting timing. And I kind of, I kind of like smelled a rat there too, but we'll see. Maybe he'll surprise us and he won't sign. He won't agree. I just know the Senate passed it and it's up to him now. It's, uh, and I will be very shocked if he, if he, if he says no. Okay. 
Wow, that was a whole lot we covered this evening. Where are we now? Hold on, time-wise. Let's see where we're at. Because I think we're getting close to the end here. Sorry, my stream just disappeared on me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, we're at the end of the broadcast. Um, Jordan, did are you still there? Did you fall asleep? Am, am I still here, even? Yes. So much for mud water. <sighs> oh, uh, yeah, so much for mud water. I couldn't find the mute button. Leave me alone. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> I know how frustrating that is when you're just trying to unmute and everybody's talking about you like, I'm going to miss her. She was a nice girl. Like, it's like, I'm here, guys. <laughs> Don't give up on me so soon. It's been three seconds. <laughs> Don't give Jordan any passes. He fell asleep. No, well, so like the thing was like I was stretching and then I like went mm -hmm. back and then I couldn't pull my window up and All right. I don't need to explain anything to you. Okay. <laughs> if you say so, Jordan, we believe you. Now, Ben, did you have anything you wanted to add? Because Angel said a whole lot. There's a whole lot that's being revealed concerning that, tying the moment of silence in also to the Noahide laws. Some of the things that are actually espoused in the Noah highlights. Oh, and, and then the other trick that they're doing is they have people convinced that it's just these seven things, but it's not just those seven things because those seven things tie into the whole code. And if you're in violation of any of those one things, they can bring you before their, what will end up being. Sub -laws. Yes. The sub laws and bring you before their Samhedrin, <laughs> which I was just talking to Ben about, which is, uh, what they're going to do is separate. I see this coming. And if they probably already didn't just didn't tell us about it, religion and the religious laws from their Noahide laws from the laws of the state so that they can have their star chambers and judge you according to the Noahide laws where you will not have any of the protections from the so-called state law. I, that's what I see coming. Ben, did you have anything you wanted to add to that, or anything? Well, real quick, what what what, uh, what what significance of the of the phrase "star chambers"? What, can you explain the significance of that star chamber? What does that oh. mean to you? Oh, that they had um a movie they did years and years ago. I think it was uh, what is his name? I want to say it was Al Pacino. I'm hoping I'm not mixing up the actors here, but you where they, are. you know. They had a movie. I think it was actually called Star Chamber. And they, in the movie, it's been many, many years since I see this. I'm going about, I'm talking about more than 30 years ago. I'm trying to go on memory. Uh, and in the movie, they had these courts that there was a secret court that a person went to where they could judge you. And it had, there was no jury. They, they just brought you up on whatever charge they were bringing you up on. And you had to stand before these judges. You might even not know know anything about what you did. You didn't face your accuser or anything like that. None of these other protections that we are supposed to have in law. And they, you know, stood above you. And here you're in this dark room with this light shining down on you. And you're being made to answer questions. You don't even really know what the charge is. <laughs> but they give you some trumped up thing. And then there, uh, no, no indictment against former President Trump. You say the word Trump and people lose their mind these days, <laughs> one way or the other. <laughs> so, uh, and then they just uh, could accuse you. Let me, while I'm, okay, Ben, I hope that answers your question. I'm going to go pull it up so I can prove to you I'm not making this up. Okay, while you're pulling that up, the reason I ask is that, um, again, I I, I I I saw a lot of cult symbolism in this whole, uh, the various um, ape man uh, evolutionary stories they pull out. And, uh you know, it's it's laughable if, if if it wasn't so tragic that of all the that the terminology and phrases they use, and one of the change that one of the most recent discoveries, most significant, is called is called Homo Dina Leti, which Dina Leti apparently means the the place of the rising star. And they found these these hominids in they call it the chamber of stars, which I I think is code essentially for uh, where it says in Jude where he these uh, the angels who kept not their first estate they are left, they're, they're trapped in Tartarus, 
with everlasting chains of darkness until that day. And so they're kind of trapped. These stars is code for fallen angels, Lucy in the sky with diamonds, uh, which also, by the way, they, that goes to play with their narrative. Uh, so uh, I, I wanted, to, I, I didn't want to understand what, what that, what me that meant to, to someone like you that, you know, you didn't, okay. I, I don't have it used in a great question. Well, let me, <laughs> okay. I didn't have the right act. Although, I know I saw this movie with him entering a star chamber. I just don't think it was called star chamber. Okay. And I got to go back and see if they did another one because sometimes they do remakes. This one that has the name star chamber was with Michael Douglas. Let's see who's the cast. I don't see if it says here. Uh, it was in 1983. It was a crime drama about a gentleman who's frustrated with the legal system gone haywire. Wire, a secret society of judges hires hitmen to snuff out criminals. Okay, now I did see this one too. I remember this one where they they decide to become judge, jury, and executioner, as it were. They hire uh, hitmen to snuff out criminals who escape courtroom justice, but one young judge questions the ethics of their vigilante system. Okay, well, they're meeting in a secret room and making decisions about people who they think should live or die that are evil. So this other one that I remember at least seeing a scene in, it may not have been called that, was somebody who was accused. Maybe that's in there, and I just forgot that. I got, I'm going to have to go back and watch this again. It's been many years since I've seen it. Where when they bring them in, you know, they, they just tell them, we're going to kill you because of this. <laughs> and there's no there's no appeal there's no nothing you gonna die because we're accusing you of this so i don't think that think that that sounds unlike what they were doing to christians back in back in the day as they say when they brought them into their star chamber and accused them of blasphemy and accused them of all these different things when they wanted to have them put to death so isn't that an interesting concept? I wonder if this is where we're going. You know, almost like the the whole thing associated with minority report as well. Oh, well, let's get them for pre crime. You're not gonna even wait you're not gonna even wait to get you for something you actually did. You just have the propensity for doing something and we're coming to get you for that. I mean, is is that where we're already headed? Did you guys fall asleep on me nope. again? Uh, one last thing I'll mention about what the angel <laughs> was talking about. Um, I will say that this QAnon thing is not dead, by the way. Uh, even though he hasn't been posting, there is a total, uh, uh, there is quote unquote fulfillment of things he said. So they're they're saying like one year Delta, three year Delta, etc. And a lot of things that like uh, that's going on right now. They're saying you know they're they're they're, they're linking it to, to stuff that was said before by him. So it's not dead yet, and I follow it because. Again, I like to see what what the what the narrative is, and you know, I, I like to understand what what you know what what the people are, are talking about. And I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people have not. Uh, you said angel about people not speaking up or not much of a movement. I think a lot of people, the die hard ones, are uh, really following this QAnon movement and seeing, okay, well, it's still progressing. Trust the plan, etc. Um, and uh, uh, one other thing I want to say about the Capitol riots and why he didn't pardon anyone. Uh, you know what the QAnon apologists would say. Like, I'm not living. Like they're no. like, you know, marked for life. You know, according to to. Have CNN. you guys, have you guys heard the whole theory that Q, the whole Q thing is actually the supercomputer? I've heard. Man, have you heard that? I've heard it, but I, I, it, it's it's I, I don't believe that. I mean, it's again, I, I'm not. I don't believe that. Well, I will say this: there's something. Uh, there's something strange about the whole Q thing. I mean, it's it's whatever it is, it's real. I'm not saying it's it's it, it, it could be a real. Well, I, 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 I believe real. it's a real deception. I think it's a real deception, and it's but it is extremely clever. <laughs> uh, it does seem like they're like some kind of otherworldly intelligence or you know uh, artificial intelligence is involved. The, the, the precision uh, and things like that. I will say that. So, um, well, let me just real quick. I wanted to. Uh, read a better description of the Star Chamber. It was 1983. Uh, it, the cast of characters, let's see, it's Judge Stephen Harden, who's played by Michael Douglas, is discouraged by the failures of the legal system after seeing 
hardened criminals go free on technicalities. Acknowledging Harden's perspective, his peers, Benjamin Caulfield, who is Hal Holbrook, introduces him to the Star Chamber, a secret organization that condones vigilante action in cases where justice has not been served. However, when the cabal, not my words, sentences, <laughs> sentences two criminals to death and Harden finds them falsely accused, he clashes with the powerful group. So that it is a very well done film, by the way. I, I had to remind myself about it, thinking about it. The cast of characters, the director was Peter Hyams, uh, was Michael Douglas, Hal Holbrook, Yafet Koto, Sharon Glass, uh, James Sicking, Joe Reg Gull Budo, I'm sorry I butchered it, and John, excuse me, Don Kalfa. And it is very well acted. It is a thriller. It will have your heart racing <laughs> when it gets to certain parts of the film. Uh, but but it's that whole concept, too, of pushing what we know the Bible teaches against. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay it. But they're always pushing this in these films, in these different movies about right. people taking the law into their own hands and exacting justice. So, I mean, it is a good flick. If you want to watch a, a well-acted movie, definitely I would, I would, oh, I would be interested in watching it again and refresh myself as to all the different nuances that are in there. But interesting that it called them, it's phrased here in the description, the cabal of, of justice. So, so that they are exacting for themselves, which is not unlike what we were talking about, which is why I brought it up concerning the correlation possibly to these star chambers that are going to possibly be erected with the, with the Noahide laws. And they are intending on putting, gee, little old Christians to death because we're guilty of, in their book, idolatry for worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, this is their belief and people need to know about it. You need to know that this is what they believe. There are videos where people have went over to Israel and asked them, put the microphone in their face, are Christians guilty of idolatry? And the ones who are wearing the yarmulke and have the little curls, they're just standing there and they say, yes, they're guilty of idolatry. And they say, well, what's, what's the penalty for idolatry? Death. Beheading. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. You know, I, I've seen those too, like Dale guys will go to Israel. In fact, I should have recommended a video a while ago about uh, the about the location of the temple not being on the Temple Mount, like most people think. And this guy, this Christian, went into you know he's interviewing these Jews, and he this Jew you know elder is uh, talking to him. He says, "He goes, wait a minute, are you a Jew?" He says, "No." He goes, "What are you doing? I've got no time to waste with you." <laughs> you <know? laughs> it's just arrogant. They don't even hide it. You know. Yeah. You know, you know, he knows he's on camera. You know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. A Angel, is there something else you'd like to say in closing before we get out of here this morning? Did she fall asleep on us, too? Sorry. No. <laughs> no, I, I, the little kittens are about to mute because oh. I hadn't fed them yet. And they are like little torpedoes running around just like, yeah, oh, my gosh. They're so, <laughs> I, they, they were so hungry. But they, I feed them, but they don't. I didn't have wet food and they wanted that. So I had to go chase them around the house. But yeah, you guys did a really great, I mean, I was just like fascinated what you're contributing to the discussion. And yeah, it is, uh, <laughs> there's no, there's no, uh, there's no shame in their, um, I don't know, I guess you call it their, their privilege. When they, when you hear them interviewed in these, uh, in these like man on the street interviews, I mean, they, they, they're not ashamed of it. I mean, it's, it's upheld in their religious texts. So uh, they, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just, <laughs> it's just how it is. I mean, I can't imagine saying some of the stuff that I've heard them say about Gentiles to anybody and saying that, no, God says, God says we're just better. We're God just, says, we're, we're, yeah. We're divine. Yeah. We're, we're, we're God, God. Actually, we're gods. And you guys are. We're God. Uh, yeah, I have that like video part animal. on my channel, too, what, what, yeah. about the Kabbalah and exposing uh -huh. what they believe. Uh, yeah. If you guys haven't seen it, just go back a little ways. It's, it, it won't even take you 30 seconds to go find it about the Kabbalah exposed. And the woman there is saying, she says, they are God. 
<laughs> and, uh, or, and that we're human. They admit that we're human, but they say that there's something else. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's not that we're animals. It's that we're only human. <laughs> yes. And there's something else. All right. Okay. And then uh, uh, also, Angel, before, before you go, I wanted to ask you because Angel has a dragon. What's the proper name of the dragon, Angel? Bob. <laughs> Bob. Yeah, oh, you, you know what a, I meant. Oh, a bearded dragon. My bearded, bearded dragon. dragon. She has a bearded dragon, and his name is Bob. Yeah, his name is okay, Bob. Okay, cute. We didn't name him. It was a, he was already adult when we got him. So. <laughs> okay. But it is funny. It's a funny name for him. So. Well, I wanted to start the broadcast with this, but we didn't get to do it. And I wanted to ask you because Angel was telling me, uh, I don't think it was in a phone conversation. I think it was a text that I guess you were washing one of the babies or something. No, and the, I was giving him a bath. Oh, you were giving him a bath. But didn't yeah, you say you he fell in? Soap. Okay, so I I fill up like a tupper, like a large like Tupperware thing, like a pretty big one, you know, like like three feet across mm -hmm. with uh, warm water. And then I put like a, a stick or something like, you know, like a, a like kind of a branch or something across it so he can get in and out. But he has to, when he's shedding, you, you really want to let him soak in the bath, you know, once a day to help them not get stuck shed. Because if they're mm -hmm. like a little bit of that skin gets stuck, it can actually like cause their limbs to fall off because it'll mm. just keep, they'll keep growing and that it'll constrict and constrict. So it's really good mm. to keep them hydrated. And But they're like a desert lizard. So, you know, their, their environment's very dry. <laughs> and so I was giving a bath, but his lazy little butt fell asleep on the branch and he just like <laughs> they're so chill and so relaxed that he didn't even wake up when he fell in the water he just was <laughs> like he looked dead in the water and you know I, I it couldn't have been long at all that it was happening but I mean I was shocked that he didn't drown mm -hmm. uh, I shouldn't have let him do that he had never done that before but I shouldn't have I shouldn't have walked away while he was sleeping like that oh, I didn't okay. know that he was hey he was he was swimming when I walked out like he he likes to get in the you know water and swim around. They're so cute. They're so funny. Um, okay, but um, so, anyway, he inhaled short. water. Yeah, he inhaled water. He inhaled and water. I he might die. He thought he might die. But how is Bob now? Oh, I thought you were gonna just tell the joke about how I said pray for my dragon. Um, okay, so he's doing all better. He's all better because well, at least it prayed. But also, I put a little uh nebulizer like those little they're really essential oil diffusers like the little small ones but you can also just mm -hmm. put liquid in them and i put colloidal silver in it and put it in his uh in his house so that for like a few days he was breathing you know uh silver infused air and i think that prevented any kind of upper respiratory Infection, he had also pooped yeah in, yeah because he had pooped in the bath because uh -huh. that's also what they do you were worried about that yeah poop. yeah so he had yeah so it was not clean water and they get reptiles get a respiratory infection pretty easily and they're difficult to treat. And I keep recommending colloidal silver, you know, in like airborne form. Oh yeah. That helps humans stuff. too. But oh, now it's, it's I wanted so to great. ask you, cause these things do not come with, they don't come with like instruction manuals when you go buy them. Right. No. Okay. No, so now that he's YouTube. all better, I'm so happy. The dragon is all better. God made that creature and, and, you know, he doesn't have anything against yeah. him. So that's wonderful. But now I wanted to ask you just going forward, have you learned how to train your dragon? <laughs> oh, you, oh, you really worked on this for a while. She's I been have, thinking about that all day long. <laughs> I have, no, I have been waiting to say that for months. Clever, and when this girl. happened, I couldn't really ask because the dragon hadn't recovered yet. So once she <laughs> told me the dragon was well, because it would have been too soon. Now I said, I am going for it. Did you <laughs> did you learn how to train your dragon? So this it's won't happen again. It's funny because Toothless in that cartoon is clearly like a black bearded dragon. Like they just made the Toothless character like he's just a bearded dragon. But he's just black. That's what he looks like. He has wings. I, 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 I couldn't figure it out until I had one. I was like, oh, it's that toothless is a bearded dragon and it's smart because like well they're a very popular pet now and it's like a a show for like little adolescent boys so yes in some circles smart. i'm sure but i wanted yeah. to ask you <laughs> i wanted to also i wanted to, well actually thank you because um you actually gave me experience i have never had before in my life which was somebody asking me to pray 
<laughs> for a dragon. I didn't even think that that phraseology would ever be in my vocabulary <laughs> or that I would ever ask, how is your dragon? So just thank you for all those firsts. <laughs> He's, he's, okay. he's a mighty fine little dragon, I have to say. Very handsome little dragon. Well, you must it's share a picture with him. It's tiring to like, say bearded all the time. You just, his shorthand just becomes a dragon. <laughs> and it, it so gets, now, gets used to it. now going forward, I get to go, what about Bob? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. so it's, like, his name's so perfect, really. If you see his little, like, silly, like, self satisfied face all the time, he's just so relaxed. It's, it's perfect to call him Bob. It's just like the perfect name for him. Uh, but uh, yeah, good pets. I just, I wouldn't advise anybody with like many kids or animals to get an exotic reptile for pets. But it wasn't the smartest move <laughs> that I've ever made. <laughs> Don't have that much time. Well, I'm glad Bob is all better, Angel. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing this story with our audience. And then, Brother Ben, did you have anything else you'd like to add this evening before we say goodnight? Or good morning. Uh, no, that, that's it for me. A man of few words he is. <laughs> ben, I don't think you said, well, let me add it up. Hmm. 75 words. 75 uh, I words. I think you'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking on, on air, though, not behind the scenes. Oh. Okay. Well, but I do thank you so much for your contribution. And also, he makes everything seem so seamless. Like, it's just. You know, no problem. I don't have to do anything. Jordan doesn't have to do anything. We're thankful for that. But an angel doesn't have to do anything. This works out wonderfully for us. Ben does all the technical stuff and he does a great job. And I want to thank you again, Ben, on air. I always want to say thank you for that. I appreciate you contributing in that way, too. Um, Jordan, did you fall asleep? Because I know this special energy mud water stuff that you're drinking now is supposed to help keep you awake, but I don't think it really works like that. But how are you feeling? I am wide awake and well. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I definitely need to learn. I don't know how Ben makes it look so effortlessly. Like, I have mental breakdowns on CES, like, visibly trying to run OES. But no, it was a fun night. Um, I'm starting <laughs> to get this idea that you guys don't trust the government, though. It's just a suspicion. Who us? Yeah, Are you kidding? I mean, I might be reading into it a little bit too much, but <laughs> I I think you guys like have a beef or something. But I, have, I don't know. I might. They haven't outlawed that I yet. I don't though. trust the government. I but I will say though that I don't think that um, I think <laughs> Christians get a little too big in their britches when they think that it's like they're supposed to they're supposed to rebel against it and they're supposed to just be these but like I don't know like it's like a hard balance. Because honestly, like there's a lot in scripture that is it's pretty clear that God doesn't think you're above. I don't know, basically kind of being a little bitch if you're, you know, if the government like, you know, you there was a law where you had to carry the Roman soldiers pack. Right. If he if he decided to. And, you know, what would be the humble thing versus what would be the prideful thing? Like, oh, I'm, I'm above that. No, who, you're not going to tell me what to do. That's a prideful mentality, even if it is corrupt. Now, if it's about sitting directly against God and breaking, you know, one of his, you know, like where you're actually, they're actually telling you like um, to, to blaspheme the Lord or any of that stuff, that's different. But I'm talking about like, I, I don't trust the government and I think it's very wicked to its core, but I also, uh, I don't think that I am above, uh, uh, and I, it's very hard for me to say I'm a very defiant person, but I, I God has checked me in my spirit about thinking that I need to go make a point to tell everybody that nobody can tell me what to do and that this government's not like there there is no good government. Like, if, you know, the, the world has fallen. Right. But like uh, unless I'm, be, I'm being uh, ordered to like truly stand against the Lord, um, which, you know, there's plenty of distinct, like <laughs> examples in scripture where if it's like one type of uh, decree or order from the government that is, um, you know, directly against like the core tenets of the faith, um, stop preaching Jesus, these things we disobey. But then there's plenty of other things where where uh, they were more minor, render unto Caesar, what is Caesar's, but like there's all kinds of, like from old and new of just like, the Christians weren't just, you know, defying the government on every point, even if they knew it was wicked. In fact, at some points, God said, 
uh, you know, that he was using a corrupt government to judge the people and they'd be punished more harshly if they didn't obey. I'm not saying that's the case in this because we're, you know, <laughs> America isn't actually Israel. But I just think like, uh, I think they're trying to stoke a spirit of defiance in people. And people are like seeing, feeling cathartic about seeing people lash out and, and yell and chase people out of their businesses and churches. And, and I get it, but I just, and you can do it. Like you can, you can do it if you want, like if you want to rebel, if you want to protest, whatever, but just be, just separate, understand that that's the, like a carnal side of you and the spiritual side, you know, at least for me, I was surprised that God convicted me more to like, uh, it, like if, if the rare time I would need to go in somewhere that was going to make me wear a mask, not to just like stick my nose in there, like, nope, not going in there. Then I guess, yes, we don't need that prescription or whatever, because I'm too good to put a stupid mask on and look like I'm obedient to a government that I'm, I'm smarter than them. I know better than this. And it's just my pride talking. It's really my pride. It's different, like wearing one of these masks all day long and suffocating yourself like a dum dum. But like, not even, I won't do it, not even for a second, not even to do something practical that like I need to do for my family. Like it grows, no, I refuse because I'm, you know, they might think that I'm doing it because they told me to, that's pride. I know it well. I've been a little defiant snot my whole life. I've had oppositional defiance disorder. And, uh, you know, Jesus was humble. He wasn't all about just constantly defying and, and making sure nobody thought they could order him around. But he did, you know, make a point that he was choosing to you know lay his life down for us but you can look in scripture and see the difference and i think in your spirit you can tell the difference too when it's your pride versus when it's truly a conviction from god that you should not like obviously i'm not saying like go get the mark or whatever this is a totally different thing but these these other things where right, where like uh, become real in their flesh about it right like when you're carrying a flag that has a serpent on it that says don't tread on me you might want to question uh, what spirit you're working, <laughs> operating right. under. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, or these colors don't run, all this stuff. Like, I I'm not saying that, you, you know, it's not like the worst thing in the world, but I do think they will use it eventually. They're going to turn the spirit of pride and defiance and self-righteous, like liberty, mo liberty. Really? Like, we have liberty in Christ, but like, <laughs> when, since when do we think we're going to have liberty in this fallen world in the flesh? You know, we don't really, we have, it's like a spirit, you know, we are, we're, we're free in Christ, but I, I think they're making us feel entitled to something God didn't necessarily promise us while we were here. Well, Angel, you know I don't think you've heard, but America is the land of the free. So we <laughs> do have liberty here. <laughs> they told us it. That wasn't true. <laughs> and, you know, in a spiritual sense, maybe, because, you know, I was it it's the closest thing to a christian country i mean you know at least for a long That's time it was terrifying it is terrifying it, it is terrifying but i'm saying you know it's a land of the relatively free <laughs> That's what, that's what I mean. so, but you know and i'm not saying like you're a big horrible person if you if you want to stand up you know against this or that like just ridiculous thing that they order you to do or even make a scene but like I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you can get away with it. But for me, God, God, you know, <laughs> he swatted my butt real quick when I thought about causing a scene over someone asked me to put a mask on for like five minutes. Even though, and that was like one of the only like two or three times it happened. But I really wanted to. I really wanted to tell them off and tell them how much I knew. And how you're still, oh, you believe in germ theory? It's just like all this arrogant stuff. Like, oh, really? Oh, is this kindergarten? Oh, you fell for that? Like, it's just pride. And also talk about the Constitution, like appealing to this document that's not in the Bible. And people like hold it up like it's scripture. And it's like, I'm not saying I don't appreciate the document. I do appreciate God for giving it. But like, it's very confusing when you see Christians like quoting the Constitution like it's scripture. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, and, I, and I don't think it's that big of a deal until, you know, we get to the end times where suddenly I feel like they're about to you know, make a really major move. And so people really need to make sure they're operating in the right spirit so they don't get swept up in it is all I'm saying. That's all. <laughs> okay. You know, I take a different position on this particular topic. I mm -hmm. did see your comment on a video concerning that. 
And I didn't respond to it because I believe that if that's what the Lord told you to do, you should follow your conscience as to what the Lord told you to do. Right. I had, a very, yeah. I had a very different experience and I didn't do it. And I chose not to because of, I see this as them moving the goalpost, as it were, right. or moving the line. And if we don't stand up against it, that they're going to keep moving the line and that it right. will become even more difficult to say no because it will become more costly to say no if we don't say no to the mass. That's but see, the position that's where that it gets I... confusing when it's like you're looking at eschatology because like that's perfectly reasonable and practical but at the same time like where I get confused is mm -hmm. that's why I said it's not wrong to do that. I just think it's a, it's it's also like it's a, a carnally responsible thing to do. I don't mean carnally like in a judgmental way. I mean it's pragmatic for you in this life in the flesh right now if you're trying to like try to help your life not get more miserable while you're here by like uh, acquiescing to just ridiculous like all right now stand on your head you gotta stand on your head like for like an hour if you want to if you want to live if you want to survive it's the only way three masks like like i understand i'm just saying that when christians will confuse that with it being some like noble thing like they're they're you know it's, it's all it's all in the spirit of doing what god would have them do um and because you see what I'm saying, like, it, it is going to get worse. <laughs> like, God. Oh, no, I know gonna it's going to get worse. You know I mean? It's just. Some people are Christian and saying, stop Noah hide laws. It's like, well, I mean, I'm not saying, like, yay, Noah hide laws. It's horrible. But I just want people to know it's coming. But, you know, I don't think I can stop prophecy. You see what I'm saying? That's where I get confused about, like, what the thing no, is. Because it makes sense to do. Because it's like, uh, it's like, you know. Well, this uh, is what I'm saying. You weren't convicted to do that. I yeah. was, and I was right. denied medical attention for doing so. I know. That's but how yeah, serious oh. it was to me because when I see 2 Corinthians 3.18, the Bible says I'm supposed to serve the Lord with open faith. And when right. I know, okay, if we just follow in the logic, if, if you say that the mask is protecting you, and I don't mean you, I mean them, when they say it's, it's protecting, that that's okay, then if, if it's protecting you, then you have it on, so you're protected. If it doesn't protect you, why do you have it on? I and agree then, with that. It's like doubting God. It's like you don't trust God's. Well, for me, they're, they're, yeah. I'm telling you, I trust God. You don't have to yeah. trust God. You can wear the mask. That's what freedom looks like. Freedom is, I don't want to wear it for my re reasons. I have religious reasons as well as others. And then if you want to wear it, and I don't even mean you, I'm talking about like the facility that I went to. If they want to wear it, then that's your right. That's what freedom looks like. Why right. are we being oh, forced and then denied medical care if we say, no, thank you, I don't want to wear the mask? There's something not right about that. Oh, Particularly yeah. when you have a health Obviously, condition yeah. that's contraindicative to you even putting the thing on to yeah. begin with. Oh, like yeah. making someone who's reason. an asthmatic or uh, has breathing issues or uh, psychological issues that bother them to have it on. Uh, maybe they're suffering from PTSD or some something else. I have, I get claustrophobic. I feel, I, I, it really bothers me. Like even, it really, like I feel like I can't breathe. It's horrible. Like I, I, I'm very claustrophobic. So. Well, what really I, irritated I, me though with, with all of this is that the guidances, particularly in California, already had the exemptions written in there and these places are ignoring even though guidances are not law the provisions that were in the guidances that certain people were excluded well, and you can show them and they're like so you still have to wear it do you not understand what yeah, an exclusion exactly. is it's, it so, was just absolute <laughs> blind obedient like mind like conform yes you know like and they're just like this it's just obedience testing. I told, yeah, I, I totally get that, and it's very. Oh, not I to mention Mark of the Beast testing be with the whole scanning right. of the forehead with the temperature reading. Oh yeah, I've reading. never had that happen to me, and I would, I, I don't think that I could ha let somebody point something that was like a gun at my head like that. Like, oh, I they do I it out here, on, honey. Oh yes, I've never had it happen. <laughs> it's on <laughs> steroids out that. here. So Ooh, you yeah. know, I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. Oh no, that was Jordan. I was just oh, don't sorry. ever confuse this again. I'm teasing. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. The little uh, sounded the same. I just 
I'm definitely leaning to the fact that you guys don't trust the government now. I just wanted to let you know. Conspiracy theorist. You are. Next thing you're going to tell me is the Earth is flat. No, you're a conspiracy theorist. <gasps> well, the next oh, thing right. we're going to try to convince that. you is that the Earth is flat. And then on top of it, I'm going to try to convince Ben that there's no such thing as fossil fuel, that the Earth makes oil. It's abiotic. It makes it just like it makes everything else that we dig into the yeah. ground and pull out. Who wants to place a bet that Lisa, out of the four of us, Lisa's going to be the first one to have her head cut off? Oh. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Jordan. I'm going to sleep really okay. good tonight. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Every knock on the door now, I'm going to think Jordan actually dispatched them. Remember, the Bible says that they're going to turn each other in and they're going to turn on each other. Yeah. I didn't think it'd be so soon, though, Jordan. Okay. <laughs> Did everyone but say I, everything they I want? Do, yeah, and well, I do just want to say I do get, I do agree that it is to me one of the things that I had to weigh. It was also like it really does feel like I'm communicating that it's okay to be faithless and think that science is like controls life or death rather than God, and that it's okay to just like to walk around so fearful of death that you're suffocating yourself all day. That bothers me too. So I have to juggle convictions all the time. I, I, don't, I ha I've only had to wear a mask like a couple times. So it's not mm -hmm. like a, something I have to think of. I normally just, they don't, their signs are there, but nobody ever asks you to do it. But It's not the uh, same so, here in the People's yeah. Republic of California. I know. It's a lot different there. It's a lot different there. And I think I might be a lot more challenged there. I, I just know I, I had such a weakness with defiance and pride that it makes sense to me that God would kind of give me conflicting convictions like to balance me out because it would be. But very look where you're at, though, because, see, yeah. you're in a place where you're not being forced to do it like right. we are. So it right. makes sense what he said to you right. out here wherever where we are. Oh, my gosh. The bastion of tyranny, tyranny, like it's like. Name the person and then put tyranny as their middle name or tyrant. Uh, so it, it, it's like uh, I told you guys, this is one of the reasons. OK, here's one of the reasons why I took the position that I did in California, which is where I live. There is a law that says it is against the law to wear a mask in public. Now, it, that means every police officer that you see is actually violating the law. So it's it's like, oh, are we living in upside down world? I'm talking about California. I'm not responsible for any other state. The state I live in has a civil code that says it is against the law to wear a mask in public. So they are literally turning things upside down. They are making the law none effect and making it lawlessness. It's the most vile thing I have ever witnessed in my life. And I know it is not going to stop there. That's my never to be humble opinion. That if we don't hold them to what is a matter of public record, public law, what's next? What then next will they say? We're just going to do whatever the heaven we want to do because you didn't hold us to the law on this. That's what I'm saying. That's why I think it's dangerous. Well, I mean, I, th I think they're going to, you know, what's next? Well, eventually they're going to start, you know, killing us for the cause of the Christ. Like, I just, I expect that to happen. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. the thing. That's where I get a little bit. It's almost like. <sighs> but that slippery like, slope starts somewhere. It doesn't just but start I, with I that. I don't intend to stop it, though, right? Like, we can't stop it, right? <laughs> we're like, we're not, we sh we're, we're, you know what I mean? Like, that's, so, it's so, but it's shouldn't like we, nature. But shouldn't we point out and warn, like the Bible yes. says? Exactly. That's all yes, I'm saying. That's what, yes. So then you've got, but again, I can't, I can't put the burden that I have on you. I just well, want to saying, serve yeah. the people who are willing to step up to do that, to do that. Well, because it's everybody's one thing to tell not everybody able. What's happening? And every like, yeah, to just say like, this, look what they're doing. Example, look what they're doing. Yeah, well, but also yeah. leading by example. I didn't say. Don't wear the mask and then put it on myself secretly and pretend. I see what you're saying. Don't take the mark. Like for unbelief. I see what you're saying. Like you're trying to model behavior. Well, no, it's not even, I'm not even talking about the mark. I'm talking about lawlessness. 
So, right. okay, so tomorrow if they said, well, you can just rape a woman if you want to, why should right. we get an attitude about that when we didn't get an attitude about this? It's well, like, I how far is it going to go? Lawlessness well, that's, is where, lawlessness. that's where it crosses into the, the um, well, I see, I see what you're saying, like, but I, I, I see what you're saying about how it's lawless because it's contradicting their law. But I, I, I just thought like where you draw the hard and fast line is where, you know, like something God directly, you know, commanded to us, you know, which he didn't really say, you know, but I guess he, you know, he, you know. But see, it didn't just stop with the mass. They yeah. actually told churches not to have church. Yep. Yeah. On Resurrection Sunday, and yep. the following. Oh, that week, you can disobey. I, I can well, the but see, we have laws that say Congress shall respect no, make no laws concerning establishment of religion, oh, or yeah. abridge the free exercise thereof. That's true. But that's actually, what they by did. following unconstitutional laws, you're actually breaking the law because the Constitution says it's not only like what you should do; it's your actual duty. To exactly. Disobey God. And this is what we were saying. There are laws in place that are they're violating. So how do you not say, no, I don't have to do that? The law says this. They just said we're going to do this, and this is a guidance or a mandate, but mandates are not law. And people were trying to point that out. That you need to understand there is a distinction. And, and basically it was just like when they the uh, red coats, when they were running around doing the stuff that they were doing, and they could just pull out and just write their own script. Well, we're we're gonna search this house and we're gonna do it right now. Well, this is why there were protections in the law, the constitution to say, no, you can't do that. That has to be given by a judge who has to sit out and write that out and swear out <laughs> that order. And he has to be lawful and in the right position and all that to even be able to do it. And see, and then people, you know, there are people who didn't even check warrants. They've had where people have come into people's homes. They didn't bother to read the warrant. They have the wrong address or they have the wrong name on the warrant or the warrant is actually expired. If somebody shows up to your house, you should read it because it, these are not technicalities. They're required. But a lot of people don't know that. You know, and if you don't know your rights, you can lose them very easily because they just steamroll over the top of you. And that's what that's what tyranny looks like. A free for all. It's whoever's stronger brutalizes the weaker. Is that the world? I know it's coming to that, but is that where you want to live right now? If all it takes is for us to stand up and say, No, no, thank you. I'm not gonna participate in this delusion. And yes, there will be a price to pay. You have to count the cost. I was told that I needed to see a doctor by two healthcare professionals. One was a, what do they call them, um, nurse practitioner. The other one was the person that's just under that. I can't remember. I never can remember their classification. The first one told me, who was lower, you better go to a doctor. You, you should go. The next one I called on the phone, gave him the symptoms, told him what was going on. Oh, yeah, you should absolutely go see. You need to go to the hospital. I go, and they want to force me to put the mask on. I know what the law says. I know what the ADA laws say. I know that I don't have to do it, so I say, no, thank you. I'm not going to put it on. And we went round and round for about 20 minutes, and uh, they called for the hospital administrator, who then didn't, wouldn't even talk to me just because she saw the look on my face that I wasn't playing games. This is not a game. She didn't want to talk to me. She talked to my family member instead. But I got denied medical attention that if I hadn't trusted God and I ran around being afraid, then I might not even be here today because the fear probably would have killed me faster than the condition. But I just said, I'm going to trust in you, Lord. And I'm not kidding. If I die, I'd rather die than, than live in, in this world, in this kind of place where somebody can come take away rights that people died for us to have. I'm like, no. And most of these people that were stand up that died for these things were believers. And I'm like, no, I'm not just going to roll over and play dead when these people are actually violating the law. They're violating the law that Congress voted on, put in place. People died for us to have these rights. 
for something that is simply somebody standing up saying, I think you should do this. That ain't the same as law. So, you know, I'm sorry, not sorry. I love everybody. But if everybody just goes, well, and I'm not, this is not an indictment against you, Angel. I'm not directing this at you because, first of all, you don't live in the same place I do. And you don't have the same, I don't have the same things on the table. I might have right. done something different if I was a wife and mother with four children and a dragon right. and other zoo animals. So I might not have done the same. I might have said, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to fight this battle because I don't want to risk whatever. That's your right. You have to count the cost for you. But for me, I was ready to go to jail. And in fact, when they told me, oh, we're going to trespass you. She can't trespass me when I have an appointment with the doctor that you're denying me to see. So I said, don't, don't worry about calling the police. I'm going to call them. So I got a complaint against the hospital for what they did so I could get it on record that they denied me medical care for trying to get treatment, but not wanting to wear a mask. Everybody else walking around has the mask on. I'm just like, <sighs> so I did that and I stood by it. And I only go to places that don't hassle me about a mask. If you're going to hassle me about a mask, you don't want the green that's in my pocket. So I'll take my green somewhere else. And that's what I've been doing. But not everybody wants to fight that battle. But I just wonder, I have one question. What would have happened? If everyone who wanted to say no when this mess first started actually said no. And the one thing I just want to add real quick, because I think I have a very unique perspective in this, because I actually was sick with COVID for six weeks, and I'm still recovering over a year later. Um, this week in particular has been really difficult for me, and I've lost two friends for it. And what I would say to it, it's like, uh, even though all that happened, I still don't ignore the fact that there's an agenda here. So this is what it's not even about mass versus no mask, which is what the country has made it out to be. It is about an agenda. It's either you're conforming to an agenda or going against an agenda. And if we don't realize because the thing was, I didn't even realize there was an agenda until I had six weeks just to sit in bed and do nothing but research stuff. And it, the fear is paralyzing, especially, you know, it, when it first broke out, I remember just being terrified of getting it. Then I got it. And then it felt like every single day I was having an asthma attack. So it got scarier and scarier. But the thing is, I started to realize, uh, because I actually went to the hospital, uh, Lisa, and they um, tr tried, and obviously I, I was sick, so I was like covering my mouth and stuff, mm -hmm. but I didn't have a mask. I didn't own one because they were telling us not to buy them. The doctors needed it. That's how early I got mm -hmm. it. Right. And so when I got there, they like told me to put a mask on and I, at the time I was just like yeah that's fair um but when I put it on all of a sudden like because again it felt like I was having an asthma attack like I, I just was already having a problem breathing I could not breathe at all and I was like well, I, can we figure something out because I physically cannot breathe right now they're like you have to wear it, you have to wear it. I actually had to walk out of the hospital reception desk because I felt like I was going to pass out because I was just feeling like I was suffocated oh, yeah. and it was just I I if you want to wear a mask you don't want to wear a mask you want to get a vaccine you don't want to get a vaccine mm -hmm. those aren't decisions I can make for you me personally I do wear a mask out in public um I'm not getting the vaccine but at the end of the day we can't ignore especially as Christians the agenda that's happening here is not even conspiracy theories we've had this book for 2000 years now and i yeah. understand that some people in our circle do see um this eschatology as more metaphorical and not real but i do believe the mark of the beast is a real thing and i believe we're seeing uh, I don't believe necessarily this vaccine is the mark of the beast, but I believe it is a precursor to it. And the more we feed this machine, it's like Angel said, we can't actually stop it, but we can be a voice of reason out there in the world. So people, even if it saves one person from taking the mark, it was worth yep. it. Yep. I, I agree. I, I, that's what, see, here's the thing. Like, it's not that I don't, 
want to fight. See, everything in me and the entire the person I've been my entire life, I'm, I, I'm defiant and I, I, I have no problem. It's, it's too easy for me Same. to fight <laughs> like this. Right. And so for me personally, because I like I like to challenge myself. I don't like to just um, assume that like what feels right is right because like I know my pride gets the better of me and can blind me and um although like I said I I almost never wear you know have ever worn one except like like you know like I said like two different places have actually made me do it but it wasn't like repeatedly it was just like you know one-offs um so I haven't been challenged this way but I'll tell you what was a challenge the whole time I was dealing with it is it was challenging not to just go lecture people randomly on the street and tell them how dumb they are and all. That was the challenge. The challenge was not having the courage to tell people off and tell them they're dumb for thinking I need to do that or, or how dare they even. Right. I've never done that once. I'm not saying that, that you did. I'm saying, no, I'm just letting you know. I'm not, that was the challenge for me was to, to, to not, think that way and not behave that way. Cause that's who I have always been. Uh, if I think I'm, I'm very outspoken. I'm not afraid of what people think. I have no like urge to comply or be or perform. <laughs> it's the opposite. I'm a contrarian. I'm a contrarian by nature. And so, um, but what I have also noticed is especially, you know, not in people that not with people I'm close with, but just like the, the average, like Christian conservative, like person commenting in YouTube videos, they are, uh, full like they're they don't even really see what's really going on in terms of like how <laughs> this push pull Hegelian dialectic they have totally married this idea of the Constitution with like the with God and see I don't actually I don't actually revere the Constitution although I appreciate it carnally and I think it's great you know the best you know pro- the best form of government maybe that you know man's ever come up with it's not that it's just uh, to be consistent, like I just I have to base what I think is right on scripture now because I see so many like fake Christians and just like very political people citing the the Constitution as though it as though it means anything that they said that this was a right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, because like I don't know, I have to check. I don't know the answers to all of this, but I have to check it against scripture to figure out whether did God really say we're entitled. To this that and this and that like you know don't ever let anybody tell you that you are um like you're above sacrificing this thing or, or going without this thing. Like, i don't know all of the answers to that i have to look more in scripture but i know that i can't look at the constitution and say this is what gives me the right to or, or the duty to do xyz because that like that's not my loyalty i don't even really trust it in fact i highly suspect that the constitution is total double speak uh, where it it uh like it, it almost negates itself in very careful ways uh in very careful legalese to where although it's it, uh, uh, you know a lay person reading it would think that yeah this is great and we have all these rights and we're free uh the, the, the cunning legal language used, you know, probably by Satan himself, right? Like, like little tricks where, where things are totally negated. I've, I've listened to lectures about this, about how, how the constitution has this, this uh, double speak aspect to it. And like some of it's totally nullified uh, or, or what we think we're entitled to. We're not really. That makes so a lot of sense saying, given. Yeah. I mean, you hear all the time. It's so much, you know, the endless debate. Oh, this is a Christian nation. No, it's actually founded on Freemasonry. Well, I think it's both these people. Well, not both, but these people pretend to be Christians, uh, but they're anything but. Right, exactly. And I think that there's always been a dichotomy between the people of the nation and the the, the politicians, which I think is, is actually built in and fundamental to this whole double mindedness part of it, where, yeah, I you could have had this, like what had been with a friend Franklin or somebody said, we've given you a Republic if you can keep it. Right. I almost feel like that was a taunt from Satan saying like, yeah, this, this is great. This would be, this would work really well if you guys weren't fallen and weak and no better than any of the, the, all the other civilizations that have come and gone uh, that were might end up making right. 
Like you think that like fallen man can actually live up to this, this, uh, this idea, like where, where because all these perfect checks and balances that somehow might doesn't make right at the end of the day, when we started out that way, where the constitution said one thing and we did have slaves. Yeah, it was he, no, he, like, you know what I mean? So like it was already that way. Interesting. He said, you know, if you could keep it, not if we could keep it. You know, I think that's telling right? as well. Exactly. It's weird, isn't it? It's weird. Like when they do that, when they will say they want to take your rights away, like Tucker Carlson will do that a lot. Like you, you. What do you mean you? What about R? Why not R? Oh, because you're not one of us, are you, Tucker? No, you're Swanson. You're from one of you're one of them. Well, you know, and you do a really. I think he loves his role of being the one guy who's allowed to say anything true on TV. I don't like, don't get me wrong. I think he really enjoys that. I bet you, a lot of these people who have to act like they're insane and retarded all of a sudden, because suddenly it's not, you're not allowed to even think boys and girls exist. Like I, I bet they hate it because it's so stupid and they look so dumb. Like Don Lemon. I know he hates, but I know he hates having to pretend to be that stupid, but um, I, it, exactly. That was something that stood out to me too. Just if you can keep it, why would he not say we? And, and I, I think it's just a challenge. And I, that's the thing. Like, I don't actually believe that fallen man can ever, ever, like, do anything but resort to might makes right. I just think, like, all, e even the idea of a democracy or a public or people standing up for what's true, and if enough of us did it, then they couldn't make us do anything. Well, that was just might get making right. Again, you see what I'm saying? Because that would just be we had the numbers. And we decided not to comply. You said, but at the end of the day, the, the strong, the, the stronger party always wins. Huh? Sorry, my, my Bluetooth died. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but. Um... Okay, well, I think we have completely exhausted the whole discussion yeah. for now concerning face masks as i said you guys know where i stand on it i meet my arguments as to why i certainly angel respect your decision not to and the reasons that you have in and uh jordan i am sorry for the loss of your friends and i do understand your position as well uh ben i i don't really know how you feel about the issue i think you said you've had to wear it once or twice and that was it for work or whatever but you really have not had to where you are. So yeah. I understand. I get it. I do. Uh, for me, it is a violation of my conscience. Mm -hmm. I cannot do it. I will never do it. I don't give a damn if they make it a law. I'm not doing it because I'm not an animal. I'm not a beast. They're not going to muzzle me. And I'm not putting on a face diaper. My trust is in the Lord. <laughs> now, I'm not <laughs> criticizing anyone else who elects to do so. I'm telling you what this person is not going to do. So um, that being said, I do thank everyone who has joined us this evening. I got to let my friends go and let them go get their much needed sleep on, except for Jordan, because he's taking an energy drink. that will probably keep him up till noon. So <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion this evening. Everyone that would like to collectively say good night. Would you like to go ahead and say good night? <laughs> Good morning. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all for hanging with us this long. We went longer than we normally do here on Late Night with Lisa and Friends. I hope you'll join me Wednesday for uh, my broadcast for the lonely. It's not just for lonely people. It's mostly for the lonely, but everyone is welcome. Uh, and I just talk to people and encourage them in the faith and share things that the Lord places on my heart. And then if you're interested, you can join me Wednesday, but then also we'll be back next Saturday to continue our discussion. I believe Jordan is going to now talk about uh, what what form of that was, the Jordan, the, the church that you were talking about earlier? Uh, well, that's Eastern Orthodoxy. There's right. a couple of topics on, so if that's the one we want you next week, that is A-OK -okay with me. Okay, and we'll come back and uh, talk about Eastern Orthodoxy orthodoxy and hopefully ben will have worked out some of the other things he's working on and get them finished so he can talk about whatever's on his heart and then sister angel uh, i didn't get to talk about my topic this evening which was i wanted to talk about hatred of women so we will uh hopefully start the broadcast off next week i'll start running with that because this is something i believe the true church must address must address uh, because it, it's it's getting even darker, and I'm going to discuss that next week 
for women in this world. And this needs to this needs to stop. And the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ needs to stand up against it. So thank you all for hanging with us uh, again here on Late Night with Lisa and friends. My friends Ben, Angel, and Jordan. We salute you all. Good night and good morning.